Welcome back to the third and final day of the 2024 Championships brought to you by Inferno. My name's Jack Rogers. I'm here with Des Fogarty for our Red Rooster Daily Preview Grand Finals today. Des, it's going to be a huge day. A huge, huge day. There's going to be some uh, some fantastic footy played out on the uh, the main field here that, uh, that we're going to be bringing towards you. And uh, there's been some great footy over the course of the week already and, and we're, we're going to see a few of the highlights here now. But... Uh, Really looking forward to some of the games, but you can see on the uh, the footage here some of the just wonderful oh. tries that we've seen. That pick up, that's a, an absolutely outstanding finish. Just it's such a hard technique to do when you've got that ball that just comes flying to your winger, and you've just got to catch, put down, dodge your body around, whether it's a, a, another body or uh, or the corner post. Wait. Some wonderful movements here. We see here the Scorpions women's playing the Swans, two heavyweight teams in that Division 2. Uh, it'll be interesting to see who goes on to win. The Scorpions won last year, but in the other division, the UQ Rebels. And Des, without further ado, maybe the try of the tournament. <laughs> there we go in the All Abilities final. Sydney Scorpions and uh, Dion uh, Caligiros just scoring the try there off the flick. What a beautiful try that was. There's, there's no maybe about it. This is an absolute gem, and I love this angle here with the... Uh, the out the back, one hand oh, catch, one that. hand flick. See you later, and then a little celebration over the back for the uh, for the pass as well. That's uh, that was just extraordinary out of the all abilities tier one final yesterday, and I hope we see a bunch more of that uh, over the course of today because the level ramps up with the finals. Yeah, the, uh, the skills have to uh, to. to ramp up as well and and yeah we're really looking forward to see some of these games out here well it should be very exciting and of course we've got extra time uh extra time today in any game that is drawn quarterfinals semifinals and grand final action not just our open sections that we'll be seeing on the main field today as well we know that there are some masters playing out on the backfields too so des i'm yeah, sure you want to talk really about really looking forward to seeing the uh the mixed masters see if the adf warriors team can go back to back having mm. never won a national championship before they've topped the pool top the uh, the group the division and uh yeah really looking to see that if they can go back to back and as a former warrior myself uh, I was stoked when I got to present their, uh, their their trophies and medals last year and I really hope to see that they get the, uh, the win in that division again. Well, coming up first on our broadcast this morning, we'll be joining you in the commentary box for that, is the UQ Rebels who will be taking on BMTA. Uh, it should be an exciting derby in the women's 20 division. So uh, without... Don't go anywhere because shortly here, live on KO and Sky Sport next, we've got a full day of action for you here at Coffs Harbour. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Welcome back to Coffs Harbour's CEX International Stadium. Our first day of the match will shortly be getting underway here. Jack Rogers in the comedy box. Uh, in the commentary <laughs> box. It is really the comedy box this morning. Des Off Fogarty. to an absolute flyer there, Jack. That was, uh, uh, that was awesome. I've set myself up there, but it should be an exciting morning here at the Championships brought to you by Inferno. The women's 20s. UQ Rebels taking on BNTA. In the quarterfinals, only the winner will progress in this tournament. And uh, who do you think, uh, Des? It's hard to favour anyone at this point. Uh, look, I, uh, I I do favour the uh, the UQ Rebels. They have been really, really strong all over the course of this uh, this, this tournament so far. Uh, it's you can't you can't just 
assume that it's going to go that way, though. It is a one versus four from the pool's uh, quarterfinal, but uh, Brisbane Metro are coached by Leanne Bauer, who is an Australian coach and will be going to the World Cup. But uh, this is going to be entertaining as the early start. The action is with BMTA. MTA close to the line here. They've got a stellar lineup. Indeed. Well, they're sh very, very close there, actually. Some space opened up. Ella Denny working through from dummy half. And uh, a lot of these players have played uh, in, well, youth divisions, NYC as well. And a lot of up-and-comers. UQ, of course, were phenomenal at that tournament, the back end of last year. And as we see that, UQ Rebels off their own line. So that's fifth and last here. It's come quite quickly. We're only just past the halfway mark. So... BMTA, it looks like we're going to see a bit of an arm wrestle for field pos field position here. Yeah, good early, strong sort of throttling defence from uh, from Brisbane Metro. They they really choked on those first couple of tags and and uh, and squeezed UQ Rebels. But here we go. They've found some space over as they're running their ch uh, subs over on this near side. So out in the centre of the park, there we have. The number 12 uh, for BMTA, six touches. BMTA, of course, one of the, or Brisbane Metro, one of the biggest uh, touch clubs in all of Queensland, running social comps every single night of the week at Whites Hill Reserve. Uh, and then, of course, host Metro uh, when the league is on there. So they've got a great touch culture. Yeah, hosted the, uh, the Trans-Tasman. There's a, a penalty here that's going to go against for over the, over the mark. So Brisbane Metro, they're doing... Well, early defensively, and the uh, the weight of possession is down in uh, their attacking into the field. You'd like to see them score something here to get some kind of reward for for effort. Carthy playing there with Greeny. Oh, they try to find the wing, but to no avail. So UQ here. Well, their lineup is 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 full of superstars of the present and the future. You, we see that name Rani Hagen. Des, we've had the pleasure of covering so many of Rani's games in the past and uh, she's just one of many talents in this team. Gabrielle Blade, the number 41 as well. Natalia Hickling, Kiara Denny. Those are some serious names in this lineup. But names don't win your touch matches all that often. It's a team sport and uh, it will really be about how the team comes together on finals day here. Mate, it literally it took us two and a half minutes to get the cliche police involved. <laughs> names don't win your games. Uh, we're uh, we're rolling here in the comedy box. It's <laughs> uh, good. The MTA man. straight back into it again. UQ oh. Rebels couldn't get out of their own half, but now a, an error, just a little bit of miscommunication, and now Rebels are going to get a chance to get into this match. This may be the berth that they need. Dangerous from the seven meter mark. And, uh, see as they get fresh legs on here. Blewett stays on the field after running that box play there. It should be interesting to see what they play here early. It's their first full set close to the line, diving for the line there, but the ball has gone to ground. So, yeah, the sun is shining here. There's a, <laughs> it's uh, really hard to see. Eh? <laughs> it looked like Evie Clarkson who threw that long ball left to right. So I think that was the uh, the, the name that I, I picked up. But I think you might be right there, Des. And uh, new players will sweep on here for... BMTA, let's see. So a little bit clunky there, but Ella Denny makes the most of the situation. They want to go forward a little bit quicker than that there. They've got to drive that ball and get fresh legs on as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah and, and when you're running your uh, your subsets and stuff as the Rebels just move the ball across the field and start to direct some players around. It is Clarkson that's got the ball across, and we do have our first try. Yeah, and that's brilliant stuff. Clarkson there as well. Wearing the ponytail, so just covering that number for us. But uh, it's easy enough to recognise Clarkson by uh, that really nice setup there for the first try for the Rebels. Yeah, and the score here is uh, from number 93. It's not some, a number that we see a lot of in tournaments. Uh, Oceanic Granum, and it's a nice little finish. Slidey dive underneath. Uh, just got outside a link. Nothing too technically uh, special about that one, but it was just... 
the old uh, San Francisco 49ers coach Bill Walsh said, just do the uh, the basics and do them well. That'll Beautiful. get you there. <laughs> and yeah, we've seen so much of that. Uh, BMTA across other divisions too have sort of had that strategy throughout the week. Their open women's team actually very principled touch, just driving the ball. And we saw that match yesterday against the Swans Oof. where they managed to get a draw. But no doubt they'll be working closely as well with this women's 20s team and uh, some of our future stars. So off their own line now, the Rebels, their one try to the good. And we see probably the highest number that you can possibly have on the field, Isabella in a rain, the 99 for the Rebels. Making those extra metres for her team. As they drive over the halfway mark, Caitlin Tickle as well getting involved. Driving in hard there, Jacobson picks up from half. Can't quite line. Oh, can they? The line was Whoa. spot on. There was not a lot of room to work with. She just, hit, she just cut back against the mm. grain around a bit of an unders line when normally you'd expect that player to go on the outside, but just couldn't hold on to the ball. And I think she might have just been tagged on the way through as well anyway. But uh, the ball's a little bit greasy. It's the first game of the day. They've had the roller out to try to remove some of the, uh, the moisture off the field that's come down because there has been quite a few showers overnight. Nothing too heavy, but just a lot of it. Rayfield tries to go from half. Is caught there by Gabrielle Blade. Following her player there. So on the halfway mark, aggressive defence from BMTA and they procure a mistake. So just a miscommunication yeah. there between Gabby Blade and and uh, I'm not sure who the other one was, but just miscommunication. One person going into half, the other person expecting to go to half and suddenly you now the wrong person's got the ball and all goes to ground. They should try their hardest to get a strike there, but just slowed up a little bit, lost a bit of momentum. So let's see what they can do at the back end of this set. Matilda Rogers plays a bit of a, a cutout ball there. Nice. They've got space to work with on the outside. Can't get around that defence of UQ, though. She's uh, appealing for six more, but unfortunately the ball's not played at. So UQ retain the ball here. Yeah, the pick-up and run here, I think it's Charlotte Greeny that... Uh, went from half and, and the defence just kind of held and held and held and meanwhile Greeny was heading well and truly into the open side and just created the numbers, was able to get that ball over the top to the winger but not a lot of distance on the pass. Good pace right Hagen. there and uh, yeah, Hagen is just going to be an absolute menace for this BMTA team. Hagen likely or more than worthy of playing in many of the Opens teams here this weekend. Yeah, absolutely. So in the under-20s division, uh, no doubt her aim will be to carve up on today's finals proceedings. Here goes BMTA, though. They've got some space, and that's right idea on one of the last touches there, just not crisp enough. Yeah, Richardson, with the pick-up, she's looking for that link and to try to just keep moving the, uh, the defence laterally. They're, they're doing a lot of good work that way. And Little run away. Can Hagen get away? She's Not ended quite. up stepping over the mark. I oh, know there's a forward pass, but there's uh, there's a good little bit of interplay just mm. with the wing. There's not a lot of space there. There's another error. All just greasy. Just got to get your your head settled and make sure you're watching the ball into your hands. But some of these passes are coming up a little short as well. So, yeah. Coaches are going to be saying to uh, to their players, let's just get our basics and our fundamentals right, please, and get it some energy that's going to get some rhythm. And that's a beautiful finish. Wow, diving at the line from almost five metres out there and just sliding along the ground. That's the second try for the UQ Rebels, and it's the 82. It's Takare. Well, Takare. That's, uh, gee, look at the technique on that dive. No chance. And uh, the 74 there, Nasalio. Sort of almost just went, hey, <laughs> yeah. can't do much about that. Yeah, you, you'd want to be getting a little bit further up off the line. Mm. It's about the only way you can do that. But to do that, you've got to be faster. And, uh, and Takare's got wonderful technique there, sliding in underneath. The ground, as I said before, it's slick, so it does make it easier to, to, to dive. Um, and gives you that little bit of extra. You can dive from further out and slide oh, in. And here we go. Line. There goes BMTA. BMTA. They're on the board. It's 2-1 now. And uh, that's the perfect response. So they're not letting this one get away from them. 
Brisbane Metro. They want to stay in this derby. Yeah, Ella Denny, sweep around the side. Just hit herself a little bit, obscured herself from the, uh, from the defender by using the two uh, players in the roll ball and just swept in very narrow um, and very direct and, and they're just a really nice dive. And the basics, Des. Basics. We'll see. I reckon we might see something similar to that again once they, uh, they come back down when they get their next opportunity because, as I've said a few times, if something works, do it again. Well, bit of tit-for-tat touch in the last couple of minutes here. Penalty one for UQ for offside. Let's see if they can capitalise on their position. So Rayfield will be called offside. Now they've got to be really careful because an exclusion is a possibility. Yeah, that's two penalties. So Hagen, very, very clever, just making sure that she earns that second penalty. Rebels try the same play that they just got scored. Well defended there, Lydia McCarthy just coming up off the line, like you said, Des. That's how you've got to deal with this kind of ferocious attack. Yeah, you've got to get your dance shoes on when you're defending lines. You've got to get the uh, the footwork right. Hagen's going to get the, the ball over the top oh, here and man. score. That was wonderfully done. The, uh, the defence were really worried about that. their right-hand side, the left-hand side of the play, because the sweeper came around and, and sort of dragged them across that way. Hagen goes back against the grain here. On the uh, the quickie, you can see all the bodies suddenly stop, turn, go. Hagen's outside Ella Denny here, defender. Not enough space for her to uh, to clearly dive in herself, but the wing was wide open, so just pops that little left to right pass over the top, and uh, Rebels now up three one. Lacey Bowman, the try scorer there, but Evie Clarkson doing a lot of the hard yards, playing the final ball. An assist to her name. She's had a busy start to the half. Has Clarkson, the MTA. They'll look to hit back quickly here. Four minutes left in the half approximately. Close to the line. There's a playthrough call. So we were going to have a penalty there, but instead we're going to have a try. So the referees, credit to them doing a great job letting things go and play freely there. And the 27, Gabriella Johnson, gets the second on the board for BMTA. And the last pass from Charlotte Greeny. Well, she's certainly involved in this process, but they recycle here. You can see on the replay and just hands... Good catch and pass all the way through, and the defence is cut all the way in. And straight away, you see when they're getting the basics right and their rucking is good, they get down that end, they have no problem scoring. They yeah. can get a little more creative. They've got the ball skills for it, this BMTA team. So the 99, Isabella Narain. The ball in hands right now. Plays to Hagen. Oh, crack at the line again. And they're just too good on the dive. It's Imogen Murphy this time. So they're all having a go. They all want to get on this athlete scoreboard right now. And, uh, yeah, we've seen this play a couple of times already today. Needs a bit of work on a kicking technique, but just a little... Again, it's just a very direct sweeper play. They're just coming around behind, using those two players in the roll ball as a little bit of a, a, vis uh, a, a shield, a bit of concealment. And uh, the sweeper is able to come in and then just go direct at the line and dive low. 4 2 now. Uh, oh. Flat ball played back to the centre. Just resetting here. Let's see what BMTA can do close to the line. Will it be another dive? It will. Touch is called, and that's six. So, important defensive set for the Rebels because the last couple of sets we have seen uh, a couple of tries. Yeah, it's a good step and a, and a dive at the line there by Watson. But the uh, the defence on that side from Gabby Blade. They've got the ball back here. A little mistake from the Rebels. So the MTA will get another shot here, or several shots at the line. See which options they choose. Had a lot of shorter options so far in the game. They've, they like the short ball. Ella Denny picked the ball up there looking to, uh, to give a little short side sweeper. And then the sweeper wasn't there and she was kind of like... <laughs> Why aren't you here? Where would you go? So Rayfield now. Watson. It's fifth and last. Watson with the ball. They go long this time. And it will go to ground. Penalty called as well for a forward pass. So yeah, I think they've called the last one forward. I think the uh, the one off the roll ball might have come uh, might have been called forward as well, if even if that had have connected. I think you might be right, Des. Yeah, it looks just sort of looks like the two passes there were weren't quite working out but we're back now Natalia Hickling rolling the ball 
15 metres off her own line. Nearing the halfway mark. See what the Rebels can conjure here. Picking up from half. Just takes a little bobble there. Would have been away for all money. Offside is oh, the call. Oh, that's brutal. Yeah. It's fifth touch on halfway line. Yeah. She's got a bad pick up and you're offside. That hurts coaches no end. It's, uh, it's going to have to be resilient defence now on their own line from Brisbane Metro. UQ, danger levels here. Evie Clarkson passes now to Takare, who's already scored a try, wants another. Picking up from half, Clarkson again. Where will Clarkson go? She sort of floats the ball over the top, but can't find player in the same jersey. So forward pass will be the call. Yeah, and that pass was a little bit more sort of <laughs> just throwing hope. Mm. She kind of just picked it up, didn't really look to where the ball was going to go and just pegged it as far as she could and it didn't get a lot of legs on it and just fell to ground as the uh, the siren's going already. Well, half time there and that's just flown by. 4-2 the score with the UQ Rebels leading BMTA. So Brisbane Metro, they're still in this. Yeah, they're in well, with a sure. shot. They've kept it tight. And uh, what are we expecting at half time? Yeah, I reckon both coaches are just going to be talking about fundamentals and ball control and, and making sure they work hard to get on side because some of those penalties, they can't get, afford to give those option, like those, those opportunities to, to the Rebels. Well, which team can tighten things up as we head into our second half? The team that does uh, lose this match will bow out of the competition. But for now, that's all. We'll see you shortly here live on KO and Sky Sport next. The championships brought to you by Inferno. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. That craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Well, we're back here for more second half action at the championships, our finals day in the women's 20 division where the UQ Rebels are leading BMTA by a 4-2 margin. Des Fogarty in the commentary box with me. We were talking about getting back to principles, the basics, just getting those things right. It's a tough ask on a Sunday morning after two days of hard out touch. Yeah, third, third day... Day three game, first game of the the, the tournament of the uh, of the day. It's it's hard to get the legs moving. It's hard to get the uh, the mind moving. It's it's hard to get the hands going. You can see trying to get the the mind moving. There was a uh, a, a Mustangs player come running onto the field after the uh, the whistle, just to get make sure that they had actual six players on the field. And Clarkson pops one over the top. That's a touch and pass, but 
Yeah, this game, you, you really want both of these teams to really pick up their intensity and their drive, their run. I think that's how you get yourself into a game of this type and, and at this part of the tournament. Absolutely right, Des. Oh, we and they're working in the box. they got a bit of space there. Gabriella Johnson did well to just hug the line and uh, try to create a chance. Rayfield now. We'll work it back towards the middle. No strike dump on this occasion, so they'll do well to just put the ball down close to the seven-metre mark and force UQ to at least play one or two passes across the face. Oh, you can just see great wing defence from the far side of the field there. Uh, just trying to shut down it was uh, Lole. She was looking for that two pass, wanted to get up in the channel. Yeah, it's, and, and that's smart play from a winger, and sometimes, and it's it's off camera as, as well mm. in that that particular shot. So, wouldn't have seen a good pick up by our man here in the comedy box. <laughs> I'm not going to let it go, bro. Oh, no, I know you never will. <laughs> uh, so, a changeover oh. on. Oh, okay. Rani so, Hagen, mm. smart, has earned a penalty for voluntary roll ball. Hagen. Yeah, oh, ch almost charging past Rayfield. Was caught offside there. Uh, Charlotte Richardson luckily making the touch for her team. So Hagen involved here once more. Has she just gone all the way through? Yeah. Looks pretty good to me. And uh, great try from these two strike players for the UQ Rebels. Just too quick on the punish play. And, and the, the Mustangs players just caught into a not... Good body position. Oh, she got reasonably good body position, but the kick out. Yeah, Hickling's and, uh, just Hickling was just too quick off the right. Held her that that ran forward first, and then kicked out and around, and suddenly the defender was was on a f on her heels and had to dive and missed. Well, three tries are still doable. Plenty of time left in this second half for BMTA, but. They'd like to get one back here real quick. Eight metres out from the line, oh, picking nice. up from half, and that's a nice play to try and create an overlap. UQ Rebels seem to telegraph it a little bit, though. Some of these players, uh, most of these players, play against each other regularly, so both familiar with the play. Yeah, and all it was was a rooster, mm. just the uh, the dummy, and the half picks up and goes. I, uh, I'm a big fan of it, personally. That's it. <laughs> that, was, that was nowhere near that one. <laughs> She's... Uh, <laughs> the Mustangs players pulled out of the tag and tried to, to, to draw the penalty for a voluntary roll ball. She was about three metres away <laughs> by the end of the roll ball, but referee hasn't been able to see it, and that's one of those things where they have to be able to have a clear vision of it mm. in order to pay it. Absolutely close there to the changeover and a yeah, very sneaky play from Brisbane Metro, but UQ Rebels back on the ball here, 10 metres out from the line. What can they concoct here? Evie Clarkson once again with the ball. Lost Takaray. Oh. We'll get an offside call there. Takaray is just so dangerous on the dive. You don't want to give her an inch of space. And you can see how compressed the Metro defence is here. They have to be against this lineup. Clarkson. Clark, yeah, Clarkson taking the tap and getting herself. That's good body position. Good tag there by Charlotte Greeny. Shiania Graham. She'll be... Picking up from half here. Let's see what side they go. And, uh, yeah, back to the short side. Little skip away there. Oh, as the touch being made. Tag. That's a beautiful touch. Touch of the day so far from Wilshire. Diving into the corner. And her shape has to be good in that situation yeah. to make a touch like Had that. Had to be perfect. They go. They got a little bit of room to work with, but caught from half there. So, great defence. Positive signs for Brisbane Metro Touch Association. Look at this tag. She's just clip the heel as Jasmine Inches. Jim's trying to, to, to get down to the, the line but another error this is what Brisbane Metro would be wanting to avoid is the uh, the handling errors coming out off their own line they're yeah, just uh, struggling to get into the enemy half at this point in time Ah, uh, there we go and that's a helpful reprieve they've defended well they do deserve some possession here, and they're going to get it. They go for this little play that we've already seen once. Johnson again just hugging the line there, and she'll command the box set here. So sweeping players on now for BMTA. Abby Blewett out in the centre with Rayfield working as well with Millicent Watson. Watson wants the half position. Is she going to go here on fifth and last? She is. She picks up, tries to go through, but uh, probably probably a second, well half a second too slow to the half position. 
and cost him a little bit there. Yeah, and I think it was Imogen Murphy was defending and she was in just perfect body position. Had oh, the shots running away covered. on the liner. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt you there, Des. It just looked like we might be seeing a, uh, a special from Hagen. But no, a penalty called for something. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what it was for. I think we had a forward pass, perhaps. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so, Watson now and Rayfield. So they are used to working with each other. Little buddy play here in the middle, formerly Brisbane Cobras. And Watson will pick up again. But, oh. yeah, take. they've just got a little mix-up in the ruck there and not what they wanted. They really wanted a good strike at the end of that set. Yeah, the play was the right one. It, it just was all over the shop in terms of timing and, like, the, the, the sweeper was late getting into position. The half was late into position. The ball roll was, was not right. Um, it, it's it just... Clunky is, Clunky is the word that, that pops into head. And there we go. There's another one. So a couple of pressure errors here. It's quarterfinal. Winner takes all situation here. So got to hold your nerve because opportunities will be few and far between given the defensive prowess of both of these teams. So the Rebels, can they make it four in front? That will be the interesting question here. Nope. And they will not. So it's funny, the same part of the field there, uh, probably three sets in a row, the Rebels have just given away the ball. So the message from the box absolutely has to be... Uh, ball know, control. Keep it simple. <laughs> I'm starting to get frustrated because uh, the ball control issue is, is such a, a fundamental in the game. And, and if you're making the same error over and over again... It's not being corrected. That That's where I start to get frustrated mm. as a coach. I sense that nerves are playing into things here a little bit. Um, here we go. Oh, they, here they go close to the line. The timing right. oh, if, if that ball could have got to the link, if maybe half a second quicker, they can dish to the winger. Yeah, Teeklin comes around on the sweep and she's just a fraction early. So that pass mm. from half is just... A little flat. She has to reach behind her. That then means that she's got to bring the ball across to her front to be able to pass that ball across. But she's not able to do it, so she has to rush the pass, and the pass goes to ground. They're, they're just tiny little timing things, and you, because our game is so fast, they have such a massive impact, and it's so important that you work on your basics and get all of the timing and stuff right so that everything else comes together. See BMTA here with a piggyback penalty close to the line. Now it's Nasalio working in hand with Millicent Watson and Millicent yeah. Watson dives to the line successfully. Nasalio just a great ball player there, finding that space for her number 21, Watson. Yeah, Watson off the quickie. Just identifies the player just a little bit slow to start getting herself on side and to recognise that she was in trouble. No change of pace to, or acceleration to get back on side. Uh, I think, yeah, it was Gabby Blade. Normally a really strong, solid defender. Uh, in this case, just not quite recognising the danger. And then just a really nice step there from Watson. 5-3 on the athlete scoreboard. The Rebels still lead, but BMTA, there's, there's plenty of time for them to mount a comeback. Six and a half minutes left in this clash. Almost working her way through there was Hickling. We know that her pace allows her to work around players too. The MTA working to their box one, confidently. One there we go. They're going again here, and it's Johnson who makes those extra five metres every time off the line. They've got to start reading that, the Rebels. Keep driving, keep running, don't slow down. They need to go direct here. Tail end of this set, picking up from dummy half. Oh, and earns the penalty. It's McCarthy. And, yeah, they'll get a real chance here if they can get back to within one. It's anyone's game. So here we go. Brisbane Metro, they're going to try a little punish out on this side. It's, oh, I'm not sure what the referee's going to call here because they've accidentally caught, oh. caught up with each other. The ball player, ball carrier has ended up tripping accidentally the defender. I actually think they're going to pay a try here and say that they it's... Are. Yeah, because there's no intent in actually mm. tripping her over. It's so a little bit of contact, accidental. And yeah. uh, it hasn't... You know, it's really affected both players equally, so... Yeah, it's it's... It's an unlucky one if you're a Rebels player. 
like, although there is a technical thing to it, but it's like she's she's trying to get on side. The defenders, the, the attackers, trying to to get around on the outside of her, and they just haven't. They've just got tangled up with each other. It's not enough to call a touch. Yeah, absolutely. So it certainly makes this match a closer affair. Des one point in it now. Let's see if UQ and Hagen particularly can uh, create something there. Wasn't to be. Offside is the call. So six touches. They've got to defend this. You yeah. think? You feel uh, Brisbane Metro here. Five minutes left on the clock. So there's still plenty of time. But this one-point margin, huge morale lift for the BMTA camp. Yeah, I think that pass might have been called forward. And, that, and oh, straight away, though, error. They're just losing their heads a little bit here, the Rebels. They are an experienced oh. side for an under-20s team. But now one more. There we go. There we go again. Johnson on the wing. So their box sets have just been really clean in this second half, BMTA, and they're really laying the platform. Until you said that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's okay. They still hold on to the ball. Rayfield from half. Yep. Right on halfway, so probably not as many metres gained as they would have liked. Yeah, they, they didn't quite get their timing right on the uh, on the players coming on onto the field, so had to hold the ball up a little, and that gave the defence time to recover, but it looks like... Hagen driving in. Uh, it was Hickling, sorry. So UQ, they will almost certainly get a shot at the line here. You can see it's starting to heat up out on Mainfield, weather-wise, and tension. Close to the line now, Hickling passes back on the inside. The touch will be called, and it does look like oh. mate, potentially a shoulder injury here. Jacobson has dived for the line. And the defender, which looks like it's Matilda Rogers, has fallen over the top of her and have shins going into ribs. And, yeah, it's it's easy in those circumstances for, for body parts to end up rolling underneath. If you're the... It is actually... It's a leg. I thought at first yeah. it was a shoulder, but it uh, looks like, yeah, around that sort of shin area, something's... I have seen some... some Injuries in those circumstances that are not great. So our support staff on the field right now will we'll keep you updated as we have a break in play. She will be carried off the field. Matilda Rogers, she's had a great game too. Really given her team a chance here to vie for semi-finals. And uh, for Rogers, uh, that will be the end of her game, but she's working with... Uh, yeah. More than adequate support staff, so sure she will be fine. Here come UQ close to the line, though. Oh, the touch is tag. made, and Rayfield saves her team. Yeah. Puts them in with a real red-hot chance here with two. One try, uh, the deficit. All important, that touch. They've got to get down to the other end of the field here, and it's got to be early. And it's the Probably defense here from UQ has mm. been really good. Their shooters are flying up. No There's touch. now a voluntary roll ball. Just shaped like Grace Jacobson, just shaped like she was going to jump in and get the tag. And Just the, the oh, maturity nice. of this UQ side to sort of hold things together. It, it, they've been a little frazzled in this game, but in the back end, they're really just holding things together and showing their experience. This is good from Brisbane Metro, though. Yeah. They're shooting up and taking this. Oh, no. That's going to hurt. That's going to cost the oh. game there. I think that's going to wrap it up. Just... And Fell over, trying to make the tag. Got caught in the roll ball. Now you've got no winger outside. And for Brisbane Metro, that's a real shame. They were defending very, very well in that set. Piatau scores for UQ Rebels. That's just uh, yeah, a, unlucky, really. Yeah, Evie Clarkson does very well to get over the top of the defender that's on the ground and, and go fast and get the ball out to the, the vacant wing for the finish and now 6-4 with uh, we're inside the last minute here so they would need an absolute miracle in their favour here if they're to pull this one back and what they'd certainly need is a try right now in the next play or two here they, they go close to the line that's a pretty good dive will the referees pay it Looks like, they no, will call touch tag. Oh. that one very much could have gone either way should get a replay here in a second I had the teapot going yeah. <laughs> I'm a little teapot pointing to the spot. We'll get a pretty That's... good view here. Mm, 
Oh, I reckon that's down, but he's, he's right there, like, and at live speed. Great position. Watson's good on the dive. UQ will look to finish strong here. And an offside call blown. And uh, this will be the last play of the match, provided we do not see a penalty. They're happy to call it there, of course. The Rebels with a 6-4 margin. It probably wasn't as comprehensive as they would have hoped. Uh, however, BMTA really fought in this match. Yeah, and Brisbane Metro, if their handling was much better, I think they probably would have even come close to, uh, to knocking them over here. But... Uh, they can hold their heads up with their defensive effort, certainly. They were, they were strong. They didn't get blown, blown away by a side that really is, a, a, on paper, stronger. Um, so very good work from them. They had some good tries. It was very direct. But uh, UQ Rebels will move on into a semi-final. And for the Mustangs, that's uh, their championships done. Well, don't go anywhere because shortly here on the main field at the championships in Coffs Harbour, brought to you by Inferno, we've got men's 20s quarterfinal action. The Brisbane Cobras will take on the Hunter Western Hornets. Jack Rogers and Des Fogarty back on your microphones soon. <laughs> Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. The craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website.
When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Game down. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and a chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Welcome back to the Championships, brought to you by Inferno, live on KO and Sky Sport Next. My name's Jack Rogers, here in the commentary box with Des Fogarty for men's 20 quarterfinal. It's the Brisbane Cobras versus the Hunter Western Hornets. And uh, we almost saw a try there very early, squeezing through a gap, Des, but two uh, strong teams had a lot of finals berths before. But this is the uh, Hornets B team. It is the B side for Hornets. It's a strong region. They've got uh, got two teams into the semi into the quarterfinals. Excuse me, but uh, yeah, Jack, you and me, we've uh, we've moved from into the commentary box <laughs> in the break in between those games. You'll notice as well that uh, for viewers at home, that the break between games is going to be a little bit longer today as we uh, allow for 
extra time that happens through the case of uh, through the course of the day. But oh, well to get up in the channel there. Very saved. very fast. That's what I love about the uh, the twenties division. It's always very very fast. Playing on the pace of the game. They'll yeah. get six more here after a deflection back on the inside. That's a try for all money and Jonte Brown just uh, on the end of that one, but they split them open on in the middle. Try awarded by brand new open level six Tasmanian referee Cody Prendergast, who's been given this one. Uh, yeah, we were a little bit remiss earlier in, uh, in not mentioning the, the upgrades that have been given for referees today. Level fives, level sixes in the open and senior divisions across the uh, across the whole group That's of referees here this week. Well, well, the Hornets here, no they try to hit back straight SQA, away. And it's uh, an interesting early stab at the line here. Four, six, zero, Z, I, v. Might just four, let a little bit of dead air while we... Please a massive, really loud a bunch of illegal parked cars in the car park. Good on your patrons for interrupting our thought processes. Not allowed down the field, but yeah, the Cobras now back in possession. One try on the board, and it's Jordan O'Kane who's working in the middle there with Flynn Matters. So one of the more experienced players in this lineup. Matters, a little sinker. Over the top. sinker. Just uh, always great to see a, a well-executed sinker, Des. Luke Schaefer not able to, to reel that one in as he hit a, a, a the link hole. And an error from the Hornets on their way out. And Matters will go to work here. Well, it's with Kalis Brown. Close to the line. Can they squeeze through? They've got Matters. space and numbers. No touch has been made at first. Uh, well, it has been called back, so uh, second player made a touch there for the Hornets and a close shave there. But the, the Cobras are just so quick, they're looking right on top early on in this match. Yeah, Matters with the footwork was really, really nice. It, he, he did get caught, but um, and then a, an error in the roll ball from the Hornets on halfway. So they need to be clean, need to, uh, to, to just tighten up those fundamentals we spoke about a lot in the last game but oh, great shoot great shoot up excellent there excellent work there from Cooper McKenzie just getting up and stopping that roll on the Cobras they continue to find a way flicks the ball onwards there the referees will be chatting about a potential touch pass they're calling all clear so I think the ball's taken a deflection as it left the hands we'll get our little action replay here that's yeah. a fair call. I thought it was definitely late, but the on-field referee has uh, has said, no, it was definitely gone. Jade Blair, try scorer there. That little flick pass around the outside, pass by Jonte Brown, and nicely done. Oh, and there go the Hornets. Have they hit back here? No, they haven't. Close to the line. So the difference here at the start is that they're, the Hornets are having a little more trouble splitting open the middle defenders, the Cobras. Fifth and last comes quickly, oh. floats the ball out wide, but the defence up to the task. To number 14 there, Heath Crawford for the Cobras making a save. Yeah, Brandon Cox got into really good position and then just lo looped that pass over left to right to the winger. It just wasn't quite enough space to get it down low enough for, uh, for the winger to get down nice and low. So the Cobras up over the halfway, seven metres, and now 10 metres out from the line. See what they can do on the last touch here. Flynn Matters, ball in hand again. That'll be six touches. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Matters just running all over the place at the moment. He's giving all those extra metres and, and creating opportunities for his team. But now an offside call. So the Hornets will benefit from that, coming off their own line. See Carly Banks uh, over there with in in the box with coach Matt Richards. So she's now in full support mode on finals day for Hornets teams who had actually a, a, a great run at last year's uh, NTLs, former iteration of the championships. Here they are, back on the inside. Good defence. Stinging little run there, but couldn't crack onto the scoreboard. 
Let's see what they can do here. The number 49, Dransfield, will just surrender the ball in the far corner. <laughs> and a heavy touch, a fair one too. They're trying to stifle this Cobra's assault. Matters working his way off the field. Jade Blair back on the pitch as well. It's a lot of flair in this Cobra side, and they're going close to the line here as they scoop through. Can they get the ball away? Oh, oh that's lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Totorewa, he uh, sort of flops to the ground, almost pretends to fall over, but finds <laughs> that little space in the corner. Jordy Harris gets absolutely skinned here by the uh, the pickup from Ben Ross. It just flies through. Totorewa expected the ball and was trying to get down low and ends up taking what we call in the, the trade. He took a sitter uh, because he was sitting down. That's, uh, <laughs> that's wonderful. <laughs> It'd be so nice to be able to score tries just sitting down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Just take the chair onto the field and, uh, yeah, just pass it to me when you get down here. But oh, long ball almost reaches the winger there for the Hornets, but unfortunately just pulls up a few inches short would have been a great way to get the hornets on the board but the cobras right now they're in control of this matchup so let's see if they can do it again back to back tries will be the objective here flashy boots all round they've all got the pink boots on these co cobras do must be a few close mates out there in the middle in this side i see four or five pairs of bright pink Blue row boots. Yeah, we're well and truly past the days of if you're not wearing black boots, there's something wrong with you. So, uh, as the Hornets just can't quite square up and get the ball down in the roll ball, so they're, uh, they've turned it over. And John Ecott just falls over. Falling over, bring that ball back to his chest. Working in the middle with Jonte Brown, who's been busy. Start of this matchup. Gets the ball back again. He wants second no. phase, but too close to the line. Far too close. Yeah, it, it, it probably could have worked, but the roll ball wasn't clean. You're under such pressure and time pressure, and the defenders are right there. You're trying to get the ball on the ground so that it has zero downtime, but not enough. And, oh, that might oh, play on. Play on here. Let's see if he can find a free player. Becomes great netball tag. as soon as you're in the in goal, but a great touch. Jesse Walker with the pace. He got through. But the uh, Cobra's defence, the link out on that side, was able to recover quickly. Or oh, tried. Someone's tried to milk a voluntary <laughs> roll ball, and it's then pulled right out. That's the. Uh, it's du double edged. Uh, yeah. You know, going for that sort of play, Des, as you would know. Um, Not a big fan of unleashing it at tournaments. A park touch, by all means, but uh, at tournaments, yeah, not so much. Matters. matters. Doesn't quite get away. Jesse Walker, who we saw scoop in the previous set, making the touch there. So he'll work to the box, no doubt, here. Does need a rest. Hornets on the field. Cobra's player just trying to get back on side there. Hornets have earned a few extra metres for their charging runs up the centre. It's fifth and last here now, though. And Bishop, he works Whoa. through the line. And, yeah, he didn't see... It seemed like the players had got back on side, but his pace, his just flight of foot, allowed him to work his way yeah, through there. he was fast. That was very, very fast. I'm not 100% convinced there's not a hold on the winger. We're not going to see it. But referee was right there. It looks like there's been a turnover by the Cobras as we return to live play. And so six Hornets more. will get a full set of six. See how the they line. use it here. Diving at the line. This is the right idea. We will see a penalty blown as well. So offside, the call there. And six more touches. And they just tried the little punish play on the link. Mitchell French with the dive. You're going to try it on the other side. Oh, Pop that pass out, and I reckon Carlson strolls over. But Jalen Bishop's got some got some skills on him. We've now seen he can certainly put the pace on and Ooh. good stretch for the dive. But yeah, the touch wow. is made. That's also a try saver. Yeah, and they're just the, the 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 difference in the teams between in the line defense and attack here is just letting the Hornets down, open up that three point deficit. Yeah, they're playing well, the Hornets. They're just not quite able to finish at the same 
pace and with the same polish as uh, as what the Cobras are doing at the moment. So Cobras with speed will roll down, Last touch pick up, here. beautiful pace. That's Ben Ross. Uh, sorry, it's um, yeah Ben Ross again. Through again, flick pass, and his teammate wasn't quite quite uh, ready for it. The only other real option there is to throw it over the back of your head, but then of course you run the risk yeah. of an intercept. Yeah, and Ben Ross, he had to, uh, he had such speed that he's hurdled over the DoorDash signs on the far side. There is a, a referee that's, uh, I think it might, has there been a referee replacement in our game? Has this guy come from our field? Ah, uh, limping off. Yeah. Absolutely. So one has. of the referees has, uh, has injured, injured himself and is hobbling off out the back. So we've got a new referee on the far side of this game at the moment. Touch. Something you don't necessarily see. That is going to be a try. Oh, try time for the Hornets. And with the referee replacement is a try. So 3-1. Brisbane Cobras still lead, but the Hornets looking to fight back here. Oh, just Tony dives McDonald with the nice dive, but you can have a look and see the, the, the line there Brandon Cox runs once he gives that pass. Kale White sort of holds. Brandon White goes away, so it, it really kind of fakes out the uh, the defence into thinking that he's going to get the ball. He's very active on that, that, that drag out. So off the ball work, I talk about it a fair bit. And and that's really created that, that second thought in the mindset of the defenders there. And that's allowed uh, Cox to, uh, McDonald to slide through. So four tries in the opening. 12 and a half minutes. And here Bishop goes again. Jalen Bishop we go. finds a player on the inside. It's Cooper McKenzie. The Hornets are coming back bang, here. Three, bang. two, two on two on the fly. And uh, the athlete scoreboard now tightening up. Yeah, and this is going to look really nice. It's just a middle for Link. Scoop, a pick up, the defence from the Cobras. And just not good enough. Flynn Matters is in, in position to try to stop that one, but not enough. Jalen Bishop's just been a bit of a standout here for the Hornets yeah. in this first half. Really enterprising runs from the number nine. Cobras here look for the inside ball. Great shutdown defence. Hornets, they're up to it. Slap on the back. Yeah, McDonald did really well there. He read that he was going to have to get on his bike and get across there. Oh, maybe creating an overlap here. One six more, but instead it's intercepted. Yeah, Carlson was in really good position and got his hands on the ball and held it. Now the Hornets will work to their box. Not much time left in this first half. Two and a half minutes. Plenty of time, though, when it comes to scoring one or two tries. Let's see what the Hornets can do at the tail end of this set. Here they go, scooping from half. All the way through the line. Needs to find a player free. Throws oh. it back. Just running out of space. And uh, it sort of reminds of that famous Billy Slater try where he's chasing a grubber. Um, wasn't to be on that occasion, though. Hornets have really got their tail up now. They've got some confidence out of those couple of tries. Mm. And they are on the charge. So uh, this game's really come to life just in the last three minutes or so. Matters now. Oh, Matters just holding up the ball beautifully there. Not showing all of the cards in his hand. And Hornets will get the ball now. See what they can do with it. A clunky start to the set. Probably a... A good, a good tag. Good touch in the ruck by John Acott. It's just a, it's such an underrated skill mm. to, uh, you, you to can win that roll, roll ball the space. And, entire set. Yeah. And you can see, so the pickup is happening on six touch. And they're, they're 15 metres out from the line. Yeah. First, first tag, really strong, solid touch. Slows out down their rhythm. They get out of sequence. And it's so hard to generate uh, some pace and power out of nothing. Mm. Certainly an understated part of the game. And many players are known for it, but it's not, it doesn't always make the highlight real. Equally as important as scoring tries. And yeah, this, the winger for the Hornets here, the number 20, Noah Carlson, is just on fire right now. Can he do it again? He's going to need to work hard. This flank defence and Jalen Bishop, he's all over the park, making touches and runs. Good stuff from the Hornets. Looks like they'll go into halftime really in touch on the scoreboard here. Keeping in mind that this is the Hornets B team in the 20s division. So... Did you say in touch? 
<laughs> always in touch. <laughs> Everyone's always in touch, I suppose. Oh, that was really nice interplay and the, the, the pop passes, the catch and pass. It's the right idea with five yeah. seconds on the clock too. Shouldn't get another opportunity here, the Hornets. That'll be it. Yeah, Cobras just drop it and go, that's it. We'll take that. So our first half on the athlete scoreboard reads 3-2. The Brisbane Cobras leading the Hunter Western Hornets. And, uh, yeah, there's, this is going to be an exciting second half. Yeah. No signs of who's going to win. Maybe momentum in Hornets court at the moment. But the Cobras will hit back hard, Des. Yeah, and, and all the momentum with, with Hornets. I hope they bring that into the second half because that really livened up the game just in those last sort of four or five minutes. The championships brought to you by Inferno live on KO and Sky Sports next. We'll be back soon. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Welcome back to the second half here at Coffs Harbour CEX International Stadium. The Championships brought to you by Inferno. Men's 20s action. Des Fogarty in the commentary box with me as the Cobras try to maintain their slight lead here. 3-2 against the Hornets B team. Yeah, referee paying a touch on that play. Personally, I don't think he had control of the ball when the uh, the touch was made. I would oh, have played ball right down. to That's left. Way forward. It's gone forwards. Looked good though. Yeah, it's good. Very flashy. It's what we like to see. See a lot of that in the 20s division. Just out of the hands there. You can see Kalis Brown it's come forward out of the hands. The ball can actually travel forward in touch football, but uh, it needs to be released backwards out of the hands. So that's the important ruling there. Let's get into the physics of that. <laughs> no, let's not. Uh, depends on the wind <laughs> speed, I think. But, uh, yeah, without wind, it's a, it's a tough ask. You'd really have to... I mean, yeah, if, got, if you can spin the ball like Nathan Lyon or something, then maybe see how we go. Yeah. So, the Cobras up over the halfway mark. Let's see what they'll manage to do here. Back end of this set, Kalis Brown involved, Jonte Brown as well. Let's see if they can crack the Hornets defence early here. It's been a while since they've scored a try, but the Cobras, wow. well, they make that one look a little bit too easy. 
Yeah, it looked like it was going to be a little punish play. They got caught up with each other, and then instead he just picks up and rips one left to right over the top. And yeah, that was that was an, a bit of an easy finish. But if you if you shape and make it look like you're going to run a particular play or, or attack a particular point of your of the defensive line. The rest of the defence just reacts to that and then suddenly you go back the other way and, and that's how a lot of our tries get scored. Well, that'll be fifth and last here for the Hornets. Oh, great hole. Gee, the line was good. The ball could have been... Oh, I actually think the ball, the ball was, was perfect. The ball was perfect, yeah. Yeah, it just he was a fraction late and, and a little bit wide into the, the hole. Yeah, the ball was... He, yeah. No, <laughs> that no, was would, have had, would have had the defence beat all ends up had it connected, that's for sure. They play the extra ball out to the winger there. That's the 13, Whoa. Jade Blair. And a bit of tussle in the ruck. Torowera, who scored in the first half in the corner, sitting down. He's standing back up again. And uh, they lose the ball there. Six more, though, has taken a deflection. Richter picks up. Just pops it over the mm. top and, yeah, just... Uh, it's almost roulette there. As to which player was going to get the ball, but it looks like they've grounded the ball there. It's Jacob Richter. He threw the earlier ball, and this time he's on the end of one. Nice little uh, opening up there in that middle to link hole. Yeah, good footwork. The footwork yeah. freezes the defender, and he just kicks out. And by the time that... Uh, that Jalen Bishop tries to, to recover and, and protect on the inside, or sorry, from the outside. It's uh, too late. Richter's down nice and low. There's a nice oh. ball over top, but this one will be covered. And yeah. we saw at the tail end of the last half, the Hornets, they were scoring tries off going really direct through the centre, picking up from half and just showing their pace. So far, we've seen a little bit more yeah, creativity from the Hornets. Yeah, it's a foot in the ruck. For the Cobras, they look like they've figured things out at half time. Coach Brett Hughes, no doubt, making some small adjustments to ensure that they get a good start to this second half. Yeah, the Hornets, they, they did really break back into the game playing what I would consider to be pretty solid Hornets touch footy of very fast, direct, and then, uh, then look for your direction changes out of the back of that. But. Is this a try or is that going to get no, called back? Be... No, there's a four pass, uh, touch pass touch in there, pass. I think. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, playing very fast and fluid, that's that's what I would consider to be the Hornets' way. Uh, it's certainly the, the style that, they're, that they've become accustomed to. They can't quite get into their rhythm here with this team. They're trying to, to do it. Yeah, it's... Uh... Certainly, it looks like the momentum has shifted again. It certainly reads that way on the scoreboard. 5-2. Now the score. Flynn Matters carrying the ball up for his team, taking a tumble off the field as a result of running as hard as possible. Yeah, you don't have to run off the field, mate. You can, you're can. you allowed to roll off. That's fine. Just keep rolling. Ben Ross working here with Torawera. And oh, we've seen that. Ball play once already but the ball this time was magnificent so another try on the board for the Cobras and they're running away with it a little bit now yeah Totoera with the pick up step back this is about as simple as it gets create a four on three just with a change of direction it's the hard aggressive line to the short side first hard left foot step causes the defense to have to compress and, uh, and collapse on the open side and then just the long ball over the top Crawford scores a try, rolling as he does so. Hornets, well, they need to hit back here. So that ball, a little low, little low to the ground. It will be called ball down, no control. He uh, feels that he held on to it. Seems like it took a little bounce off the ground there. Yeah, the right option to, to throw one out the back to the, the bit of a passive link out there. It uh, couldn't quite reel it in. The pass didn't quite make it all the way to where he needed it to be. Cobras now moving the ball around. They're very flu uh, very flex. Lynn Matters, he'll, uh, he'll get to the half position here. Look for potentially Brody Campbell. No, go back to the right-hand side. Flick on. 
Are we going to see a try here? It's an unbelievable try, really a great team try here for the number 14 on the end of it, Heath Crawford. Uh, delectable. Yeah, and he, uh, he he drops out the uh, the big cobra at the end, but the bat on here from, I thought it was Kane, it's not. It's, uh, who's gone the volleyball bat on? That's uh, that's a special try, that was sinker Bonk ball from the middle over of the top. But uh, whoever that was, Crawford, he's got the try. He's popped the uh, the Cobra symbol back to his uh, his team after scoring. So Hornets now, they've really got to get into a rhythm. That's how they're going to break back into this game. Just by Still running plenty at of time. speed. There is time to, to get back in. That deficit's really starting to open up now. So they'll need to act soon to change momentum around here because so far it's been all Cobras in the second half. Pretty much everything they've they've touched has turned to gold. Fresh legs coming on here for the Hornets, but a, uh, an, error. A an error. So can the Hornets now change their fate? They'd love to make a semi-final here today. Potentially get to play that on stadium field later on. Short oh, side. Oh, that's down. That oh. looks so close. Offside will be the call. So they're ruling there that one player had affected the play. Offside. Second player's made the touch. Yeah, and, and I think they've... She may have also ruled that the uh, the pass was forward because mm. I I really think that that ball had hit the ground before the touch was made. hear it from here. Yeah. <laughs> it, it came down with a thud. So oh, the Hornets, what can they do here? Jesse Walker. That's down, well done. Hey, he's, he's got in there for his team, so he's brought it back to within four, Jesse Walker. Just squeezes in between two players. Yeah, and, and from a technical perspective, this is really interesting as well. The, the, the shaping, they've run a couple of punish plays out to the side. The shaping looking like a rooster, and then instead of popping it up, it's just a pick up and drop it out so it becomes that punish it's out to the link he steps back and the defending middle has to to really get on his bike to cover a space that he can't do so cobras have had a crack at the line but have been covered by the defense so the cobras once more they can pretty much put this game to bed with a try or two more here. Matters. Flynn Matters. He gets down to the ground so yes. fast. It's not a long journey no. for him. He's not a, he's not a, a uh, he's, he's rather compact as a human, but uh, just his Still. transition, watch this one from fully standing, bang oh. down. There's, there's, there's less than a quarter of a second between the time that he goes to throw that pass and him grounding the ball. Yeah. You don't know which one he's going to do. No, that's right. And, and the defender's just left standing there going, oh, whoops, um, the ball's already on the ground before he realises that he's in trouble. Matters there. Just really stepping up for his team, cementing this lead. Five points, six minutes. Seems a quite tough That'll for the Hornets. Try. But a miscommunication in defence there from the Cobras. They were in all sorts, taking full advantage there has the Cobras McKenzie. number nine. Uh, no, no, number nine. And it's Bishop. Bishop again, who yeah, has been great all game. Well, Des, four points in it. It's not out of the question. It's not, but they really need to defend solidly here, the Hornets. Need to protect where they are in the game if they're going to find a way back into it. Cobras, though, little... Trail pass, that's not going to come off for them. Will be an offside call. So six more touches. You can see a few players, hands on their hips and trying to suck in the air here. Fatigue very much settling in. Cobras will get another crack at the line here, though. There's the little Cindy play. And the oh. kick out. Oh, well defended. Six more. That was, that was trouble. For the Hornets, but McElwain has made the, uh, the battered the ball down and saved them. Rafe Priestley involved in proceedings here. Well, he's looking for the sweep, but you know, they're going to set things up for the next play here. Number 21, John Ecott. He 
He's been lively. Richter, try scorer and a sister. Will he go from half? Yes, he will. So Richter picks up. He likes to go right to left. Instead, he's scooping into the in goal. He's got pace to boot. That ball is down. Yeah, and Campbell. you've got to say, Brody Campbell there has pretty much sealed the deal for his team. Five tries. It's too much of an ask in four minutes. But a valiant performance uh, by the Hornets B team yeah. against this Cobras outfit who commanding. Have a look at what the, uh, the winger does there for the Cobras. He cuts in. Drags the defender in. The defender, uh, Carlson, he accident, accidentally takes out his own defender and forces him to go around. It's what we call a wing cut. That was really well executed. There's Referee's conferring ball. here. Yep. Nice long ball. There is a touch. Very least benefit of the doubt there because it did look like great defence. Here goes the Hornets. Flick on was a possibility. But the number 13 there has been good in defence. Jade Blair, all match, steps up to the mark again. So the Cobras here just trying to get the basics right now. They want to complete sets. They want to kill the ball down the far end of the field. Flynn Matters there on six. Yeah, so not quite enough. That's your fault, Jack. <laughs> Always. So Hornets now. They have an opportunity. It, they're going to struggle to get back to a winning position, but let's see if they can put a, one or two tries on just to wrap up the game. They're going to try the little Cindy play. Dummy pull out of it. See if we can go again. Yep, they are. Well, close to the line here. Little quickie play. Well and defended by the Cobras. Yeah, the Cobras, their, their shape is just all the way to the end here in the second half. Yeah. They've barely let anything through. So they're super switched on right now. And the try will be called. So they're finally split open through the middle. It's Brandon Cox who goes over for his team. And it takes, well, a Superman dive to, to get back on the a scoreboard here. And, and really interesting from a technical perspective. They... they trying to set up the same type of play. They've got the two or three different variations on it. There's, there's the, the variation that we call a, a counties, where you just split back in. There's the variation of the same play with the sweep around the Cindy. There's a couple of other ones where it haven't quite worked out the same way, but it, he's just the defence are not quite knowing whether they've got a man up or protect a zone. Uh, and eventually he gets oh, a, an intercept. An intercept. Here Let's we go. see the foot race here. Toe nose down, and he's going to get caught, it seems. He wanted to wow. bat back on the inside, but what a chase. It's the pink boots. Catches it in the end. <laughs> and uh, I just, i got to say, when you're wearing fluoro boots, you just run quicker. Jonte Brown there, uh, all the way from the other side as well of the field. But they've still got a defensive job to do here, and it will be tough because they'll be gassed. And after a penalty is blown for offside, the Hornets... They'd love to score again here. Close to the line, and that is a great pickoff. He got up and in the channel, and now it's another foot race once again. Can he go all the way? Kalis Brown, it's a big chase to the corner. Wow. Has the touch been made? He has. It has. It. He can play the ball quickly now as well. Let's see if they can uh, take advantage here. Oh. Great defense and almost a reverse intercept there. Well, what a foot race we just saw there between the Cobras and the Hornets. It's been quite the spectacle. It's these all last few on minutes. here. Watch the, the intercept, the tap, and then catch, and then run by Kalis Brown. He gets run down. I don't. It's the number twenty-four. Yeah, for that's Nate yeah. Simpson. Nate Simpson what with a, a chase. great chase. Especially, look, the the result is the result of the match is, is there's no doubt about yeah, it. That's but right. Still putting in that effort. But what I what I loved afterwards is the yeah, the quick roll ball <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the. Hornets player gets onside, comes up and just absolutely nails the player after he's passed the ball. There's a little bit of aggro after it. it justified ill feeling because he did. He got absolutely nailed. Uh, and then there was almost another intercept and it was just end to end. But uh, at the end of the game now, Cobras A, you go through to the semi-final winners 9-5 over the Hornets. The Hornets played very well in, in a couple of patches. They'll go away. They'll learn some really good uh, lessons out of this one. But 
some uh, some good footy to finish off both halves. Oh, it's been another excellent match this morning. Their second of the day, men's 20s quarterfinals. Next up, we've got the women's opens on the main field. The Sunshine Coast Pineapples will be taking on BMTA, Brisbane Metro, in another quarterfinal clash. Should be exciting, Des. Can't wait for it live here at the Championships on KO and Sky Sport next. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher was picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. Roost is calling. Chicken is the key. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free feel alive, but most of all, to feel new again. Get down, you just think they are. Now my little wannabe gangster trying to play hard. Get down, you just think they are. Now my little wannabe gangster trying to play hard. <gasps>
Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, the dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. Think they are. Never know, wanna be gangster, trying to play hard. Get down, they just think they are. Never know, wanna be gangster, trying to play hard. Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Well, we're back here at the Championships, brought to you by Inferno at Coffs Harbour. Jack Rogers in the commentary box here with Des Fogarty. Des, we've got women's open action, the quarterfinals between the Sunshine Coast Pineapples and the Brisbane Metro Touch Association should be a big matchup. Yeah, my prediction is a drop-off here. I think I'd like, I'd like to see a bit of extra time, but uh, Brisbane Metro finished third in their pool, uh, in, in Pool A. The... Pineapples finished second in Pool B, a long way behind in terms of points. There was uh, three teams that ended up fairly close on points. Um, the Pineapples, Renegades and Japan, uh, a long way behind UQ Rebels. But there'll be, there's a lot of stars in both of these sides. There's a lot of talent on the field. This will be a good game. Should be exciting, that's for sure. As we 
Look out to the middle of the park here. You see Kimberly Susi, Australian captain, who will be facing up for her team, but one of many superstars in this team. Courtney Trenery, Rachel Walsh, Kate Ellum, to name a few on the Sunshine Coast Pineapples lineup. BMTA, though, they've had some great results so far in the tournament, and I'd keep an eye out for the Nicola sisters, who have been running amok, absolutely menacing for any team that they face so far. And, uh, expect them to put in a bit of a power punch here. Meg Muir as well, great close to the line so far in this tournament. But let's see what the Pineapples can do early here with good field position. Rachel Walsh playing the ball. And, yeah, we've got a, an error there, so... Yeah, forward pass. It's a very tricky one to do, that technical mm. running one direction. Pass back across your body, behind you. And Carla Sankey's pass has just gone a little bit forward to Walsh. Playing the ball on halfway. They, uh, as as I actually mentioned on our, our previous BMTA game, there's... This side, the Mustangs, they're, they're very pr a principled touch side. They're good at getting the ball down the other end. Uh, yeah, just at the fundamental basics yeah, of the game. Just yeah. keeping things simple. And off the back of that, they score some serious points. So, Nice ball movement. See if they can keep those boxes as smooth as they have been. The Pineapples with plenty of space there. It's Courtney Trenery causing problems. Picks up again. Goes for the line. That's fifth and last. A good defence, the centre of the park. Georgia Hudson as well involved in that previous play. Evie Poulos pick up from half. So static final play here. Let's see, they go for a little switch at the back end. And it will be a changeover. So playing the ball now. BMTA off their own line. Out of the seven metres. This is what they were so good at yesterday, but, you know, the Pineapples, they will have done their video homework. I'm absolutely certain of that. Craig Morrow, uh, Queensland origin coach and a great tactician in our sport. Oh, gee, almost worked through there. What do you, how would you, Des, if you had a team that was playing a really principled box, they're running those drives constantly to the box, what do you try to do to disrupt that? Outwork them. Mm. And, and, and that's essentially what uh, what Pineapples just did there is, is try to, to put high pressure on them, work, get your work rate up nice and high and get your shooters going all the way up and down the field. And, and, and personally, I, I, you know, I'd be trying to get my shooters still going all the way through to the end of the set. I don't want to... Uh, might be a six again here. Yeah, you, yeah, like a lot of teams will do their shooters and they'll send them up just for those first two or three touches or... You know, they'll once they hit past halfway, they'll start to settle out and balance out. And but now I'm I've, I personally, if I've got the cattle to be able to do it, get, just keep going, keep, keep going, going, keep the pressure on all the way up the field, and don't give them um, you know a moment's break to be able to slow down and then set up what it is that they would like to do. So that's that's how I would approach it. It sounds like a reasonable counter to what I witnessed yeah. yesterday live yeah. here on KO. They were. Uh, yeah, they were just so good from the box. They never seemed to lose momentum, and their latch play coming off the back of it was incredible. So slightly uh, tougher start for them here because it's being well good defended. Ball movement. But yeah, they're, they're happy to move the ball around. This Mustang inside. Let's see what the Pineapples can do. So Susie working to the box, calling the shots here. Bit and of space. Yeah, there is plenty of space there for Jordan Stock out there on the wing. New players on Carla Sankey as well. So that's a handy set of hands, Sankey. She dishes back, or at least Walsh picks up from half. Grace Sell as well. So, yeah, they've got a lot of strike power, this pineapple side. Let's see what they can do on the Sankey's right flank clear. here. Oh. So could have close. held that one for a while. She was she was well and truly into the space. She could have actually held the ball here, Sankey, and just sliced through between those two defenders and then maybe given herself an extra couple of seconds to to link up with somebody, but presses that pass. Ball goes to ground. Still not scoreless. a lot of space there. No, yeah. Not much space. The defence has been outstanding from both teams so far. Really been putting feelers out. 
figure out where they can crack through the opposition line. But yeah, six minutes in, no tries yet. It's been a tense encounter. Who will break first? You've got to expect that soon we'll see a try on the board. So Georgia Hudson plays there for Trenary. Trenary with the good footwork. And now BMTA will look for a fast start to their set. Yeah, they looked like a no-touch call. And, yeah, that's what they're going to come back to, the match referees. That's, that's yep. sort of what I saw visually in real time. A full set now for the Pineapples. Yeah. Once they get the, uh, the cor correct location for it, and Chloe Sortel will take the tap. She'll Chloe recycle Sortel. it across. Once the half position goes to Kate Ellum, dishes back on the inside. Second phase play now. Ellum plays mm. wide, and you could see a set play brewing there, but it just wasn't wasn't quite crisp enough yet. Yeah, it's just that sweeper step back and then look for the second phase play off the back of it, but the pass that came out from Ellen wasn't quite in the area we'd, you'd like it to be. A little bit too high, a bit too tough to get hold of. Pineapples defending well. Oh, almost working through oh. there, Charlie Nicola. She's classically working there with Annika Tanamu. Probably the only person other than her sister uh, that would know her touch game better. Good little snipe there from Trenry. It's great to see some of the younger women's players in touch playing in the Opens divisions the, this year. They were both in the under-20s last year. Stepping it up now, doing a great job here in the quarterfinals. So, unfortunately oh. there... Ooh. A hold. Yeah. yeah fair enough. Ball. Yeah. So, the Pineapple's off their own line now. Dishing that extra ball, but great shooting defence, Des. It's uh, the Mustangs doing it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tsunamu tries to lay a tackle. You're a little bit too small to do that one. I'm sorry. <laughs> and she doesn't get away with it, despite the size. So, <laughs> it's uh, six more for the Pineapples here. We haven't seen too much of that yet, but uh, they're clearly showing intent here. The Mustang side, and they're, they're ready to sort of get down in the trenches and and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the big juggernaut teams in this competition. Pineapples always in the mix semi-final when semi-finals comes. Recent iterations. Oh, top. on cutout Oy, ball. And, and a step back. Yeah, the step on the inside there. Hasn't beat first points after eight and a half minutes for the Pineapples. It's the drive in by Kim Su C that just... It sets the intent. Look at that, that real aggressive drive in. The pick up by Evie Paulus and the finish on the, uh, the the step back against the grain there by Kiraly Costello. And that's uh, that's a really good try to start us off. But the, the ball from Paulus over the top was really nice. But oh. the intent from Kim Susi to drag her team going forward, that was really nice. Well, an extra metre or two made there off the tap for the Mustangs. Still looking lively, so they should. And every right to get this shot at their fellow Queensland team. So here we can see Meg Mir wants the ball on last. She's gonna look like she was gonna rip long. Whoa! And it would have been a play on, so only ball to ground getting in the way there. The ref said play on, play through, but unfortunately Isabella Bauer just couldn't quite get her fingertips on that one. Yeah, Meg Mueller thought that uh, she was a. <laughs> the body shape was very much. Oh, I'm through. I might put the ball down. Oh, wait, I can't. I'm half. I have to flick it out the back. <laughs> and then uh, compounded by uh, Isabella Bauer, who's dropped the ball and then was uh, the first shooter on the first touch and ends up being a little bit short, giving away the extra penalty. Well, they're opening them up a little bit here. The Mustangs, they're spread. Great ball. And uh, Great ball. they're not going to get to that because the ball out to the wing was. Picture perfect, and Georgia Harris finishes things off there for the Sunshine Coast. Just see the, the turnaround from that one, but it's it's Kate Ellen get to half, pick up, Bang. long ball over the top, and the defence is compressed a long way in. Georgia Harris has just got the uh, the standard job of the winger catch put down. It sounds easier than it actually is, but she made it look easy. 
2-0 on the athlete scoreboard. The MTA want to stay in touch with this match. Let's see what this primarily youthful team can do here. They do have a couple of those experienced names in the mix we talked about yesterday. And they're really going to rely on that now. So didn't look like there was a touch there in that previous play at all. But they'll benefit and earn a penalty. Yeah, and that's what the penalty's for. So the, uh, the defence are being told they have to move forward. You can't drop out. The attacker is just trying to make a touch on where the defender should have been if she continued to move forward. They're always pushing the boundaries of, yeah. of that particular rule because defensively there's Don't some benefit to, to, uh, to holding off. Yeah. Goes to ground. So roll ball wasn't clean on that one and it made the, the pick up for, uh, for, for Catherine Stevens really hard. Made it really awkward for her. And Sue sees also yeah. just turns an offside penalty there. She heard the referee's call. That's a really important thing to do. Listen to what the referee's saying. Blowing a player offside. So she sprints through. And an extra six now. So great heads up footy. Sunny Coast doing a really good job of just sort of suffocating the, the, the Brisbane Metro team at the moment. They're, they're using high work rate. To in, in defence to really put them under pressure, take their time away from them and then in attack they're just using high work rate again to, to drive down. It's, it's a really good example of how, uh, how high work rate, high energy can really dominate oh, they'll a game. they go straight and through there and it's Rachel Walsh show and go. splits it open. Grace Cell did well as well to open up that space through the central channel but yeah, Walsh can't be stopped once she uh, puts that left foot step on. Yeah, not a lot happening here. It's just a simple two pass. Somebody's up, holding, and then a show and go. Yeah, Brisbane Metro player has come in to make a touch and got caught out. The offload, and that's... She was supposed to be marking on Walsh, and Walsh just goes, oh, yeah, I'll just go through here. Well, three minutes left in the half. Mustangs yet to find their way onto the leaderboard. But only three tries so far in the hit. match. Here's Nicola. Plays wide. Can't connect on that occasion. Yeah, tried the, uh, the big long ball over the top. I think the shorter one because of the way that the defender came in and had to do a second bite to make that touch. Makes it really hard for her to get back on side. The smarter play there is, is probably to, to attack her before giving that long ball. So a shorter pass would have been probably the better option. Off their own line here, the Pineapples, they've been impressive in this first half. Hard to pick a standout, really. It's just been a great team performance. Costello there uh, with a little ruck error. And the Mustangs back on the attack. What can they do here in the dying minutes of this first half? Charlie Nicola to Namu. Nicola wants the half position. Will she rip long? Will she go short? She can do it all. Nicola and... Uh, she plays to her sister here. Good defensive shape by the, uh, the Pineapples. Here they go again. Looks like, oh, a little wrap around. They've got the numbers. But the touch has been made. Yeah, oh, Evie Paulus. Oh, that's good. She good got on her bike pretty quick and recovered well. Tanamu now isolated on, fifth, on last touch and it's a pretty, uh, pretty soft turnover at the end of the set. Oh, oh. So, Tanamu points out an error. The refs were all over it as well. And now they'll get probably one last crack at the line here. Before calling the plays forward. <laughs> Tanamu doing a Tanamu lot of refereeing in the referee. last 20 minutes. Yeah, uh, 20 yeah. seconds. She uh, pointed out both errors or both, uh, both penalties. She's not wrong at all. Both cor <laughs> correct in both instances. So, um, fair as well. Here they go at the line. No luck Paulus on that good first spot. touch, but they got, got plenty of touches to work with. Catherine Stevens out on this right link. One of the more experienced players in this lineup. Close to the line now. Can they get over? The referees will have a chat about this one, but it will be a touch. Cortrenary and really good footwork to get her feet to the line and still stay forward of the line to, uh, to make the touch. Picking up from dummy half, Stevens. Ooh. All goes to ground. 
You know, defense wins tournaments, Des. And admittedly, the Pineapple's defense right now sort of starts to have that championship quality about them. There are other teams in this division, of course, like UQ, who finish top of their pool, who defend exceptionally. But the Pineapples just look strong. They're, they're really doing a great job of just smothering this, uh, this Mustangs team and, and just choking the life out of them, really. Like, they're, they're forcing errors. The passes aren't going to hand. The, uh, the, the speed of run is, is like that we've seen Brisbane Metro do through the course of this weekend uh, is, is not quite there because the pineapples are outworking them. So for Brisbane Metro, that halftime talk is just going to be about let's lift our work rate, let's lift our intensity. Well, it's a positional exhibition here for the Sunshine Coast Pineapples. Can they get over the line and make another semi-final here at the championships? Brought to you by Inferno. We'll be back soon live on KO and Sky Sport next. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, the dedicated Dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Welcome back to Coffs Harbour, the championships brought to you by Inferno. And it's our grand final day here today, quarterfinal action early on this morning, where the Brisbane Metro Touch Association have got a three-point deficit to make up against the Sunshine Coast Pineapples in the Women's Open. And Des Fogarty, I can see, just cringing there off the first touch of the half. They've lost the ball. The, uh, the, the, we were talking off air, the... the Brisbane Metro coach, if, if it was me, I'm talking about work rate, I'm talking about intensity and just getting our basics right. And off the very first touch, dropped ball, fumble in the roll ball, just hurts my brain. Mm. And Sunshine Coast Pineapples, well, they don't need all that much to sort of work things in their favour. So don't want to give them too many opportunities at the line. They were good in the first half. And I like that word that you, you use, the suffocating of this BMTA attack. They've been really good in a tackle tournament. So to stifle what they're doing is just, uh, yeah, good on the pineapple's part. Yep, and they're doing it again. That's three or four touches, and we're not... That's five, Last. yeah, so that was four touches, five, fifth touch, and we're only just now crossing halfway line. It's forcing the Mustangs to sort of take that extra risk on fifth touch and the Mustangs they like to play very direct footy yeah and they're not getting giving themselves a chance to get into it but the pineapples are not giving them a chance to get into the game and it really is a uh, a, a testament to hard work and, and just how much effort 
can contribute to to a good game plan and and that's that's what pineapples are playing at the moment high work rate it's high risk over the course of a tournament because you can risk you know burning, burning out. out your players and they get into a uh, a, a semi final or a, a final and they've got no nothing left in no juice left in the tank but charging shooting run from herself she doesn't make the touch there but adds plenty of pressure that's that work rate that des you've been talking about they're just all yeah look at them they're, they're just on their toes the whole time never relaxing three three tries is not enough in touch and and this experienced team knows a nice little passive ball out the back but i uh, wasn't to be yeah pineapples well and truly in control of this game but for the, the mustangs they can get back in. they have the firepower they can get back into this game and it can be one of those things that like we saw in the previous match it could be you know bang bang and they'll uh, they'll work their way back into it but so for the pineapples they've got to keep the intensity up for the brisbane metro they've got to find it and then launch it themselves give their players serve uh, good service their their ball players give them good service get them into good positions and then let them work their magic so driving through the middle now picking up from half trenary can she do Ooh, touch has been made on the good half tag. made it back onside just in time great touch there by the bmta number 56 page folk olivia At olivia atkins there Removing herself from the play as she works towards the this box. This is much better. Yeah, that's that's what we're used to seeing from this Mustangs lineup. As Charlie Nicola re-enters the field, she'll pick up from Tanamu. See if she can get the kick ball out. away here, and she does kick out. Creates oh, the space. One more pass, and that's a try. And you could see there, the number twelve, Kiralee Costello, left it to the last second to come in. Didn't give enough time there, or the pass to go out to the wing close though yeah and, and it comes from that platform from those first couple of tags they got good body position they got the, the ball movement around to try to beat that those first couple of shooters got some momentum and then it opens up for charlie nicola to, to really generate something that could very well have turned into a try so it's it's that that's all they need to do it's not a huge adjustment and they give themselves two or three opportunities like that they score one or two tries, and this game gets really tight. Well, tight it may get, but it looks pretty good for the Pineapples. Do we have a touch, a touch. in the corner? We do. She's slow getting up. It's a little slow getting yeah, up, but she has herself, but absolutely saved her team there. Yeah, Lily Neal has uh, laid herself out full stretch to make that tag, but in doing so, she's... Oh, late switch there, and they're up to it, so it will be... Uh, thought it was going to be a touch pass call there, actually. Might be. Yeah. So Tanamu gets the ball back for the Mustangs. There we go. There's that yeah. ball movement. And now they've got momentum. The box. Even with the slower roll ball there, they've got momentum. They've got pace. They've got space to run into. And now players coming on. Should see a healthy strike dump on the tail end of this set. Or are they going to play into the open space? It's the 50 there, George S. Moore, uh, who rolls the ball. They need to get a good strike here. Got to get to half. And sadly, that'll be six touches. But a really positive driving set there from the Mustangs. Yeah, they've, they've finally figured out how to break themselves free. Now they've got to finish it off at the back end of the set. So they've just got to be able to execute that like three or four more times. Things will start to really open up for them now, I think. Cell with a power punch through the centre of the park. They're working with Rachel Walsh. Cell gets it again. Drive, dumps the ball uh, about eight metres out. And, yeah, they're really just trying to play on the pace of the game here. Now, the Pineapples, they sort of remind of like an Olympic marathon runner where they're actually controlling the pace of the game. So good at doing this. Yeah, they're just, just tempo. It's, it's very familiar style to me. It's very... Uh Oh, hey, oh, giddy up. Big touch. <laughs> and uh, certainly not on purpose, just the momentum moving forwards. The referees let it play. Jordan Stock there with the ball now. She's happy to hold it up. 
Any time lost is time for the Mustangs at this point of the game. They go out to the left, though, the Pineapples. Go for the line. Bella Bauer in really good position yeah. there. They had good shape defensively. They've got good shape going up to make the touch. Team looks in good position here. Poulos shown the ball to right her. To left. Back, back on the inside, goes forwards, and it will be picked up by our match referees. So 3-0 is still the score on the athlete scoreboard. No tries in this second half. As of yet, nine minutes left on the clock. So, a good drive from yeah. Metro here. They're, they're, they're really driving hard. All down by Nicola. H. Falk with the ball in hands as well. Hannah Forbes dishes back on the inside, picks up from half. Lost track of the count. And, uh, yeah, fortunately... All right, there was a forward pass in there. Yeah. Okay. I didn't see it. So. But I'm not the one that matters. Little forward. I think it might have been that back on the inside because yeah, it possibly. happened really quick. Maybe they didn't have time to readjust their line. And it, it would be quite impressive if the Pineapples could keep the Mustangs out for 32 minutes of touch. Right. One yeah. would assume that the BMTA have a lot more tricks up their sleeve, but for now, the Pineapples. Just controlling the game as we see the ball go to ground, slipping through Susie's hands. Let's see what, yeah, Pineapple's intensity looks to have dropped just a fraction. It might be that moment in the game where the uh, where the high level of work rate is just starting to bite in the legs and it's starting to open up some space for Metro, oh. for the Mustangs. Floating ball, called ball down. Rather than a, a touch there, didn't have control of the ball. So Felicity Archer turns over there. But up in defence, they're going to need to work hard here. The ladder sort's got to readjust their line. Let's see what the Pineapples can do with this latest piece of possession. Should only be one touch to come, max two. <laughs> Looked flat. Yeah. Probably a little more than flat. Grace Cell, she's quick, could go herself. Great tag. Yeah, amazing touch there. Charlie Nicola backing up in defence. Pineapples. Strike down. Oh, close to the line. Oh, they're, they're through. Another, they're There's no short. touch. And they might go for the line here. <laughs> <laughs> there's players, there's bodies all over the place. There's That's players uh, on the ground. Might be. It's a confusing passage of play, really. Yeah. Looked like uh, the dummy half, the number 17 there, Evie Polis, Polis, had been caught, but then all of a sudden, play on. And there's a catch by, I thought it was Paulus on the ground here at the end. So Trenary ah, went through. Paulus on the ground, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Paulus has hit, land, caught the ball, landed, and then Back. suddenly <laughs> was like, oh no, the ball is still alive. And wow. you can see there, Zella Gillespie comes. Over just to try to make that last second touch as uh, Paulus is stretching out on the ground to score. But it well. stays 3 0, six to go. It's still a very tense encounter. No tries whatsoever in this second half. And a strategic masterclass, it has to be said so far. Susi, ball in hands. She throws the dummy and makes an extra seven metres. Picking up from half on fifth and last. They'd like to kill the ball on the seven. It's a good result there the Sunshine Coast. Do give a penalty, so it's a couple of metres lost, but overall good result. Yeah, Mustangs are in, ha, had that one well covered, but now because of the slow turnover, see Pineapple's shape is really, really good to get some high press, some early shooters on one and two, three... High shooters again, yep. and... 1-2 defence. Yeah. And this defensive setup here that we see is, is one of the main reasons in the women's origin Queensland have been able to get over New South Wales the past few years. And uh, that's, yeah, largely this 1-2 defence. Uh, New South Wales are known for their driving patterns up the field, yep. especially towards their box, and it's just, just so disruptive. Yeah. High press is something that, uh, that my old club... We're big fans of my, my club in Sydney that's now South. We were big fans of that as coaching staff all the way through all the uh, the teams. I picked that up from there, and when it works, it works really well. It, it just suffocates the team, the other uh, the opponents, and creates all the opportunities. Oh. It's caught Trenner. He's going to get caught here, but 
She's just kicked out. Shown. Just got tagged on the uh, the heels. She'll go again though. Just so lively, and yeah, this this high defence only works if you've got a full team of fit players. You yeah. can be so fit to be running forwards in defence effectively, um, and then still have the energy to attack and be creative. And here, the pineapples. Well, they haven't really needed to convert any of their try scoring opportunities because their defensive efforts have been so good in this second half. Let's see what the Mustangs can do here. Tanamu picks up flat. Fifth and last is the play. Nicola with the ball in hands. Can she get around? Doesn't look oh, like oh, she touch. has been caught on the foot. And uh, that was close as ever. Maybe if we didn't have that little trip in the... Yeah, in the she had the, uh, the second gear here. She's hurdled to Namu. <laughs> and then a kick out and acceleration. And really, yeah. that is... I think it's Paulus might be the one that's laid out to make Paulus that tag. Paulus has been phenomenal. Yeah, she has been fantastic. Yeah. Um, but... It's, it was good service for Nicola, but they kind of had that, that middle period of the second half where Brisbane Metro finally figured out how to create the space and build some momentum. They then panicked a little bit at the back end and thought they had to throw everything and throw something Kitchen super sink. funky, whereas they really just had to play basics once they got into the open space. Haven't been able to execute their... Uh, their end of set plays and now it is desperation times for them there they're really desperate to get their hands on the ball again and and get running but it's it's probably going to be a bit too late for them keep that tournament alive here the mustangs they really really need a try in this set goes without saying or a penalty could work too yeah they need the try now though because uh they need three of them Oh, and they found and a way. got it, finally. They found a way. So they finally cracked the Pineapple's wow. defence. And Meg, that's a nice try, too. Meg Muir is going to finish it off. It's the work done. Here we go. You can see Paige Folk gets mm. the ball down. Archer with the simple pass. I thought they were going short there, I think. Yeah. And Meg Muir, she's been excellent inside the seven-metre mark. Uh, all tournament. Got a good dive on her too. Now they really want to get things moving here to BMTA, but they have to bring that ball back to the halfway mark. So about 10 seconds wasted there. And in the grand scheme of things, that might not seem like a lot, but with a minute and a half on the clock, yeah. every second here is critical. Ball control for Pineapples is critical here. Don't throw anything too dramatic because uh, an intercept changes the play, uh, changes the, the shape of this game. A full set of just throwing the ball around and running at the line. And that's uh, a tough enough. one there for BMTA. A penalty blown. And the Pineapples will know how to tick down the clock here. They're just going to run a few short ball plays here. Sue C will take control of that domain. Oh, I don't know. I like that idea of throwing the long pass. There's a couple of risky passes here. Trying to wind down the clock. And they're just trusting in their ball skills. If you've got the skills to do it, I suppose. But they want to keep their heads cool here. Keep it 3-1. 3-2 is a much scarier scoreline. Oh, oh, going wow. for gold here. Looked flat Sankey out of the got hands. Low. Yeah. And then gets landed on, but that will wrap it up. There's uh, there's really no way back for the Mustangs now. They'll they'll take the consolation try that they've picked up here and and might get the, their hands on the ball for one or two touches here after the end of this set. But there we go. That'll be it. So 10 seconds on the clock. Any last minute heroics will be in vain. There's space out on the left. I'd like to see it happen, you know. Yeah, just rip it. Bit of a foot race. Rip here. Nicola will. She'll look for it. Maybe back on the inside and the ball goes to ground. So the Sunshine Coast Pineapples get up there 3-1 over the Brisbane Metro Touch Association. A good showing uh, by both teams. And the Pineapples, they look locked and loaded for a serious semi-final this afternoon, Des. Yeah, and technically, from a technical perspective, the Pineapples, just excellent game plan. High, high work rate, hard work, positive you know, intent in defence to try and suffocate 
the Brisbane Metro Touch team, the Mustangs, and it worked 100%. You've got some really good, uh, talented players on that Mustangs team, and they couldn't find a way to get into the t- into the game. So, really good job by the Pineapples. We'll have to see what they can do in the semi-final later on uh, this afternoon, but uh, that was a really entertaining game. Cracking game indeed, and live on the championships coming right up on KO and Sky Sport next. We've got the Sydney Scorpions taking on Scott Buckley's Sydney Mets in the quarterfinals of the Men's Open. Stay tuned for that. Should be a scintillating uh, contest. Don't go anywhere. If you're the referee, put in your earplugs. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. Roost is calling. Chicken is the key. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. Down, it is think they yard. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Down, it is think they yard. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website.
When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roost is calling. Chicken is the key. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Deep down, they just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Welcome back, and it's quarterfinal time here at the Championships in the Men's Open Division. Sydney Scorpions taking on the Sydney Mets. Scott McAllister and Carly Banks in commentary for this game. Quarterfinal time in the Men's Open, the top tier. This is going to be an exciting game. Two Sydney teams taking each other on for a semi-final spot later today. Yeah, local derby for sure here, Scotty, and uh, really looking forward to this one. Scorps have got the first possession here to kick start us. They finish second in Pool B. And the Sydney Mets, they finished third in Pool A. Not too much separating them in terms of wins making their way through. Five wins and a loss for the Scorps. Four wins, a loss and a draw for the Jim Mets Tony. as we see Tony get into the in-goal area. Links up with Osborne. First try here in the opening quarterfinal goes the way of the Scorps. Yeah, and he's had a cracking tournament, Kieran Toner, and he's uh, started this one in fantastic fashion. Uh, he went close on the play before previous, and then he gets through from acting half, slices through and finds the ever-present Luke Osborne, and uh, off to a 1-0 lead, the Sydney Scorpions. Perfect start 
perfect conditions as well for this match. Sun shining through. Again, we've had that familiar little morning shower here. And it hasn't really made anything too wet and slippery for the players. They've got great conditions sitting at about 24 degrees at the moment. Mets now straight away back from the restart. They get caught in possession. Moffat comes back to the seven. Here he is in the six. Ball in hand. This time just a bit shy. Back on the inside from Catalano. Well, it's opened up early. We're into a shootout and we're locked at one apiece. Yeah, nice little reverse quickie play with the follow there um, between Catalano and Luke Moffat, who has also had a fantastic tournament for the Mets. And, uh, yeah, we're one all. We're all locked up. And uh, I think the scoreboard attendance is going to be fairly busy over there, mate. Oh, absolutely. Be on standby. And the last time these two teams played was in round seven of last year's competition. The Mets won that game 6-5. Very tight tussle, and it's always a great contest when these two Sydney teams come up against each other. Both teams, little bit players that would be very familiar with each other, come up against each other in local competitions, now for their regions as well. Here at the National Championships, as Kennedy threads it through the line. They just held off him fractionally there. Just couldn't connect up on the right-hand side of the field, but looking dangerous. Yeah, looking at that M2 option there, and, um, yeah, nice start from the Scorpions. They've been really, really effective with their first couple of uses of the footy. That's now coming out of their end. Pretty good metres on the first couple of touches as Blackwood gets towards the sideline, gets solid contact for his efforts as well. Better punch coming out of the box. Fifth and final touch for them. Ashby takes it right to the line. It's going to be a late penalty in the count here for the Mets. Yeah, Scorps won't be happy with that late penalty. It's always tough. And then uh, you're giving Mets a repeat set. And we've got Nicholas Good out there. And um, he should have marshaled the troops and, and, and have a good process up his sleeve here for the boys. Now we've got other quarterfinal action taking place as well at the moment. As we'll see how the Mets go with this play. Bit of space out on the right-hand side of the field. Back-to-back -back tries here for the Mets. Sees them go in front 2-1. Yeah, fantastic piece of play there um, from the Mets. They set up um, Jade Nashby back on the quarterback and a nice long ball left to right and uh, a nice put down in the corner and uh, uh, we're all tied up here. Yeah, the remaining quarterfinals, Central Queensland Bulls taking on the South Queensland Sharks. We'll keep an eye on that one that's just adjacent to us at the moment. The South West Queensland Swans who finished on top of the pool are taking on the Sunshine Coast and the Hunter Western Hornets taking on the UQ Rebels. That's the remaining quarterfinals. Here in the men's as the Scorps now slice straight through from the restart. Oh, I think you're right about the scoreboard attendant. Don't worry about him. Worry about us up here as well. This is an electric start. Yeah, it's just end to end. And um, that's a um, bit of a soft try. Um, and I know Scott Buckley wouldn't be too happy with, um, with, with that one there. And um, yeah, But again, Kieran Toner on fire. Puts on another one for the Scorps. Try scorer Alex Nichols O'Neill in the 22 for the Scorps. Two all. Four minutes of play in this quarterfinal. Semi-final spots on the line. Bayes play here and they'll get pulled back. Zoe Jenrick on-field referee. You can see on your screen at the moment. Forward passes in signalled. Kim Skelly and Dave Baggio. The other two referees here in this quarterfinal. It's a pretty... Pretty impressive refereeing line up there, isn't it, Scotty? We're blessed by the best, um, you know, in our sport. And, um, you know, they've had a great tournament in general, all the referees. Kennedy goes short off the hip. Watkins feeds it as well. His fin again from half, looking left, looks right. Comes back to Luke Osborne. And another, that was the six touch. Just probably lost the touch count there, the Scorps. And now, like, we're getting into that, into, that, into that area. Both teams have sort of, like, gone through, you know, those, those sort of early sets. And now it's time to get into the grind. And it's time to sort of really, really play some disciplined um, touch and sort of, you know, try and get the ascendancy here. It's Jade Nashby. Now feeding it to Nick Good. Another late penalty towards the back end of the set. They've given a couple of those ones away. The Scorpions are going to find themselves under pressure here defending their line. Yeah, I'm liking what these referees are doing, mate. They're making sure these players are moving up and getting getting off the line. And, um, you know, you feel like you're going to get bang for buck with uh, with your attacking processes, you know, if the referees are all over that area of the game. And here's another penalty that's been blown from Dave Baggio. Second that has been given here in the seven-metre zone. See the Scorpions bench on side just 
The coaching staff giving a few messages. As they go away from Ashby. This oh, nice little pump. And Matt Alisso Masachi on the sideline. Twinkle towing down the paint. Scores another try, a little post-try celebration as well from Mads. Yeah, nice little quiet one there from Madsy. <laughs> um, but, yeah, got it done, and, and this is this is really good. Here's all the experience around the back. Nick Good just held his line and then uh, drew and passed nicely to Mads, and uh, it's a 3-2 lead to the Sydney Mets. It was just a little throw-off as well from Jay Nashby sweeping mm. around, hits Nick Good, and you see Madaletto, a quality fi finisher on the edge for the Sydney Mets team. It's another one on the board. Scorps will be looking to hit straight back as they have throughout this contest. They're the first team to score. As soon as the Mets have come up with points, they've managed to come back up. Looking to flick that one out there, Max Masters. Yeah, really nice job there from the Mets. Um, wing got out really, really nicely and, and, and sort of um, handled um, that attacking um, sort of probe there from, uh, from Kieran Toner admirably. Sydney Mets... Having started their set on the right-hand side of the field, couple of touches, gets them to the interchange area. Replacement play is flowing on nicely. They're quite tight in the middle. Symbol now ball in one hand. Oh, just loops it out the back to Matt Alitso. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, Kai Symbol and take a bow. Um, I, I said the other day, I believe he's in the top five players in the game, and he he's just he came on off the back of some great flow. So that's a that's a total team touchdown there from the Mets. Their their flow out of the box was exceptional. They got their strike dump, and then Kai Symbol and how about the pass? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that before. It was almost like a lawn bowls action, just whipping it down the green. <laughs> Look at this ball in one hand, switches it to the right hand. Have that. Jack High, mate, he's there. Fantastic try from the Mets. They're up and about. Now, the biggest margin of the game so far, two tries. Tona, shy of the seven. And good defence as well. They've tightened that up a little bit, the Mets on their line. They've looked pretty comfortable the last couple of sets, particularly yeah. after the restarts. Yeah, it's the discipline, right? It's the discipline that Mets are bringing to this game. It's just unfortunate. As soon as I've done it, commentators curse. Carly Banks, be quiet. <laughs> um, so... What I like, though, about the Mets is the way they've started. They're, they're going to stick to their process. They're going to stick to their game plan. They're going to be consistent. And this is, this is the intriguing matchup here because Scorps are quite unpredictable um, and they're able to put a try on out of nothing. But Mets have got the consistency. So it's going to be interesting to see who wins the day at the end. Osborne into half out in front. Watkins can't dance away from the Mets' defence. Bring it out to the left edge. They'll come back towards the middle of the field now with Osborne yet again. They're going to pick them up for an incorrect play. The ball not facing square there, the big man. And today we've seen in all the, you know, quarterfinal action so far, it's all been about trying to get your one percenters right. Those little errors can be costly. And see what I'm saying about the Mets? This flow that they're creating is just disciplined, and it's you know, and it's what you need to do if you're going to be there. You know, at the end of the day, um, when all the chocolates are on the line, mate. Sumolan again, the ball in one hand, dancing, no touches made, looking for a penalty, and it's pulled out within that seven metre zone, gets it as well. Yeah, well done from Blackwood, he did a good job there to earn that penalty for his team. Now attacking down the short side, coming off the left foot, and they scramble across to make the touch, Pulu looking pretty comfortable in defence there for the Scorps. Back midfield, He's looking dangerous, left Simulan. foot, got him again. Almost slipping in. Come back out and play it now on the seven metre line. Still a touch to work with. Last one for them now. And they're well covered in the middle. Matthew Chatton caught in possession on the final play. Just probably fell apart from them. Yeah, an interesting little play they tried to run there. Looked like it was shaping for a... Uh counties for Kai Simbolan, but then went out the back um, yeah, to Finn Watkins. So very, very interesting there. Scorps now rolling downfield. Still getting players into position. They've got too many on the field. Yeah, seven on. Wow. There's a bit of a contexture here from the Scorpions. Alex Nichols O'Neill pleading his case. They didn't have seven. Referees won't be changing their mind. And this is the stuff down in that, down that Scorp 
Scott's box. Josh Phillips really needs to get the troops together because these types of costly errors, there have been a couple of cheap turnovers and then the seven on. He's really got to pull the boys together and make sure that they stay in contact. At 4-2, if the Mets go up another one here, you know, it could be a very difficult and a long way back. Come back in field, nice touch. Coming up out of the line. Might give a penalty away for the contact. It was all a bit arms yep. and shoulders. Yeah, we're seeing a bit of this with those links striking. So it's really important that people get the tip that the referees aren't going to cop that at all today. Well, the set to work with Jake Nashby. As he's slid under he underneath. Yeah, he looks pretty happy. He's heading back towards the halfway line. The Mets get their fifth. And it was uh, early in the touch count. Jaden Ashby, he just saw, saw the space, left foot, got in underneath. Yeah. Nice finish. Yeah, it's classic Jaden Ashby. It's his pet play. He loves that little quickie and bang off the left foot. And, um, yeah, caught the Scorps defence napping. And, um, yeah, this is now going to be a big challenge here for the Scorps 5-2 down. But if any team can come back, it is this one. Still time here in the first half as we see Tona coming into the line nicely. Osborne picks up, has a look at his options. Little oh, pop back on the inside. Oh, yes. Quality finish. Great bat back on the inside from Alex Tripolone. And nicely supported as well. Alex Nichols O'Neill scores the third here for the Scorps and they're back in it. Yeah, that's a fantastic piece of play and that's a really nice sort of setup there with Osborne featuring um, there and, and, and the bat back and the presence of mind and uh, yeah, they're not going away, the Scorpions, 5-3. Great shot of the try from the Sydney Scorpions as we come back to live action. It's... Trying to go the bat on over the top of the head. Sees yep. the Scorpions come out of their end of the field. Oh, yeah. what's happened here? Six to go. Yeah, now this is a really big set for the Scorps. They really need to get down the other end. They've scored. They've managed to repel the Mets. And now a really big set of six. Whether they score or not, Scotty, if they leave the ball down the other end, it starts to build a little bit more pressure for the Mets. So this is a, a really critical set of six in the context of this half. Nice pick up and go. Oh, and pushing the pass. Still with some touches to come. It was great lead-up work. A quick, quick play the ball there, and they, they might have been able to take a bit more advantage. Yeah, definitely. The Mets let off the hook there, and they'll work really hard here to c consolidate this set. So now they have to come forward, and they've got to do their job to lead the ball down the other end if they can't score, and that's got to be the objective because they really want to maintain the lead that they've got in a nice little two-try buffer. Randa Badio plays it on the seven-metre line. Looping ball out. Dimasachi does a good job to take it. Good contact, though, as well from Cuban Porter Sheen. Yeah, great wing play from Cuba. Cuban, he got himself out well, and he read that nicely. Scorpions down their sideline over the halfway. As replacement players flow around the back. No options here, short side. And the penalty. Oh, late penalty. And that'll be a, a disappointing one there for the Mets. Because it yeah. looked like they were caught... In acting half there, Will Hickey. Yeah, really nice nice piece of play there from Will Hickey. He um, took it upon himself to just have that little squirt out of half and he uh, earned his team a very, very valuable uh, penalty with two minutes before half time. Tona losing his footing, has a little bit of a look up. He feeds it back in field to Roberts. Osborne from half, Tona dances. Oh, might have been able to hit Link. Yeah, hit Link. Yep, definitely, Scotty. Good read. You'd make plenty of those reads at Redlands on a Tuesday night, mate. Oh, like back it. in the glory days. <laughs> Scorpions still on the attack. Roberts links up. Good hands. Good slide defence, even better. Pretty advantageous to try and claim a uh, <laughs> six to go there, Luke Osborne. Off the under the legs, yeah, for sure. Um, Again, I keep saying, but big set here, Mets cannot afford an error. They need to get clean and they need to get this ball down the other end of the field. Nice, nice extras, nice extras, and then they're just picking up and flowing here. This is a better set from the Mets. Good directing traffic, pointing, getting players into position. Catalano plays it. Short ball off the hip. Good. Has a look up. Has time. Takes a deflection. They'll get themselves a repeat set. Here, the Sydney Mets. Yeah, they've earned, 
and it's six to go there and um and, and then that looked like they were going to score for all all money and um and good just held the pass back um a second he probably should have released early but um that's okay they've got the repeat set and uh massive pressure now for the scorpions 20 seconds left on the clock or thereabouts. Another penalty, so the Scorpions are going to try and time manage here. They won't be too interested in coming up and making touches. Good, he initiates it. As they pull back out, another penalty being given. They could be a player down here if they do it again. There's only five or so seconds left here on the clock. The Hooters sounds in the background. They just get the play away, and O'Neill. He's going to blow a penalty there. Yeah, Alex Nichols, O'Neill. Be interesting yes. to see if you're Kim views this as a professional foul too. Yeah, hundred percent right. He's getting yep. called out. You're right. That's at least the third penalty given away. So they're going to lose a player. Just depends on how long for here. This could have yeah, implications for the time. start of the second half. And that's probably the right call to make. And great work there from Kim Skelly. Yeah, I saw that coming. I thought that would definitely be the be the sort of thing and that's the context um, that it was in because you know it was definitely a professional foul and they've been they've been saying about the links coming in and and smashing there so yeah we've still got one play there oh and they get it done as well with the numbers advantage and that was smart footy from the Mets they had to score and take that uh, advantage play it down but like we said it's implications for the start of the second half now as Alex Nichols O'Neill will start in the Simbin yeah, yeah, and really nice, cool heads prevail here. Nice little release there from Lukey Moffat, and uh, Blackwood does the rest, and um, that kicks him out to a 6-3 lead, and, uh, yeah, be an interesting second half, Scotty. Absolutely, the Mets are looking the goods here in the quarterfinal, the men's open. They go into the halftime break with a three-tried lead. We'll take a quick break and be back with all the second half action. <laughs> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy, who get different tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Hear that? That's the sound. You second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss. A dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend. here at the championships the quarterfinals of the men's open quality first half sydney mets in front they're up by three they'll be feeling pretty confident coming into the second half here carl so it was a good opening 16 minutes from the mets yeah fantastic really consistent um the mets and uh, scott buckley would be really really happy with that but uh, the little split of play here for them to open the second half and jp catalano he's been he's been one of the best uh for them all tournament and uh, he's just probing here and he's looking to try and get both middles implicated in the touch Catalano, oh, slipping straight in between middle defence. 
there for the Scorpions on their line. Perfect start for the Mets, and they're continuing to roll on here in this quarterfinal. Yeah, the Catalano Moffat show has been on sh on show for the entire tournament, and they've put another one on. Um, I'd like to see their strike rate um, on uh, on on uh, resets and taps because uh, they've been really good off tap off plays and stuff. They, that that combination's been lethal for the Sydney Mets, and uh, seven three. It's a uh, it's a long way back now for the Scorps. Yeah, it's going to be a big task. So you can get themselves back into this game. Here's Mark Roberts. Masters gets into half. It's back to Roberts. Nothing doing out on the right-hand side. They'll come back towards the middle of the field. As Roberts jinx, dances, goes short ball from Tona. Big touch in the middle there for the Mets. A bad look play, though, from the score. So I'm just opening them up. Definitely, mate. They're not going away, and they're going to continue to sort of probe and, and try and work for it. They're getting a bit frustrated, and um, they need to just try and get themselves sorts set here and sort of getting in the ruck there and, 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 and really got to get their, their heads back in this game. I mean, it's, I know it's a long way back, but it's not impossible. You've just got to work as hard as you can here, and that's that's a great defensive effort. It's fantastic. They've got pos possession in really good field position here, so, you know, really got to get... Just work on getting down the other end, Scotty, and then and then trying to get themselves a shot, you know, down on the line on the seven. I've just got to keep it clean. It's a good opportunity here for the for the Scorpions. Still got to work their way downfield. The lead up work in their set of six is important to be able to have a good crack on the back end of it. Osborne plays at the ball, bobbles around. We'll go towards the Scorpions here. This is good. <laughs> Bit tough with the five players, but you're just doing, doing, doing what you need to do. And they've just got the six back now. Osborne in the half. Watkins. They go early. Nice footwork from Watkins. Links up. Great hands from Osborne. I think it's going to go away from them though. No, penalty here towards the Scorps yet again. More pressure here for the Mets. Yeah, need to be really, really patient with the use of this footy, but they've got the right combination of players, you know, out there to make things happen. His Tona plays it. Watkins down at the boot laces. And it's those little things. If they need to get themselves back into this game, they've got to be nailing those ones. Yeah, definitely. They'll be disappointed with that. But uh, they need to keep going in the set. And, uh, yeah, they're going to make these touches in front. They keep sort of playing a bit of catch-up, and that's off the mark. And that's a really, really good effort over there. They've got enough possession to turn this around, Scotty. They've just got to be really sensible and composed and, uh, and keep grinding their way back into the game. The game's not over by a long shot if they can just settle down and play some good footy. Women's semi final to follow the conclusion of this game. The Southwest Queensland Swans, just as you say that, Carls, I can see your head bowing down. The poor old Scorps are just not taking those opportunities with two hands. Yeah, semi final Southwest Queensland Swans taking on the Suns in the women's 20s. That'll be coming up next. And what a cracking game that'll be as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, there's no bad footy today, Scotty. Oh, no. It's all on the line here in the finals. The winner in this one will go through to the semi final later on today. As he goes home. And you like the way that Mets are just checking the ball around. They're getting, yep, they're probing for that penalty. So they're moving the chess pieces around the board nicely. They're trying to make sure that they're getting more than one middle defender um, implicated. It's been a feature of their tournament, and they've been very patient with the footy. And again, we have that combination out there again, Catalano and Luke Moffat. Here is Catalano. The bright pink boots on feeds it. Moffat goes short. So I'm there, there to make the touch. Nicholas O'Neill, who you know has been very busy in defence. Catalano again, jinking around. His Masters has to come back to the line. Oh, picked off and had a real good look at that one. Will Hickey has a look at the hands. Why is the ball not still in there, he says. <laughs> yeah, nice read from Will Hickey. He's a good young player and, uh, yeah, just uh, unfortunately uh, couldn't get the handle on that one, mate. So more pressure here for the Scorps. Can they hold on? Their defence has to be on point here in the second half. Delano does a little under ball throw to get the ball back in field. St. Boland's dancing around again. Not moving forward off the line. Hickey 
being abs- pointed at? Absolutely killing the scorps, not getting out and making these touches. Um, you know, if I'm Josh Phillips, I'll be trying to get these guys out past the eight because they're so good at checking the ball around and getting both middles. Get out and make them play fast and, you know, they'll put themselves in the contest a little bit more on that score line. Another repeat set. Similar in attacking the line, footwork through the ball. Scorps getting their hands on the football. And a full set of six to work with. Manabadiel plays it. They go away. Symbol and dancing sends it back in field. Watkins does the same. Shy the seven just behind Symbol at that time. And that's better. So you saw Kieran Tona make that touch well out past the eight. It puts the odds back in the favour of the defence because you're taking the live dive over play because they're not on the seven. So that's a that's a that was a really good piece of defence there from Kieran Tona to force the error. Pull a good punch out of the box. Now oh, just making a touch. Well, the Scorps to come back. At least got it down the other end yeah, of the field. 100%. And that's a completion. And that'll that'll please uh, coach Josh Phillips no end. Now it's really important that they muscle up defensively and not let this juggernaut that, that the Mets are. They've been great with their ruck and that's another fantastic latch. They've really got their role in the whole way. They need to be, and, and it's definitely a tactic to roll to try to, you know, not allow them have 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 like clean flow and, and, and clean phase. But the issue is, is that oh, this, when they wow. move the ball, that's going to happen. What a great pop back on the inside, quality finish as well. Had work to do to be able to get to the ball, then get it down on the grass. Yeah, definitely. But you back off and Blackwood with a quick release off the ground to Ashby, long ball right to left. It's his specialty and a beautiful, beautiful effort from the winger to catch him on motion and tap back on the inside on the accumulator and that is a classic Mets try. Well, they've got one foot in the door for a semi-final performance later on today. Mets up by five. So we have a look at the scorps here, Tona, loose ball. Hits the deck. Semi-finals will take place here. One fifteen in local time. Twelve fifteen in Queensland. Three fifteen in New Zealand. Grand final later on this afternoon. Bring it close to the championships this year. This has been a, a really, really controlled performance so far by the Mets. Very, very impressive. They're hitting their straps, you know, at the right time. Um, I think I said yesterday that, you know, a few times I've been disappointed over the last few years to sort of show some good form in the round games and then hit this quarterfinal stage and bow out. But this is this is a fantastic effort from them thus far, and uh, yeah, they'd be well pleased with this effort. The Scorpions attacking the line. Can't slip in underneath. All right. Couldn't quite get across the line. Good slide. Just had to cut back in on the angle. And just cutting straight back in towards Mets defence. Mets finishing fifth last year. It was semi finals, no quarter finals in last year's tournament. They bowed out in the rounds. They're going to get themselves into a semi final here in 2024 at the championships. Ashby goes short. Touch has been made. Nice work out on the flanks there from the Sydney Scorpions. A roll and restart. As they bring it towards the middle of the field on the first touch. Osborne casually switches out the back. Need a little bit of punch to get forward. As Osborne feeds it. Hit again. This is four just over the halfway line. Hickey now straightens them up. Nice clean pick up from half. Can't get in between the two defenders there. Nathan Hassan caught in possession. How do the Mets play the rest of this out, Carly? Still time on the clock, but can they just put it in a little bit, drop it back down to second gear, cruise control, just play smart football and, and ride the clock out? Yeah, you can see it sort of like like noticeably in this set they're just rolling down like scorpions like defense where they just roll and don't want to make touches probably you know mets don't have to use too much energy up to get into field position but there'll be lots of light lots of sort of dives at the line just you know move the ball around and just you know try and sort of soak some time as well because you know if you can save your legs and your time it really makes a big difference coming into the business end of the comp oh, oh it was there <laughs> Just probably had a, a little bit too much on it for Luke Moffat to pull it through. He had to reach up for it. 
needed a step ladder on that one, did Lukey. But, um, yeah, really nice play and one over the top. And, uh, yeah, just um, a little bit unfortunate there, um, you know, for the Mets. But, uh, yeah, it, it, it's been, as I said, it's been a really, really comprehensive effort so far from the boys. And Scorps just have to keep going here. Really, really important that they finish this tournament, you know, as well as they sort of possibly can and, and just keep working. They've got some exciting young players in the team. And, unfortunately, I think seven on again. Yep. Yeah, it's disappointing for the Scorpions. I'll give it back here to the Mets. And often in, in sort of games like this, when things don't go your way or, or, or you've got some of those types of errors, it, it's a really good learning curve, um, Scotty. As I said, there's a lot of young players, you know, in this sort of sort of, score, sort of, sort of lineup, and they've had their moments during this tournament. Um, and it's very encouraging for Coach Josh Phillips to look forward to the future and, and be able to sort of, you know, um, I think this team, if they're a little bit fitter and they work a little bit harder, um, they're probably going to cause, you know, some more issues for some teams, you know, over the next couple of years. Cymbeline plays it. Now has a look up. He goes long and dips away. Probably Linkol was his was his go there, and I'm sure that um, Kai's such a smart player. He'll um, you know he'll, um, he'll keep that one in his back pocket. They come to the left hand side of the field. Hulu trying to get the Sydney Scorpions going forward. As Wilhiki punches out of the interchange box. Get a penalty here. The Scorps. Dave Baggio calling players offside. You might be able to hear some of the other games going on. Like we said, we've got quarterfinals taking place on field two and three. Another one on field four as well. The CQ Bulls taking on the South Queensland Sharks. They've just gone over to score the Bulls, the defending premiers. Try and keep an eye on the results. The Southwest Queensland Swans taking on Sunny Coast. As well, over on field three, and the Hornets taking on the UQ Rebels at the back on field four. Looking to progress through, see which other team's going to join the Sydney Mets in the semi finals later on today. Looping ball takes a deflection, oh. and Matt Alitzo, he was there. We've seen a lot of players looking down at their hands again, wondering why the ball's not there. It is a penalty for the Scorpions. We'll take a look at the door dash replay. Roberts there just floating, you can see the deflection. Oh, he had a good look at it. What, the old anyway. on the hands, mate? <laughs> yeah. Scorpions still with another chance here to finish this off. Max Masters almost gets in underneath. Yeah, he's tried really hard for them this tournament, Max Masters. He's a good young player. He's got a lot of potential and uh, exciting to see him and see the way that he progresses, you know, over the, over the next couple of years. And a nice little ball as we speak from him. And a nice finish as well. Are they going to take it away? Oh, sir. The final yes. ball from Josh Turner. <laughs> it was great lead-up work. Ah, this nice little pop-out ball. We'll take a look at the replay. There he is. Watch the watch the deft skills of the young man. He manages to get this get this one little pop all around. Just unfortunate. You can see it progressing yeah, forward. forward yeah. Sharks have scored. Against the CQ Bulls, you just got a feeling, although we've had a, our attention here on the Mets and Scorps, that that game might be quite close. It usually always is between the Sharks and the Bulls. Mets now turning the ball over with Ashby. Under two minutes and, um, yeah, Scorps will keep like going to the end here. Let's see if they can put another one on the board before, uh, before the full-time siren goes here, Scotty. And there's a penalty and that'll help them out no end. Kim Skelly laying down the law. Little shirt tug potentially there. We indicated from Kim. She's trying to slow things down a little bit more here. The Sydney Mets on their way to a semi final at the championships. Now it's opened up for them. Oh, great work popping off the left foot. Finn Watkins. Had some work to do to finish that one off. It still hasn't been awarded as of yet. Yeah, there it is. Oh, great evasive work. Yeah, he is, he is one of the best athletically um, that we have in the game. An exciting young player and uh, deserve a touchdown for the young man. So fought all the way to the final whistle. The Scorpions. It's going to be a bridge too far for them. 
And it was the start from the Mets, wasn't it? They really came out. Well, both teams traded punches early uh, on. We were two all locked up. And then all of a sudden, back-to-back -back tries for the Mets. They finished the better of the two teams coming in to the uh, the halftime break. And they just continued that on in the second 16. Yeah, it was consistency of the Mets, Scotty. They, at both ends of the field, they're just sticking to their processes and their plans. And that's, and that's how you win tournaments. Um, it's all about doing the little things right. And Coach Scott Buckley have been pretty happy with that performance as they lead into the semifinal. Hooter sounds in the background. The Sydney Mets are going to make their way through to the grand final or semi-final, I should say, in the men's open. And it looks like the CQ Bulls have defeated the South Queensland Sharks. They'll progress through to the semi-finals as well. Talking about semi-final action, we've got women's 20s semi-final coming up next on your screens on KO Sports and Sky Sports. South West Queensland Swans taking on the Suns. Stay with us. More to come. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, the dedicated Dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it! Door dash it! Roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. Down, they just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Down, they just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps>
Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and a chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Welcome back to the Championships live action here. Presented by Inferno. It is semi final time in the women's 20s. The Southwest Queensland Swans taking on the Suns. Scott McAllister and Carly Banks with you in this one. Winner goes through to the grand final later on this afternoon. Carly, loser goes home. All on the line here for these two teams. Yeah, there's been nothing between these two teams all tournament, um, both finishing one and two um, in their pool and undefeated. They had um, a round game for all draw, Scotty, and so uh, not much will separate both these teams and uh, they've had knockout tournaments, um, you know, for their for their areas, so it uh, should be a fantastic game. Referee gets this underway. Southwest Queensland Swans with the opening possession here in the women's 20s. Oh, an early little error from them. And a forward pass picked up in the play of the ball. And signal from the referees. So maybe a little nervous, jittery start there from the Swans. 
Yeah, definitely, and um, to be expected. But uh, good ball movement here from the from the Suns, um, you know, in their opening possession here, and uh, yeah, nice field position, but an error uh, from them as well. So a little bit of a little bit of finals jitters there going on for both both camps. Yeah, I think both teams will start to settle down now that they've got the football in the hands. They'll start to get towards some work as the Swans come all the way out to the right hand side of the field to get their replacement players. Onto the field, the second semi-final taking place at the moment as well. It's the CQ Bulls taking on the UQ Rebels as it swans into the in-goal area, looking for support, firing one back in field, nicely taken from Rebecca Presswich. Yeah, and she's one player that uh, has been really, really good uh, for the Swans. Carla, uh, no, she's um, a Queensland 15s representative um, from last year. Went to Darwin last year, and um, yeah, and sort of lit it up there and she's um, had a great tournament her opening NTL so doing a great job the number 7 for uh, uh, the Swannies Suns now trudging their way towards the halfway line ball that was a little bit flat back on the inside, referees continue play on look for a clean play the ball here Gibson gets herself in a half, has a little bit of a look up, nice comfortable defence in the end, Eden Croker making the touch for the Swans yeah, really good um, defence there from the Swannies as they work hard to get the ball here and, and exit. Some nice press defence coming from the Suns as well. So, you know, as I said, it's going to be a fairly even contest between these these two and I expect it to go end to end. And, uh, yeah, nice little play there um, out the back. And, uh, yeah, some good metres here for the Swannies. And they've been really good at the back ends of their, of their, of their sets. And, uh, yeah, they're going through the hands here and uh, another opportunity. Come down the short side. Nice slide defence, good inside ball, no touch made, yes, touch made. Yeah, they've done a really good job under coach Abby Prendergast. Um, she's a great coach. Everyone would be familiar with her brother, Blaze. What not a lot of people know is that Abby's been Blaze's personal coach over all of these <laughs> years. And, and when I say that, she's worked very hard on his game. And, um, yeah, she's a smart cookie. And, uh, yeah, all credit to her to get this young Swans team into a semi-final. Yeah, great touch football family, the Prendergast. Dad Matt was referee for a long period of time as well. High level referee, of course, Blaze, Riley, another one of the siblings is, is refereed for a long time as well, based up in the, the hills of Toowoomba. The Swans have got a good opportunity here after a mistake from the Suns. They're in attacking position yet again. Loose ball out the back, but they've got enough time and touches here just to resettle. They'll assist and plays it, receives it back. And she's been one of the best for the for the Swans, um, you know, in this tournament. She gets a nice little short ball away there. Um, yeah, um, she's in. She's been in really good form, Scotty, and she and she needs to have a really good game here um, if the Swans are going to get up. Suns need to be cleaner yeah, coming out of their pass. end of the field. Just as I say that, the forward pass back on the inside. It's defensive pressure from the Swans. They're really struggling to try and get themselves towards their interchange area here. The Suns, Swans. Although the scores are locked up at zero at the moment, they're on top in the game. Misha Couchy, another young gun. Yeah, she had a fantastic NYC, didn't she, Scotty? So, yeah, she's also had, had, a, had a good tournament here. Good hands from Sisson to hold on to that one. Keeps possession here for South West Queensland. Yeah, probably look at a little play here between, uh, between Sisson and, um, and Brooke. Uh, the girl who's just about to play the ball, she's a um, very, very good little player. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, not a very good end of the set there for the Swans. But uh, the Sunnies will just recompose here. They're really well coached. Glenn Prestwich um, has done a fantastic job um, with this group of girls over the years. And, of course, we've got, like, uh, the Prestwich's twins are in this side. And, uh, yeah, quality players, all three of them. And they've, um, you know, been, you know, had a big hand in the rise and the rise of the Orange and the uh, Southern Suns um, area. So working towards halfway, not too bad the first couple of touches, a bit lateral on this next play. Someone needs to straighten up and get the clean play the ball down. They do now, coming into the last touch. Nice ball out to the right-hand side. Not a bad set in the end. Clayton Presswich there sending the final pass across. They pin the Swans in the corner at least. They need to get their defence up and going now. Southwest Queensland, there's good pressure on Couchy. 
So yeah, they fantastic. are responding and they force the error. Nice work there yeah. from the Suns. Yeah, yeah, and this is it. They're going to be very resolute and that was um, not a good interchange there for the Swans, but they've uh, been able to compose themselves a little bit here and they'll have to work hard to be able to stop the... Uh, oh, they're still in sixes and sevens here. The Swans are still getting players coming back. You can see Sophie Brennan making her way back in. Oof. Yeah, yeah, she was offside, and I thought they might have played on. Um, Could have had the an opportunity, not, potentially. Should have been there, yeah, yeah, definitely. But let's see that what Suns do with this repeat set. Attacking the line, and a nice dive in. They're going to give them the try this time. And it is the Suns, after facing a mountain of pressure from the Swans early, and they're the first team to get a try on the scoreboard. Yep, yep, they sure are. And that was just, um, you know, a lot of pressure there around that nice strike dump on the seven. The press which was heavily involved. Um, the saver defender, Carla Notes, didn't get across in time there. But um, it's early days yet. And, uh, yeah, this is a really absorbing battle between these two sides, Scotty. Absolutely. The Suns finished seventh in last year's competition. So an improvement for them to make a semi-final here in the 20s. Swanso back on the attack from the restart. Yeah, they're and offside play on the call. and great listening there. Um, fantastic play there um, from Indy Kelly. She's um, a Newtown uh, Lions product um, in Toowoomba. Um, her dad, Mark, is the is the manager of the South West Queensland Swans team, so I think she might get a pat on the back for dad uh, for that try. So fantastic effort there to put the, put the Swans back on an even keel with the Suns, one all. Back to live action. Oh, nice little kick out, putting the feet down. <laughs> nice little turn of yeah. speed there from Willaren Walken. Walker, I should say. 33, here she is. Walker's on. Walker's on. She's definitely on. Now playing tight in the middle. The Suns as they look to stretch out. Nice ball out in front. Nice slide defence as well from the Swans. Wheatley plays it. And there to make the touch. Ella Searston. Now she'll get to work to try and get the Swans coming forward. Looked a little bit untidy. Yeah. And most of these um, games, these 20 girls have played out on the backfield. So being on the on the big stage and having the sort of referees mic'd up, they'll pick up a lot more of those little forward passes and the little errors around the ruck. So it be interesting to see how both teams cope with that. Swans now over the halfway line. Doing the hard yards to get themselves downfield at the moment. Goes over the top. Oh, Great hands. Almost oh. skipping away. That's a huge touch out in the corner. Had to be made. Fantastic defensive effort. What a good battle between the two wingers, Scotty. Yeah, Laura Fry on screen. Almost getting away from the outstretched hands of the Suns' defence. It's a huge touch there, Jessica Wardrobe out on the right-hand side of the field for the Suns. Yeah, needed to be made, and this is this is good good press defence here from the Swans. They keep coming forward, and they need to because um, yeah, with the press switches sweeping on, it's uh, it could spell spell a bit of danger. Lucy Dean plays it, coming into the fifth and final play. Nice ball out to the link, good ball as well out to the corners. Referees the same play on, takes a deflection as go. well. Repeat set here for the Suns. Danger signs. It's Caitlin Presswich. Plays it on the seven. Takes off. Comes off the left foot. Oh, referee's going to point to the spot. Cullen Orbs couldn't quite get there in time to make the touch. Yeah, that's the second time that that's sort of happened. She needs to get a pre-touch and drop a little bit earlier there. But um, smart work to get that strike dump, you know, on that seven metres. And um, Kitty Presswich doesn't need much invitation at all to do that. That's why she's one of the best young players in the sport. And, uh, yeah, just gets her team back in it now. Um, and... Uh, 2-1. 2-1 oui. in front for the Suns. Yeah, you can see Norms is just a, a foot or two short of the line. It's great officiating again from our referees. It's oh. now into the in-goal area. Yeah. Swans go beautiful ball out to the left-hand side. And a huge touch again. Jess Wardrobe has made big back-to-back -back efforts. It looked very close there for the Swannies, almost leveling the scores back up yet again. Had a great scramble defence yet again from the Suns. Yeah, it was. And a great little... Well, squirt out of acting half from Eden Croker. They call her Speedy Edie, and she's uh, definitely got a good set of wheels, Scotty, so we'll keep our eyes on Speedy Edie. 
And the Suns making changes behind their 10 metre line. So they've got some work to do here. Nice little exchange of passing in the middle of the field. Just shy of the halfway line as they get over now. This is a better recovery for them off the back end. Kelly plays it. Nice clean pick up. Talking about wheels. Here she goes oh, again. Walker. Go. She's on. Oh, oh and the juggle in the corner. Down. What a finish. Claudia Wheatley. Oh, how good was that? That is just great footy. Clean pair of heels out of half and just shopped around and looks like that pass was getting away from her, but she managed to juggle it and how's the put down, Scotty? Well, it all started here. Walker picks up and goes. We know how quick she is. Bang, just escapes the swans. But have a look at this. Fingertips, fingertips juggle, down. Juggle, down. <laughs> what a finish. Great try there from young Claudia Wheatley. And on the left wing for the Suns. And all of a sudden, they've skipped away to a two-tried lead here. The West Southwest Suns. Pressure here for the Swannies. Nice inside ball. Short ball, nice early release. And over the top from Searston. Great setup, great leading work there from the Swans. And that's a nice response. Yeah, really good response. Um, great lead-up work there. Brooklyn Schmidt and Ella Searston, they've been doing it for years down at the Redlands Touch Association, putting a nice little combination on the ML platform. Nice little release and Ella Searston over the top and a nice finish in the corner. And it's game on again, Scotty. Oh, they're well and truly back in it. Laura Fry scores to try it for the Swans. Space to work with. They have found a little bit of space out on the right edge. And the Suns just helps get themselves downfield with ease. And they'll be able to, to set back up. Go down that short side again. So I'm nothing available for them. Yeah, and that's that's better there from uh, Carla Nobbs in terms of her, de her defence. Doing a, doing a really, really good job. And they'll give the young girl a lot of confidence in terms of being able to defend that set. Nice ball movement to Couchy. Dives her way all the way into the substitution area. <laughs> Emma Bell picks up nice metres, plays it on the Suns' 10-metre line. That's a great drive there and a really nice effort here from the from the. But the Swans um, are just being um, you know sort of curtailed there a lot by by that resolute Suns defence. They have a really good line, Scotty. Their shape's good. They're just nice and composed. And um, you get a feeling when the press switches are out there, they've got that sort of under control. So, yeah, really, really good defence, you know, uh, from the Suns on that occasion. They've done a pretty good job. The couple mm. of on first and second touch, it looks like they're under a little bit of pressure. Then all of a sudden, when the replacement players come on, they just straighten themselves back up and get themselves downfield. Lucy Dean plays it. They pick up, they come back inside to Dean. Smart footy just holds on to the ball there. Yeah, really well handled again at the other end. The Swans do, do a really good job, like, defensively again. Like, they've got this really nice movement, at, you know, out towards their box, and they're getting their subs on nice and early and doing what they need to do, and here comes Kaushi on the latch. Sisson, nice short ball, good running. It's open up straight through the middle here for the Swans. And under the post goes Brooklyn Schmidt. It was a gallant chase. And, and now the Swans in, uh, level it back up to threes. And that's been the power pod, hasn't it, for the Swans in this first half. Brooklyn Schmid, Misha Couchy and Ella Searston combining again uh, to get the Swannies back back here. And, uh, yeah, this is such an intriguing game, Scotty. I think, uh, yeah, the scoreboard attendant again is going to be pretty busy in this one. Absolutely. It's a gallant chase there from Cleo Baldwin. As we see Brooklyn Schmidt to streak away. Great running coming out of their box. The Swans are down by two. They've scored the next two tries on the trot to level up the scores again here in the women's 20 semi final. Ball out in front. This time it hits the deck. We've got a repeat set, actually. Referee's signalling. So taking a little deflection there off one of the Swans' hands. So full set of six. About a minute and a half left to go here in the first half. to set themselves up here the Swans they go down the short side Walker takes them on nice work from Brooklyn Schmid coming across in cover there to save the day um, there are, there's a little bit of separation um, between the um, the Swannies so they probably need to get a little bit tighter on those static plays 
Kelly into half. It ooh, takes a little juggle. Ball out in front, cutting in oh. on a beautiful line again. Gee, that's a great hole. Claudia Wheatley, another try to her name. What about the two tries she scored in this semi final? They've been absolute oh. crackers. She's had a lot of work to do both times, Scotty, hasn't she? And she's managed to show great wing craft in terms of scoring both those both of those touchdowns uh, for the Sun. So Sun's out out to a lead now. Absolutely, and again, it takes a little juggle ball looping in front. She knew she had to get towards the ball. Cuts back in. Two tries here in the semi-final for Wheatley. She's playing big minutes as well. Out here on the left-hand wing, they go back out now. It's oh, the Suns. The Swans, they go beautiful. back out. To their left wing, I should say, Laura Fry. She scored one before. This time she puts the final pass on. And the Swans, they're going nowhere. Yeah, nice little set-up play. Um, Swans captain Lucy and composed them there and got got that play on Shalice Walker, the number three, sister of Sam Walker and uh, Ben Walker's uh, uh, daughter, like, featuring prominently there as well. So fantastic effort there, and we're all locked up here at four all at halftime, Scotty. Yeah, we've got an absolute cracker here in the semi-final of the women's 20s. Both teams can't be separated going into the break. This was the score that it was in their round fixture for all. We'll see how the second half unfolds. Who's going to make it through to the the grand final. Stay with us. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The rooster's calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. The craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. Down, they just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Down, they just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. We're back here live at the Championships, presented by Inferno. Halftime in the women's 20s semi-final. Both teams locked up on the scoreboard. Four tries apiece here between the Swans and the Suns. The Suns got the opening tap-off here in the second half. All on the line, Carls. Who's going to make it through to the grand final? Oh, mate, you'd be a brave person to predict it at this stage, Scotty. Oh, I think it's going to go. It could even go to extra time, mate. That's the early tip from me. See how the Suns go. Their first possession here in the second half. Lucy Dean feeds it from half. They'll reset. It's Hayley oh, Presswich. Ooh. No, that doesn't look good. Brooklyn Schmid um, looks, like a, looks like the knee collapsed oh, no. from underneath her, and that's not good. Never want to see that. No. no. She's gone down straight away. It's medical staff make their way out. She's... That's, 
that's that's not good at all. It was just um, yeah, really, really unfortunate. Comes in to make the touch and then oh, just buck as you see it go oh, before yeah. she actually gets there. So um, all good thoughts are with Brooklyn Schmidt at this moment. She's uh, back up to her feet now, and getting a generous round of applause as well. But yeah, definitely hanging on to that knee at the moment. Thoughts with her, she'll be in good hands of medical staff here for the Swans. But she was influential, she was very highly involved in the first uh, half. So someone's going to have to step up for the Swans here and fill that gap. Let's see how they go defending their line at the moment. Ball out in front. Oh, touch what a is touch. made. Misha Couchy bringing back the heroics from uh, last year's NYC, Scotty. Almost sneaking in again, the Swans. They're stacked on the right. They go to the open side. Out to the left. They're well numbered at the moment. Big diving effort. Full stretch there from Emma Bell to make the touch. Sunso still looking very calm. Haley Presswich feeds it from half. They're just going to burn the set down on the sideline. With young Jessica Wardrobe. Swans putting the ball through the hands as they played on the Red Rooster sign. Oh, oh, the ball. They didn't need to do that, and they need to really compose themselves here. This one is they really need to get out, um, you know, with a good set. But uh, here come the Suns. Let's see what they can do with this um, very good field position, Scotty. It's Caitlin Press, which plays it, receives it back again. Dean feeds it from half. Press which takes him on. Comes off the left foot. Touch is made. And that's better spacings there between Nobbs and Searston in terms of um, that quicker. You could hear the, hear the call from the from the coaching box to get in tight there from both uh, for both middles. And they make the touch pretty comfortably there as well. Carla Nobbs are looking for offside players. Press switch on screen. Swans will be looking to be cleaner this time around. That's Again. a better start to the to um, to this set from. Sisten pops over. Lily in the six. Looking for the fly shape there, but no, they're going to pick up and go out of half. Coming off the right foot. And good defence in the middle of the field. Diving effort there from Hope Gibson. Yep, and that's not a bad set for, for the Swannies. That's a, that's a completion, but uh, they're going to back this up with some really good defence. And uh, the Suns working nicely and industriously over towards their box and coming back now with the latch. Over the halfway line they go, just shy of the Swans' 10-metre line. Comes straight and hard into the line now. Nice pick up from half from Hayes. Goes short and fry. Oh. Looked like it almost may have hit the grass yeah. first. Definitely didn't need to play in it. Now they attack straight away. Oh, oh dropped, dropped it, it over the oh, line. Oh, dropped the World Cup. Well, how? <laughs> <laughs> no one will ever forget oh, that moment. Yeah. And it just looked like it stuck in the grass. Unfortunately, this is a, this could be a big moment here for the Suns. Yeah. It just opened up for them. You can see the diving effort. Yeah, both teams. This is this is really important now for the kids to hold their heads, and that's a really really nice drive um, from the number ten, Millie Evans. She took the ball forwards when it was a little bit sideways for the for the for the Swans, and uh, yeah, this, this is a good end to that set for uh, the Swans after a very clunky set. But uh, yeah, it's getting uh, you know sort of a little bit uh, nervous here now for the team. So they really just need to settle down and just get into their rhythm and play some good footy, work for their set completions, and get down and um, give themselves every shot here. They've got touches to work with, set themselves up. Still getting players into position here, the Suns. Hope Gibson plays it, receives it back, sends it all the way out to the left-hand side of the field. They'll finish it off in the corner. Yeah, really, really nice, um, like, defence there from the from the Swans. They're not afraid to throw the ball around, are they? They get the ball over here, you know, very early on in the touch count. They've just, they just keep driving towards the sub box. Great metres from Ellis Searston and another latch here from Misha, Misha Couchy, and they're lining up. Looks like, a, looks like a, a fly play here. Decent contact, just probably caught off the feet. Ellis Searston... Come forward now on the last. Looking for offside players. Still play on is the call. And they're on the spot to finish it off. 
The Swans are back in front. He'll assist and scores to try. Lily Sisson. Lily, my apologies. <laughs> Sisson's everywhere. <laughs> Millie, uh, Millie Evans, like fantastic little player, and she and she took advantage of the offside play. Kept shopping around, shopping around. Great for a young player. Finds Swans captain Lily Sisson uh, in support, and it's a five-four lead to the Swans. And the strike first. Here in the second half, a great start. Swans picking up nice, easy metres. Lucy Dean throwing a little show and go. She's been very involved for the Suns throughout the semi-final. As of these young ladies, Laura Fry, she can't buy an intercept at the moment. <laughs> she doesn't mind getting her hands in there, the long <laughs> arms of the law. Hey, if she latches onto one, I believe she's very, very quick gone. too, Scotty. So, uh, yeah, it'd be good to see her in open space, wouldn't it? Well, I need to... They keep an eye on her. It's a couple of times she's popped up out of the line. Yeah, the coaching adjustment that Abby Prendergast and Tammy Banks have made down in that box um, in terms of the quickie and the trail back has been good because the Swan, uh, the Suns are very good at that play. Beck Presswich, the guile of her, she has wonderful hands and, and, and a lovely read by the Swans link. Be able to save that one, but they've made a good adjustment here because that was the well that the Suns went to in the first half. So Glenn Presswich is very smart, so they'd be looking at another, you know, um, form of attack down there. I'm very sure. Nice running here for the Swans. That is Ella Sisson this time, really getting them on the front foot. As Nobbs from half looks up, was crowded numbers. Couchy manages to thread it through. All clear from the referees, back-to-back -back tries. The Swans are up by two. Yeah, fantastic piece of play there from the Swans, all started by Ella Searston's run onto the field. She shopped around and shopped around, and then Carla Nobes, that young 15-year-old Queensland Secondary School's rep, goes through the hands. Nice pass from Misha Couchy, and a finish, and Laura Fry's got one. Ross is over for a try, second of the game. All of a sudden, bit of pressure here on the Suns. Is Walker. Can they hit back from the restart? Margin hasn't been any bigger than two tries in the game. We saw that in the first half. It was the Swans that hit back to level up the scores. This time we need it from the Suns. Nice touch though. Pretty comfortable in defence. From the restart there from the Swans. Yeah, the Swans did a really good job there defensively, but some good questions asked by the Suns. Now under pressure and Walker takes it. There's been a touch made at the same time. Referee is coming back. He's going to point a penalty here. It must have been a touch and pass first. It did look like there might have been simultaneous contact as Walker yeah, was flying see, you through. You can see that coming because uh, the, the Suns are very good um, with their ruck defence. So um, the Swannies probably nearly probably need to play in behind on touch one and uh, just beat that hard press because they are flying up on touch one and touch two. But fantastic piece of, uh, of, um, of play there from the Suns to get possession here. And uh, unfortunately, just, just dropped the handle on that one. Yeah, it was simple. It looked like it was opening up for them. Ron has been having a bit of a Bo Peep at the defensive line. Oh, ball out in front here again. They're flirting with them at the moment. Sophie Brennan. What I love about this Swans team is they're still playing very sort of natural touch. You know, they're playing what's in front of them. And Ellis is arcing again around on the outside. I was looking for a little wraparound play as well. Brooklyn Schmidt's back on there. She's Ooh, hobbling she around a bit. I don't know oh, about that. Poor girl. I don't know that they sent her out again. Wow. That's really, oh, really gutsy for her to try and put her hand up for her yeah. team, but and she's no good. And great work and from the nice Suns. And how nice is that from the Suns to assist over there? Um, great camaraderie between both these teams and, and, and some really good friendships out there. And, um, you know, that is just fantastic to see. Great sportsmanship. Suns back in possession. Now yeah, on the run, bit of space to work with. Oh. Copying his shot, they get the repeat set. Yeah, pretty accidental there. I don't think there was much sort of in that, Scotty. Um, um, yeah, they've um, yeah. The Suns now, like uh, this is a this is coming into a really important juncture of the game for them. They really need to hit back now. Still time on the clock, but it is starting to wind down here in the second half and just overrunning. 
There's been a little bit of miscommunication as well. Chloe Baldwin coming in from half. Couchy down the sideline. And that's great hands. They have gone so good with their sub box set. Abby Prendergast has worked really hard at training with the girls, you know, on their sort of sub box and on their on their on their midfield play. And as soon as I say it, uh, there's an error. But their first three have been super clean, haven't they, Scott? Yeah, they look for options to pass or to or to chew the meters with their feet or hands. And um, that's been a very impressive um, feature of their entire tournament thus far. Yeah, they're getting up out of the line defensively. Kelly, that's a better response, though, from the Suns. They just need a little spark of energy. They come down the left-hand side of the field, the ball out in front. Oh, they continue to keep trying here, Suns, and look, look this game is still open and, and alive. Um, and, uh, yeah, the Swans will need some set completions. So in both sort of boxes, you'd be sort of working on that on that whole principle of let's just get down the other end and, 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 and sort of give ourselves every sort of chance of being able to, you know, play some, you know, quality sort of touch down there. So this is, again, another good transition from the Swans, but the Sunnies are meeting them equally in defence, and, uh, yeah, this is just a great contest. Yeah, they put it through the hands. They'll get a repeat set. And coming up, Rebecca Preswich there getting hands on the football. So look for this combination between Lily Searston and Nobbs. They've been you know, pretty good during the tournament. The two two best friends come together. And, uh, yeah, nothing much in that one. Nice little hug and a pat on the <laughs> back. And we'll see you after the game. Much more respectful in the women's 20s than what we saw in the men's <laughs> open where they were flying up out of the link and trying to take each other's heads off. Uh, it doesn't sound like men's open, does it? No. Now, the referee's just holding things up here, penalty to the Swans. This could be where they ice the game. Searsing takes it right to the line. They're going to bring it back. They're still holding on here, the Suns. Yeah, they probably need to be, be a little bit more judicious um, with the use of that football. They have plenty of touches left. And here's Beck Prestwich with the football in hand. And, um, yeah, that's one girl who won't die wondering. Beautiful guile and skill about the way that she plays. A very promising rugby league player as well. We'll be hearing her name in the NRLW, I believe, over the next few years, Scotty. Yeah, it was smart football just to tuck it in, get it down. Now the Suns are going to try and flow off the back. They're looking to set up. Walker from half. We know how quick she is, but they come back out to the right-hand side. Walker now gets in. Fifth and final play. Comes off the right foot. And they just overrun it. And running into the same space there, unfortunately, for the Suns. Yeah, fantastic defence there. Um, Lily Searston handled that um, situation with aplomb. And there, now they're moving. Oh, up. referee down. Oh. He must have just been off, off screen, <laughs> luckily for him. He pops straight back up. <laughs> it's not evidence on the on the screen, mate, but I saw it. Oh, we it's always enjoy those ones, don't we? He's a good man. He's the big fella out in the middle. The referee's been great in the women's 20s, as they have been throughout the whole tournament. Yeah, critical set of six here now for the for the Suns. We're coming in with just under two minutes to play now, and they really need to score in this set, um, you know, to um, you know to set this game. Um, wait, here we go. They do get the penalty. They still need to be pretty careful defending yep, this area definitely. at the moment. It's yeah, they've got to get out, and that's good from Ellis Hisson trying to get out past the seven, and there's the acting half scooting away. Can she link up? Walker resets, and yes, there's a collision of bodies. The referees, though, are happy. There's a lot of finger-pointing going on there. Re referees point to the spot. We're just double-checking, make sure all the players are healthy. Everyone's back up to their feet. The Suns, minute and a half to go. Can they get this done? Can they lock it up? Yeah, this is now a super exciting finish, Scotty. Um, we've got like a minute 15 on the clock. Um, it'll be uh, very interesting to see. So uh, the Swannies need to be really careful here. Get down the other end, play out an entire set, um, and then, you know, try and try and sort of, you know, um, deprive, um, you know, the Suns of, of, of another possession. Otherwise, we're going to extra time, and my prediction looks all right, Scotty. Yeah, you might be on the money here. Georgia Hayes scores the try for the Suns. It was Walker, and he felt like she might be the one that was going to break it open. She sets it up, their fifth try. They're still down by one. We're into the last minute here. The Swans, if they score, Couchy. they're into the grand final. Couchy, touch has been made. They'll take their time here, the Swans. This is the last 30 seconds on the clock. Here we go, one Turn, final set, set for the Suns. Here we go. They've got to get downfield. Grandstand finish, Scotty. Head down the right-hand side. They're making replacement. 
right now on the field, but someone's got to drive and get them going forward. Yeah, what Swanies can't afford to do here is concede a penalty. They're Still all working. Got work There's to going do. to be a skirt out of here from half. Walker picks up. They need She's probably the one more clean She's play the of the ball. Here it comes. She picks up, takes him off. They look short there. Play on is the call. They might get a penalty here, the Suns. They will. They'll get one touch. The Hooter has well, sounded in the background. One final play. Can the Suns send this into extra time? It's going to take something special. And they get the touch done. The Swans are through to the women's 20s grand final. What an absolute classic here in the semi. Oh, what a great game of footy between two evenly matched teams. And um, whichever team went through to the grand final, they would have earned it, Scotty. So uh, a great standard of women's 20s touch and uh, can't wait for the final. Absolutely. Congratulations to the Suns. Another great performance. A whisker away of sending it into extra time. But it is the Southwest Queensland Swans who will progress through to the women's 20s grand final. And that will be taken place here. Two o'clock local time, one o'clock in Queensland, four o'clock if you're tuning in on Sky Sports in New Zealand. We've got the men's 20 semi-final coming up next. Sharks taking on the Hornets. Plenty more action coming from the championships. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher was picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. Roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or 
meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free, to feel alive, and most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. That craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? 
It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Welcome back to the Championships presented by Inferno. It's men's 20s semi-final time. The South, West, the South Queensland Sharks taking on the Hunter Western Hornets. Scott McAllister and Zach Jenricks with you here for this semi-final. Looking forward to this one, Zach. Yeah, it should be a really good match. Let's having a look at the results before. Played each other in the round games. It was Sharks by three. Uh, yeah, 8-5, pretty competitive game, and you'd expect the Hornets are, are one of those one of those sides with really smart coaching staff, so I'm sure they would have learnt a lot from that game, so it should be a cracker. Yeah, absolutely. They've got a, a list of young guns in their team, which we'll make mention of throughout this semi-final, and this is one of them right now, the number four, Tamana Ellis. Cully Banks, who has been commentary with me before, said he's had a fantastic tournament. And it's just a little juggle off the fingertips there as the Sharks... Will restart and get their first possession here in the semi-final. Yeah, good start from the Sharks defensively there. A little bit lucky to get the error, but always a good start to hold them out and see them into their work now. Jai Charlton with the ball. He'll be one of the players to watch for them. Now T-Cut. Onto the ball. Slicing in between. Skipping, dancing, feet going up. The touch has been made. Ellers right on the line. Well, it didn't really look like there was much doing there for the Sharks. All of a sudden, Tika just managed to slip his way through. He's trying to flick his boots up to get away from the touch, but Tamana Ellers gets it done as we see a mistake here for the Hornets. Yeah, he's one of those players, Tika. You can just create something out of nothing sometimes, and that was pretty special, but great scramble to make the touch. As we see numbers out to the right. Scramble there. Good composure from the Sharks to just hold the ball. Plenty of touches in hand here. Yeah, Harry McNamara almost saw some space on the right. Charlton just holds thing up. Holds the footy up now as Lennox Seeker plays it. Receives it back. Comes back. Rock all out in front. Comes off the fingertips there. Off the Hornets. We're going to see a penalty here. I think it's not moving forward. Yep, that'll be the signal from referee Brett Freshwater. Yeah, dangerous combinations on here for the Sharks. And an incorrect play the ball. Hornets get themselves out of trouble. It's a bit of a coach killer there. Just won the penalty. Had a full set of six to work with on the line. It's come up with that not stepping over the ball in the roll. But here they are going to get it back over the marks. The call. Referee Ant Smith. I've seen Scotty maybe a few nerves out there. A few errors from both sides to start the game as they just feel each other out. Yeah, we saw that in the women's 20 semi-final just prior to this match as well. Both teams took just a, a couple of sets to, to find their groove. That ended up being a, a quality game of football. We're expecting more of the same here. As Robson plays it, they show it this time. Tika pops it back over the top. And the touch has been made. That was Kai Tika in the five. Yeah, great job from Harry Cash there from the Hornets just to stay on his man as well. You boys just get caught up a little bit in the dump split. Back against the grain. Just to be well covered by the Hornets. A little bit of heads up footy though from the Sharks. Just yep. see him throw it around, but yeah, really good scramble defence from the Hornets. Good signs for them on the defensive end early. They'll be looking to be cleaner this time around as they transition downfield. Replacements come on. They do get the penalty go in their favour this time around. Yeah, something an offside call. You could just see there that the Lincoln wing just stopping a little bit short on that third touch as they were coming to the box. So Hornets, they've absorbed a few sets themselves down on their own line, but they'll, they'll now get a shot at the Sharks line here. It was Burns a touch. Seb Playster working with him in the middle of the field here for the Hornets. Playster sweeps around the back, gets it dangerous in this area of the field. Big touch made. Nice work. Number four, Xavier Arce there. Nice little play from the Hornets. Good defence. Ellis goes open this time, and it opened up for them. Another big touch there from the Sharkies. Jeez, it looked like it was about to unfold for the Hornets and the first points on the board. But again, throwing their bodies at everything at the moment in the early stages here, the Sharks. As we're going to see another penalty here. Another little bit of sloppiness as they come to the box. Forward pass off the rucks, the call from referee Mick Littlefield. Yes, yeah, Scotty, we normally think about the 20s. You think the attacking brilliance, the tries, the heads up footy, but it's been defence. It's been dominant in the start of this match. This is a good opportunity here for the Hornets. It's good field position. Hold it up here. A few subs rolling on out the back now. Key players on now as they size them up. Diamond from half. They go on the sweep again. Just stuttering and almost trying to get in between the defence there. Will both them on screen. 
A couple of touches in hand here. The Hornets Let's look to bring the Sharks up off the line now. Diamond gets in the half again, receives it back. Looping ball over the top. They bat it back. Oh, it almost reeled it in, both of them. They were in position for the bat back. It's just over the fingertips there at the 38. Sharks now put it through the hands with Charlton, who comes off the right foot. Nice work to link up with Skinner. Gets him towards the halfway line. Nice lead-up work here for the Sharks as Charlton pops over to the interchange area. Gets their replacement players coming onto the field. Nice and deep. McNamara holds things up for the Sharks as Tika takes his time. A great work early in the set there. They get another couple of touches on line attack here as we see the sweeper come round back against the grain. Long ball over the top. Again, good work from the Hornets. Looks like they've got it covered. Bit of heads up footy though from the Sharkies. Oh, diving in. Kaya Tika. Like you said, it did look like it was covered. It was an interesting play that they bombed out to the left early with still work to do. Smart footy from the Sharks to put it back through the hands and they just held off Kaya too long and he just streaked towards the line. Yeah, we've seen them do this a few times in the Sharks. On fifth touch, they're not really too worried about killing the ball in the opposition's corner. They're happy to play heads up footy, a few flick passes, a couple of switches and that's just a little bit of magic there from them in the end and... It's been a really good defensive start to the game, so it needed something like that to really open it up. Shark strike early here in the semi-final. Hornets looking to hit straight back. Big dive in the corner. No touch has been made. I think they have claimed it. Nice scramble defence in the end. Felici Frost coming across to make the touch for the Sharks. Yeah, he's a really solid winger, Felici. He's normally anchoring these Sharks teams, holding down the wing, and that was a crucial touch for him there. Had some work to do, some metres to cover. Got across. He got the job done. Now the Hornets are putting a bit of pressure on as the Sharks try to make their way towards the, bu the box. Murray plays it. See the Hornets sideline. Still looking composed as Charlton has made his way through the in goal area and he's flexing big there, Jai Charlton. Yeah, this is a Jai Charlton special here. Sam, it wasn't wasn't the best set, but they got to the box. A little bit of flow on coming out, and you'll see on the replay in a second, Jai Charlton just picks it up and just puts the head down. And look at him here, Scotty just splits the middle defenders and just no chance of catching him there. Great support play and down for the try, and isn't he pumped up? He's happy with that one. So is that young man, Cade Robson. To see some fans up in the crowd. Gives him a little bit of a, how you going? Sharks up by two in the semi final. Important for their confidence now, the Hornets, that they can find a hit back. Ball out to the wing. Covered one touch in hand here. We'll see if they're willing to throw it around as well. Fake to go in. Almost created the numbers. Pretty comfortable touch in the end from Kaya Tika. The semi second semi final of the men's 20s is taking place just adjacent to field one as well. The Brisbane Cobra is taking on the Sydney Mets. We'll keep an eye on that one. See which two teams make their way through to the men's 20s grand final later on this afternoon. Sharks again with another good box set here. Fresh legs on out the back. A little bit of flow into last. The best pick up jumps off the right. Nice switch little in. switch there from Murray. They switch it back again. Oh, and dancing their way to the line. They cannot do anything wrong at the moment, the South Queensland Sharks. They have come out firing in this semi-final. They're up by three. Yeah, this, uh, credit a few of these tries to their rucking, Scotty. You've seen the Hornets be really smart and kill the ball in the far side and make the Sharks go lateral to their box, but the Sharks have been willing to put their head down and touches one and two and go straight through the middle, and it's just put the Hornets on the back foot a little bit, and we've seen them then get to the box and be able to come out and make really big metres on third, fourth, fifth touches. We see oh, great both away from the Hornets. Well, what's happened here? We were just coming back out of the replay. Look up. Will Botham's just gone straight through the Sharks' defence. Yeah, and they, they needed, needed that, didn't they? Just for the confidence as well. It's the way the Sharks were playing. And it's just heads up footy. He's just sliced through two defenders. Little skip away. And, yep, you called it, Scotty. They needed that one. A little bit of a confidence boost from the Hornets now. Got to be on their toes here defensively. Sharks attack has been red hot. They're going to get themselves and penalty here. This the Sharks. I think they'll just come back and play it. McNamara gets it down. 
We've got Lennox Tika on this side. Keep her all go against the grain and the dive. And another great finish. I think that's Kaya on the far side. It's just such a dangerous trio to have on the field. Lennox, Lennox Tika on one side, Kaya Tika on the other, Jai Charlton in the middle. There's just so many threats to try and defend. It's really stretching out. Ball in the left hand. Diving from a couple of metres out. That's work to do. He gets it right on the line. He knew straight away. Flick that back. And they're really pumped up. There's a feeling about the Sharks in this game. They know this is important. They want to get through to another grand final. They're always thereabouts in the men's 20s competition. The South Queensland Sharks. Hornets, though, are going to keep fighting. Nice defence. As Cade Robson comes across to make the touch, he pops up out of the line yet again. Makes the touch on Ellers, flat and hard behind. The Hornets support player, though. I think Sam Mitchell could have done to reel that one in. Yeah, good defence. But good as they've been in attack, the Sharkies, it's been their defence. It's been really good as well as we see an uncharacteristic error trying to go to the box. Hornets now, they'll have touches in hand. Scotty, you just feel it's really important they can put one on the board here. Yeah, and just as you say, that's like an incorrect play. The ball from the Hornets, they need to tidy those little elements up. They've got to be 100% ticking those boxes and taking those opportunities when they can, particularly when they're chasing points. Down by three on the athlete scoreboard. Sharks, this running game, it's just been too much for the Hornets to handle here in the first half. They're going to get munched up the field. Quick tap on the halfway line. Hornets are back into their work. Play it just shy of the Sharks' 10 metre line. Nice footwork from both, and they'll, they'll be on edge when he's got the ball in hand. After their last try, Sharks happy to, to suck back in defence and roll into their 7 metre line. As the Hornets now dance around. Diamond linking up with both of them. They'll just pull things back momentarily and look to reset. Hodges from half again. The Sharks defence pops up out of the line. Can they create the Hornets? Both of them slings it. They've got numbers. Might have been able to just hold on to that. And try to attack the Sharks defence. They're coming back for another penalty here going towards the Hornets. Yeah, I think it was not moving forward, that one, by the signal from referee Mick Littlefield. And you did see the Hornets. They were really pulling the ball back, trying to get the Sharks up off the line. And referees have found a penalty there. So another set... For the Hornets. Which just feeds it from half again. Diamond tries to skip across. Nice line defence again here from South Queensland. A good composure from the Sharks so far. Still pressure to absorb here. Still another touch with not much on from the Hornets. Walking in from half. Both of them, they just slipped on the line momentarily. Great work from both of them. Another try to his name. He's got both the tries for the Hunter Western Hornets. He's dangerous so far, that young man in the purple. Yeah, big players step up on finals day and they needed him here. Just come off that little pop pass. You see the Sharks players just losing their footing a little bit, trying to get two feet back to the line. And you create that when you get the, the strike dump on the seven and you force the defenders to make two feet. It's a lot harder to have to get both feet back than it is to get just short of the line. So good set up there from the Hornets. And their first try came from a bit of ad-lib footy, but you just feel it's really important for the confidence that they're able to just get, get a try off their line attack, know that their plays are working. As you see, they now back it up. The good set of defence, and they're into their work here, trying to get towards the box. And now just putting pressure on here through their drive set. You see subs coming on out the back. It's Ellers again who will feature here as we get towards the end of the set. Picks up, goes, switches in. Still on the run. Nice little switch back again. They're well covered, though. And the Sharks, they fire it over the sideline. They give up on the play. They're the Hornets. Just couldn't crack the Sharks' defence on the back end of it. Just getting sent back to the mark here. Jai Charlton trying to pick up an extra sneaky couple of metres. I think he might have been hoping for a penalty for a delay game or something as that ball fired out over the sideline. Not to be. To come back to the mark. A few metres short of the halfway line as the Sharks roll over now. Davis plays it. Last touch for them. Short ball off the hip. Down in front of Cade Robson. 
And it's probably the first time for the Sharks that they've just come away from that clinical sub-box step. You saw us a few players early in the set try and put a step on and make a few extra metres, which didn't work out. That's good defensive pressure from the Hornets now. Seem to be really building into this half, Scotty. Rogers plays it, ducks the head, coming into the last. Diamond trying to skip across. Again, they'll finish it off in the corner. It's been a back-and-forth battle between both these two teams over the last few sets. Really able to gain control. The Sharks, though, in control of the scoreboard, up by two. Hornets, though, a little sneaky play down the sideline. A little hand stuck out there from the Hornets. Yeah, huge set here now, Scotty. About a minute to play. Sharks are going to get a number of touches on their line. At 4-2, you feel after the start that the Sharks have, the Hornets would probably take that going into the break, but you certainly don't want to be going in three tries down. TK goes straight away, and the show and go. Well, they weren't waiting for anybody there, the South Queensland Sharks. Both Tika boys on there, influential as always. And nice support work, Carter Skinner finishes it off. Yeah, big try there from the Sharks just before the break. It's Lennox picking up out of half. You just see him get through the offside player and then the late switch and the gap opens up. And Carter Skinner dives through. 5-2 now. We've got 30 seconds to go or so until the half. So the Hornets have really got to go here and try and see if they can't get a crack or two at the Sharks' line. They're running in nicely. They shape up. Big bomb out to the right. Nice footwork and the touch is made. Nice work. Harry Cash has to come back and play it. Under 10 seconds to go. This might be the final play. It's the last one of the set. Big bomb out to the left. Ooh, trying to pop it back on the inside. They just can't quite get clean hands on it there. Riley Jones as the hooter sounds in the background. And it's all South Queensland Sharks in this one, Zach. Impressive start here in the opening half of the semi final. Yeah, and you can just see how pumped up the boys are. They were really up for this one, the Sharks. They had a really, really good start to the half. Put a couple of tries on the board early. The Hornets did try and come back and showed a little bit there, but I think that try right on half time, that really is a, a big one. And that's going to shoot the confidence of the Hornets a little bit. So the coaching staff got to get in there and find a way to lift the boys up. Yeah, it's going to take a big effort here from the Hunter Western Hornets. Can they get themselves back into this game and potentially into a grand final in the men's 20s? We're going to take a quick break here from the semi final. Sharks 5, Hornets 2. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher was picking up pizza chicken salt chips step up to the podium my friend because you have smashed it smash it door dash it the roast is calling chicken is the king the new burger range from red rooster it's in all of us a craving to feel new again to see something new that will blow our minds or meet someone new who will change it New South Wales a place to feel free to feel alive but most of all to feel new again They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and a chance to win prizes throughout the year. 
It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Welcome back. Live action here. Semi-final in the men's 20s. It's all Sharks so far. And they've got the opening possession here in the second half. And they score in impressive fashion. Well, they are relentless so far. No doubt it would have been a message, Zach, out of the halftime. Let's just continue on and make a real impression here to kick start us in the second half. And that's what they've done. Yeah, and again, it's the Tika boys involved. In half and off the first receiver. Check ball inside. You see the Hornets players losing his feet. And that's a, a great little ninja ball that gets them on the board. And, yeah, like you said, Scotty, they're, they're a real ruthless side, the Sharks, when they're at their best. And they look like they're at their best on finals day at the championships today. See the bench. They still look pretty composed at the moment. That's a huge ball back on the inside. And the touch has just been made. Well, held up in the breeze. Nice little bat back. Sharks are going to sleep here. Yeah, all clear. They're asking the question. The referee, not too sure what happened there for the Sharkies, whether they thought it was the end of the set or whatnot, but they were completely asleep on their own line. Yeah, I think it might have been a bit of touch count confusion because the touch was definitely made. You saw the referee's hand go up for fifth touch straight away. And then, yeah, just a Hornets just caught him napping. That's number 10 there from the Hornets, Sam Mitchell. The catch and put down. So not the most normal of tries, but it was going to be crucial for the Hornets that they could hit back after that fast start from the Sharks, so they'll definitely take it. Here they are running again. Robs it back on the inside this time and hits the turf. Positive signs here for the Hornets. Straight back onto the football. As Hunt gets them going forward. Followed up by Patterson. Yeah, some good intent here coming to the box. It's normally one of the features of the Hunter Western Hornets games is their subset. They probably didn't have it quite as smooth as they'd like in the first half, but positive times here in the second. A bit of danger out to the near side. Not to be, but a good place to kill the ball. And the Sharks go all the way laterally across the field to get to their box. Yeah, Diamond putting the ball out in front of Riley Stacey. A bit clunky here for South Queensland. Side ball again, juggling it. They've got to continue to press defensively. They've got all their numbers on the left-hand side as they'll get some replacements on. Still a little bit all over the shot. Charlton will look to straighten them up. Comes through from half, and Hodges pretty casually comes up to make the touch. Probably not their greatest set of the game so far there from the Sharkies. Yeah, and on the other side of the ball now, Hornets with a really good start to their rucking set. Only second touch here, and they're across halfway and at the 10. They have a couple of touches to play with as they get down to the line now. Rolling in nicely, just shy of the 7. Ellers goes big out the corner. Referees give it all clear, and the Hornets have gone back-to-back. -back. That was an impressive try for them as well. Threw the ball out into space. Good finish from Charlie Walkerton. Gets him now within two. Yeah, we spoke about Ellers as being one of the... Danger players from the Hornets, and this is a massive ball out to the wing. And great job to get that catch and put down, almost jumping the legs forward out of the way of the Sharks winner, winger who was diving across in cover. And positive signs here for the Hornets. They're well and truly back in this match now. Defence is going to be important for them. You know the strike power. The Sharks have a little set piece coming in. They reset. Tika picks it up, goes short, and what a finish. As soon as it was in the hands of Chase Davis, he was down on the ground. And it's a good response there from the Sharkies after getting a little bit of pressure come back their way from the Hornets. They respond nicely with a cracking try. Yeah, again, just sums it up really nicely. Although it was good attacking play, but I think the Hornets will be a little bit disappointed there. I think it was the number three, Tobias Patterson, probably just holding his space a little bit wide and just left that gap open. And you leave a small gap from the Sharks and they've just got too many good players that you know they're going to punish you. So Hornets now back down by three. And put one back on the board. His cash, both of them sweeps. It was impressive in the first half for the Hornets. Two tries to his name. Here he goes again. Early ball and space to work with. They're going to point to the spot yet again. We're starting to get a bit of a shootout between these teams in the second half. The Hornets just showing they're not going to go anywhere here in this semi-final. 
Yeah, great heads up footy again here. I didn't think there was much on coming into fifth play, but his Sharks winger just caught in a little bit tight. And it's the number 26, Riley Stacey from the Hornets, just holding a really nice wide space and gets the ball out in front and finishes in the corner. All right, Scotty, they're not going away, the Hornets, as Sharks come up with an error here on the restart. Both of them again. We just made mention of the, the two tries that he scored. It was the first two tries for the Hornets that he got. And that was a beautiful right to left. He's setting that one up. He's in everything for the Hornets here in the semi finals. And back on the run. This is Harry Cash throws a little show and go. Final play of the set. Yeah, again, not a bad place to kill it for the Hunter Western Hornets and they've had really good intent in their defence. You can see them trying to get up out of the line and the good touch forces a not square roll ball. So Sharks, just a few errors just creeping into their game in the second half. It'll be crucial now that the Hornets can take advantage and put some points on the board, still down by two. Got danger players on the field. Ellers plays it. They look to punch through the middle. Nice recovery in defence but another penalty here for the Hornets. And not moving forward again, the call there. Just that save in middle, trying to hang really far back, close to the line, so he can get up and make the next touch. Cash takes them on himself. Just recovery in defence. A yeah, good, smart first play in the set. Hornets, just a little safe play, attempt to dive over. Ellers comes off the left foot, goes short. Yeah, a couple of, makes a touch. couple of short dive over options here. You'll see the Hornets do this. From just con conditioning the Sharks here, I wouldn't be surprised if we're, we're looking at a long bomb off the back of this one. Oh, footwork gets into the in-goal area, and they've opened up. The Hornets are in again. Three on the trot, and now they're down by one. Yeah, what a great play here. Just a couple went back against the grain. And it was just a really good bit of footwork here coming back. Just evades that touch. It's millimetres in that. And then great ball out to the winger. Good finish in the corner. Referees point to the spot. Well, the Hunter Western Hornets, we said at Scotty, they were going to need a really positive start to the second half if they were going to put themselves back in in this, and they've done it. See a dive over. Ooh, good defence. That was close. Would have been short of the line there. Lennox as well, potentially. It was Reg Nichols that set up that last try for the Hornets. Quality finish. Now diving into the line again. They defended their line well, but yeah, you could just see Kyam Hunt there. I think just caught short of the line. His other middle, who was on side, made the touch. So referees will come back for the penalty. A little pop around play to Robson, who takes them on, and I think it might have been missed. Referees asking, yeah, great honesty here from one of the Hornets players and the Sharks are actually going to come up and give him a high five as well for it. Good honesty, no touch made. The Sharks go over for another try. Yeah, our game's built off that, Scotty, and that's such a, an impressive display of honesty from the young man. Minutes left to go in a massive semi-final where you're down by one close game and you can just see him here, just says to the referee, nah, didn't get him. And they point to the spot. You absolutely love to see that in our game. Yeah, well done, young Charlie Walkerton from the Hornets. Just gives a little bit more comfort to the Sharks. 8-6 on the athlete scoreboard. Hornets now back on the run. Diamond pulls things up. Jack Thomas comes back in field. Both and sweeps. They go away from him. Diamond has to put the brakes back on. Players... Going in every direction here, the Hornets. Ellis short ball to Diamond just behind his back. Almost punching through the hole. Looked like there were Sharks there to potentially make the touch if Diamond was able to hold on to it. Replacement players and fresh legs would be needed. Great meters to get them over the halfway line. Chase Davis, one of the try scorers here in the second half. Now we see the ball take a deflection off retrieving players from the Hornets. It will be a penalty here to, to the Sharks. Yeah, we saw them try that in the first half, the Sharks, that little dogger play where they're coming out of the box and then go back towards the box side with that last player coming on, just trying to punch down the sideline. Nearly worked for them on that occasion, but did win them the penalty, so now touches in hand. Tika on, Charlton on. Danger signs for the Hornets. They go away from the short side. Charlton, oh, picked off here. 
Doesn't look like he wants to go the full distance. They'll play it nice and calm. That's a zero touch as well from the intercept. And Ellers puts it under the wing and gets them going forward again. Diamond, nice little switch out the back to Mitchell. They're going to get themselves right into an attacking position. Just as I say that, a little mistake in the play of the ball. Well, they won't be too happy with that. The yeah, Hornets, that's it was unfolding nicely for them. Killer there. Had the Sharks on the back foot off the intercept. So we see now... Sharks trying something a little bit different, opting for an away set out here. I think led by Lennox Tika, one of the leaders in that team. Allows the rest of the team to rotate off and get their subs. Now shaping up. This will switch back on the inside. Arcee plays it. Last touch. Tika feeds it out the back. Robson, lovely hands. Diving into the corner for Lisi Frost. Quality try there for the Sharks. They're ninth of the game, and they're back in front by three. Yeah, great try from the Sharks. They're just so good in attack, Scotty, and they've let in a few tries in the second half, but when you're scoring nine, ten tries in a game, especially in a shortened 16-minute half format, you're going to go a long way to winning a lot of games, and they've just got so many strike players. The Sharks, that they're just so hard to defend, and the Hornets have put up a pretty good fight. And still in this, not a lot of time left on the clock. They'd have to go quick, the Hornets. But certainly can't afford, afford to concede another one if they want to be any chance in this one. Nothing happening for them so far. So I'll reset now. Jack Thomas hit himself in half. Picks up. Looping ball over the top. Doesn't hit a target. They just tried to go for that little sinker option. It can be hard at speed when you're trying to throw that sinker ball and just take a little bit of speed off it to make sure it comes back out of the hands. And you saw that one float forward. Ooh. Another loose pass here from the Sharks. Give Hornets another chance at their line. They do they look to strike early. The set. Nice work coming from the outside in. Reed from Tyler Erickson. Yeah, good job there from the Sharks. Anticipation, getting up and shutting that down. Still a few touches in hand. Hunt from half, early release out in front. One-on-one -on -one battle, nothing doing for them on the left-hand side. Riley Jones is spilling the footy now. So the Sharks get straight back on to the job. Yep, three and a half to play and up three. I'm sure the message for the Sharks would be just hold on to the ball, make sure we complete sets, make Hornets come off the back fence. They've done a good job doing that in this set here, and they should have a decent strike dump off the back of it. Still a touch in hand. Hugh Charlton in, the ML, and a great extra pass out to the wing. Kaya Teak it is with the quick catch and pass over the top, and a great finish in the corner. And Scotty, that'll probably be all she wrote now for the Sharkies. Just a, an unbelievable attacking performance. Yeah, absolutely. And it was a great response, wasn't it, Zach? They had the pressure. There was back-to-back -back tries from the Hornets. Margin came back down to one. But the way they've responded here towards the back end of this second half from the Sharks, quality performance for them. And they're going to be a, a pretty tough team to beat. Whoever takes them on between the, the Cobras and the Mets in the grand final later on today. Yeah, it should be a cracker. We've seen some really good Sharks-Cobras battles over the, the year, both Queensland sides, and Mets with a really strong side in the 20s as well this year. So whichever way that other game goes, it's going to be a cracking grand final, which will be on live and free on KO and across Sky Sports a little bit later today. Got Women's Open semi-final action coming up next. UQ Rebels taking on the Northern Beaches Renegades. Yeah, that should be a cracker, and a great endorsement of the new format as well. Two affiliates, first time at the championships. One of them is going to make their way to the grand final, and that should be a great semi as we see the Sharks again. Why not? Why not put one more on the board? Referees are pointing to the spot. 11 tries in a game, Scotty. We've seen a few high-scoring close games, but 11 tries in a match in a semi-final. That's uh, going to give the Sharks a lot of confidence in what they can do with ball in hand heading into the grand final later today. Well, absolutely, they're going to go in with plenty of confidence. South Queensland Sharks, the way they've performed here in this semi-final. A gallant performance from the Hunter Western Hornets. No mean feat to make it through to a semi-final of the national championships. And they're still going to fight to the death. They'll just switch back on the inside. Grand final 
the men's 20s will take place at 2.45 here local time, 1.45 in Queensland, 4.45 if you're tuning in on Sky Sports over in New Zealand. Yeah, it's going to be one that you won't want to miss. Plenty of occasions, the 20s ends up being one of the best finals of the day. It's just so fast and sure, like we've seen in the semi-final, there'll be plenty of heads-up footy, flick passes, bat-ons. There'll be plenty going on. And, yeah, can't wait to see who's going to come out on top in that one. Sharks again with space down the left-hand side. And they're looking to put the, the final nail in the coffin. They're smelling blood in the water. Here the Sharkies, they're relentless. They're looking for more points. TK tries to skip away, and there hasn't been a touch made. No, he will put it down. And the perfect way to finish here for the Sharks, and one of their absolute superstar young gun players gets another try to his name, the number six, Lennox Seeker. Yeah, what an absolutely ruthless performance for the Sharks, Scotty. It felt like only five minutes ago there was one in it, and all of a sudden... It's 12-6, and it is going to stay that way as the referees blow the final whistle. What a game, Scotty. Sharkies looking like they might be the team to beat in this 20s division. 100%. They've made their way through to the grand final. They'll be taking on the winner of the Sydney Mets or the Brisbane Cobras later on this afternoon, as we made mention. But stay tuned. We've got more semi-final action coming up. We're into the Women's Open. Yuki Rebels taking on the Northern Beaches Renegades. Stay with us. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, the dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it! Door dash it! Roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or 
meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free, to feel alive, and most of all, to feel new again. Down. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. That craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? 
It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Good afternoon and welcome to the Championships presented by Inferno. We've got a cracking women's open semif semi-final here on hand and it's between the uh, highly fancied UQ Rebels against the Northern Beach Renegades. And I'm joined by Des Fogarty in commentary today. It's going to be a great game, Des. Yeah, this is going to be an absolute cracker, Gab. It's, uh, the, uh, the Renegades have had a couple of really good games out here. They had one or two that were a little bit off the boil. Uh, UQ have been absolute cracking all the way through this weekend and through the tournament. Uh, Renegades, we know the firepower they've got with uh, with Berryman, 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 Berryman Duff. Yeah, and this then... goes on. <laughs> but uh, this will be a really good game and and a little bit of a contrasting styles, I think, as well for uh, for some of the the players in terms of how they like to play the game. So we can see Holy Raff on the ball early. And we see the, there's Pahuka Tuff, and they've dropped the ball there, unfortunately. But uh, getting into the semi finals, we had uh, the UQ Rebels beat the Southern Rebels 8 1. And on the other side, we had the Renegades in a, in a close match against uh, Southwest South Suns, beat them uh, Swans 5 4. So, and they did actually play in the round games, Des, with the, the uh, Rebels beating the Renegades on that occasion 8-0 earlier in the tournament. But uh, I think it's going to be a different affair, a much closer tussle this afternoon. Yeah, that was... Uh, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure we covered that game. It might have been you and me together yep. doing that game earlier. And it was one of those games that nothing went right for the Renegades. They, they got blown out of the park early and then they just could not find their way in. Yeah, as we see oh. here, it looks like Britt Donovan. We've seen ricocheted off somebody and back into the hands of... Uh, Holly Rath, as the Renegades work their way to their, their box, get some fresh legs on. It looks like they're perfect conditions this afternoon in Coffs Harbour, and we should see uh, some free-flowing touch as they're driving up the field. There's Nicole Sedern, and there, there's, there's so many plays to watch here, Des. It's uh, hard to single out. And as we see a drop ball right on halfway there. Uh, so it looks like it might be Lucia Folds might play the ball there. Oh, sister, Bella Folds. And we see here UQ Rebels working their way up towards just over halfway. We've only got two players on at the moment, so they'll get some fresh legs on. And we can see here Rebecca Great Mai Mai. shoot up. Yeah, Kiala Duff there. Kiala just knew exactly where that was going to go. And we're seeing there Mai Mai taking it into the line. She's going to work with Andrea Sand. Just trying to work out where the gaps will be. So Mai Mai takes off, dropping it back in. Long oh, ball out, nice. and we're going to see the opening try here to the UQ Rebels. And it's number 16. I think that's Caitlin Blade. Run yeah. us through the replay, Des. But all of this comes from, you see, Hine Andresen sweeps around, pops it straight back to Beck Mai Mai. The defence is collapsing onto, uh, back onto Mai Mai. She knows that that's happening. Doesn't need to look. She knows where she is on the field and just a really, no, a really uh, sweet no-look pass. Yeah, and Single there wasn't much the defence could do there. It was it was good hands in the end by Blade. It kind of was above her head, but she, she reeled that in. As we see here, Renegades on the attack here, trying a little sweet play, beautiful cut up, but it looks like it's gone forward off the hands there, Des. Yeah, that one's not, not in the hand sweet. So as soon as that one as soon as the arms move, that one's just uh, doing its own thing. Yeah, it took off but not in the right direction what they were hoping for. As we see Mai Mai driving it up the field here. And they've started fast, the UQ Rebels, and we've seen that the whole tournament, haven't they? They yeah. look fit, they're fast, and, and I would say relentless, Des. It's uh, fit, fast, and relentless. That was actually a uh, that was a key phrase I used with one of my teams many years ago. That's uh, uncanny. <laughs> Learning off you all the time, Des. We've seen error there from UQ Rebels. Didn't quite get to hand there. And now we're seeing they get the ball here, Renegades. They're, they're right on halfway. They were looking to create a few attacking opportunities running on at speed here. Yeah, and they'll be looking to get some, some flow to their game, I think. Good pick up. Yeah, that was Saldern there. And she's passed it out. Beautiful hands there. Yeah, that was, that was a little bit better towards the, the, the back end of that, that set. They had nice flow. And we're fortunate enough, to, we've got Jack Rogers down on the sideline here and we're going to cross to Jack now and uh, see what he's got for us. 
Thanks so much, Gab. Spent a little bit of time there in the UQ box, and they are calm and composed, as you can see behind me here. And they split off into pods and have a little chat in their specific group. Saw Andreas and, and File just having a little chat there for that middle pod. So expect, them to see, uh, expect to see plenty of talk, but very, very positive signs so far for UQ. Back to you, Gab. Thanks, Jack, and it's great to get your insights down in, in the respective boxes as the, the afternoon goes on. So as we see here, the Northern Beach Renegades are making a break down the sideline there. I think that's Brooke Bosland. Ooh, play could on. be play on there. Oh, we'll go for six to go there from the, uh, the referee. Yep, so Renegades, La La Duff directing traffic through the middle. Most of what happens now will come through from her. Yeah, and they're looking for a play through there uh, from Talia Berry. Remember, the ref said the, the defender got on side. So they guess they get a few more opportunities here, and these two are looking to work together here. Kiala Duff's pointing where she wants the players to go. She's got Georgia Randall behind her. Here goes Berryman. Back to Randall. Yeah, there, there's no gaps there at the moment, Des. The, the UQ defence is up to the task. Yeah, Randall didn't quite... Do the right thing there. She she skipped away from the player who was dropping, and oh, great ball from La La Duff, almost reeled in by Brooke Bosland. Yeah, she needed a bit of a step ladder there. It kind yeah. of it took off in the wind and, and it kept getting high as it got to her. But a, a very good attempt there by uh, Brooke Bosland. You see here they've got their defensive line set now, the Renegades, and they'll be looking to really push up and make it hard for UQ Rebels to get to their box. But as uh, Jack said, he said they're, they're a very composed team and they'll just stick to their structures and their processes and it takes a lot to get them off guard, Des. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of experience in, in, well, in both of these teams really, but there's a lot of experience in this UQ Rebels team. And you can just see there Mai Mai working with Andreas and off the right back through and that gap up the middle and Rebecca Mai Mai in for try number two for the UQ Rebels on the athlete scoreboard. Yeah, nicely done that's just good pace good rhythm they've got clean roll balls all the way out the park Andra Sand with the step out step back and pops it back for those who watched the grand final the last couple of years I think it was two years ago, Andrew Sand playing for Sharks, and it was Danny Davis as well, and they did all that, that exact same stuff about five or six times in that grand final. Yeah, and speaking of Danny Davis, I was talking to her just before, and uh, she's on an adjacent field playing in the, the other semi finals for, for the Scorpions, so it'd be interesting to see how that match is going over there as this game from it commences. We're back to the action here. And Renegades, they've had a few attacking opportunities, Des. I'll uh, be looking to capitalise here soon as, as Boslin takes off. And uh, we see there Jasmine James is getting touch on the last one. And straight on the ball again, UQ Rebels. Yeah, straight onto it, sharp. And they're Hard just driving. fast, aren't they? They're yeah. just straight up the middle there. Some Here. good drive to them, good shape. Uh, I just counted seven players on. Referees haven't got that one. No, and they don't miss many. We've been talking no. all weekend about, as we see, Tiani Bryce. Oh. She's gone straight through. She's, She's half. half. She'll be looking for someone. And out here, a beautiful put down there by Olivia Goodsell. I'm Try not sure three. how Tiani Bryce got wide open like that, but uh, the pass left to right was really nice. But yeah, The, the only thing I can figure is she's caught her off there, uh, Brianna Nathan, and so she's listened to the ref, Tiani Bryce, and... Still a little bit of work to do there, Olivia, but did a great job of getting the ball down. And, and now the score is skipped out, as we just see there, Bryce skipping past the defender uh, to three tries to nil to the Renegades. Uh, to the UQ Rebels over the Renegades. The Renegades need to get a uh, try and get some good, as we see there, Brooke Bosland. She oh. has got toe, but a touch has been called. Beautiful swan dive at the end. Yeah, that was, that was actually really good. Just tried to, to get a little bit of elevation to hurdle over where the defender was. So yeah, but the, the referees have called the touch back on about the 10 metre line as we see Sardern, Sardern here working with Holly Raff. And then we've got Pahuka. Play on. No. Take it back for a roll ball. Bit of confusion there. This is when the touch was made. As we see here, Georgia Randall popping down. Oh, that's going to be play on. Oh. Forward. That's a shame. That was, uh, that was really well worked there by Pahuka Berriman Duff. And we see the replay. 
nice distance, but yeah, it, it definitely travelled forward, and unfortunately for the for the Renegades, they, they're not on the board yet. But it, it's looking likely they need to keep the, their position down there and and finish their sits down that end of the field. And I'm sure their opportunities will come, Des. Yeah, and and, and certainly I'd be saying, you know, as the coach for the Renegades, I'd be saying to them to uh, to try that that again, and then just try to get the execution right. But there's a nice ball out from Andrew Sand. Yeah, and these two are working together beautifully, aren't they? They're going Oof. in, they're going out, they're throwing wide. We see the J-line ball out the back to the winger there by Andreas Sand, and uh, it's a juggernaut that's very hard to stop. She's, she's almost a bit of an underrated player. She's not really, but, like, don't really... She's not flashy. She doesn't, you know, you sort of look at the field and just go, OK, I've got this person, this person, and then Andrew Sand's in there, and she's just hard worker, really strong player. It's got all the skills and talents that you need from a player in that uh, in that sort of a, a team. As we see Kiala Duff doing Kiala Duff things there, stepping in, stepping out. But again, there's just no gaps here through this UQ Rebels defence. Yeah, P, P Murphy did really well there to, to, to step in and just uh, put the hand out. Yeah, as we see here, there's a penalty there for UQ Rebels and they're getting the ball there on halfway. And up we go up the field there. And we see Tiani Bryce, who set up the last try, or the third try for the UQ Rebels. And she's on here with Demi Ashes, who's had a good tournament as well. Yes, she has. Here we see Bryce again. Need a quick pass. Good touch there from the Renegades link. We have uh, Taylor McIntosh there. So they got the ball on the seven line here, uh, seven metre line. And again, it's going to be hard for them to work to their box because UQ Rebels are, are up in their face in defence. Uh, and we, we're getting to about to be the, the second touch, and they're, they're only just getting to their box as we see in Erides, and that's not going to help their cause when they're under pressure, trying to get fresh legs on the field. Yeah, and, and it's whenever you're in this kind of a situation, you've got to go forward first. Your first thought has got to be go forward, get ourselves moving forward, and then earn the box, like, and then get that lateral movement of the ball after you're travelling forward first. Yes, agree. So they've put themselves under a little bit of pressure as we see a sweet play, and that's going to be play on, and that could be a try to... Is that, in fact, Tiani Bryce? Yeah, I think it is. Um, as we turn, we're going to see the replay. It is, in fact, Tiani Bryce. So she's got that ball right on the seven-metre line there, Des, and she's set up a try, and now she's scored one for herself and, and well-deserved. Yeah, Perhuka's Duff has come across and... She's off the line. She's at well forward of the line and has made the tag. The referee's called it down. He's right there. It's, uh, not quite real uh, happy about that one. The hooker. And we see the score on, on the main stadium here on the Athlete Scoreboard. 4-0 to the UQ Rebels over the Renegades. I'm going to cross down to Jack Rogers, who's got an update on the other women's semi-final. Thanks, Jack. Thank Thanks, Gab and Des. Yeah, it's really tight over on uh, field two there. The Sydney Scorpions lead 1-0. Barry Gibson uh, in the coach's box there for the Scorps. It's pretty nervy. Expect the Pineapples to be right in it, but how good are the UQ Rebels right now? 4-0. Gab, it's looking like a good game for them. Good setup for the final. Back to you. Thanks, Jack. It's straight kit. Those updates from the other score. So we can see what's going on. So we're back to the action. My, my, short pass. Andrea Sand. The referee's pointing to the spot, and there we have it, just like that. It's now 5-0. UQ Rebels over Renegades, and this is becoming a uh, hard task now for the Renegades. Yeah, Andrew Sand, just ex full extension there, got the ball down. You can see that uh, that quadriceps or hamstring fully strapped up. She's uh, hobbling a little bit on her way off the field after, uh, after scoring. I hope she's fine. I'll need her for the, uh, the grand final, if, unless... The Renegades can come back here. Yeah, they'll be looking to make sure that she's OK. And you can see the coaching staff down there with her. We might even get Jack to try a little bit later on to get a bit of an update on how Andrea Sand's going, as we see Nicole Sedern. And they're going to need to see more of that. They're going to need to skip out outside the line and, and take a few chances now. We're about three minutes shy of half-time, and they desperately need a, a score before the half-time hooter. Yeah, absolutely. They, they desperately need to, uh, to get on the board. Can't, can't afford to come away from this half. Having been beaten 8-0 the last time you played them, can't afford to come out of the uh, the first half. And we're just seeing an injury scores. in the background as it's play on here to Caitlin Blade. 
potentially a forward pass, but now the referee's just stopping plays. We see a couple of the Renegades players look like they ran into each other when they were defending. We'll try and get a, a read on who it is. It could even be Nikki Kennedy. Just have a little look if we see a replay. She's going off the side. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, it's Nikki it's, Kennedy. It's yeah. Nikki Kennedy. She's looking like she's okay now, but uh, yeah, she definitely copped a knock, and I think it was a bit of friendly fire, perhaps yes. off her own te for her own teammate. Referee's caught it back. Caitlin Blade uh, thought she was, was running down. Pass. Yeah, but the ref caught a forward pass, so they couldn't let it play on. It's good to see Nikki Kennedy. She's she's back here. She's about to take a drive up the sideline here before she'll she'll make a sub. It's a good flow from the Renegades. There's, oh, sorry. Sorry, Renegades. That one is 100% on me. That was... Uh, it was looking really, really positive. For our uh, viewers at home, Des just put his hands in the air and he's apologising to, to all the Renegades families and friends watching on KO Sports or, or, or Sky Sports in New Zealand. It's, uh, it was a really nice nice drive, good flow to it. They're the kind of play that you're looking for to, to get yourself into a really good position for a strike dump and to get the, uh, the, the game going for you. Oh. And we saw a rare error there on an early touch from UQ Rebels, and we see here now Renegades passing the ball, and, and you spoke about it before, Des, trying to go forward first, which yeah. they were trying there, and, and then but still trying to get the ball to their box to get these fresh legs on. Yeah, there was a pass that... Oh, wow. That's, uh, nothing's going right for the, the Renegades at the moment, but there was a pass that, that, was, that was given that was somewhat blind um, and it went straight to somebody who, and, and who had a shooter right up on top of her and she really had no opportunity to do anything and she's got to get the heads up have a look at what's going on around first yes we see the sweet play here and oh that needed to be done there the oh. knockdown there by uh, Pahuka Berriman Duff we've only got about probably time for about one or two touches if that and uh UQ Rebels don't do t look too rushed to get to the ball. They'll be happy to play that down to the Hooter and go into half time where their coach, Renee Murphy, I dare say, will be extremely happy, obviously with the five tries that they've scored, but just as happy with the uh, zero against them. So, yeah. Des? Especially after the 8 0 in the round game, uh, to still to, to have played one and a half games so far against this team and, and not have conceded once. That's really, really impressive defence. Yeah, and we'll be back shortly after the halftime break uh, with an update from Jack Rogers. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Now we all want to be gangster trying to play hard. Get down, they just think they are. Now we all want to be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps>
Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Well, what a half we had there. The halftime talks, very, very interesting. Just spent some time in the Melbourne, uh, not the Melbourne, the Northern Renegades box. And, uh, yeah, they want to play smarter footy. They want to give that ball early, uh, not taking two steps from half, just giving straight away, looking for the punish. And uh, that's their game plan. They really want to hype up and feel the vibe. They're also a little concerned that they're not getting to the box easily enough and that UQ Rebels jamming. So the message from the box over there at the Renegades is get that ball, drive it in hard, and uh, don't sort of freak out when you're making that touch. You put the touch on them, you put it on hard. Back to you in the box, Gap. Thanks, Jack. Great insight there. And, and obviously there's a lot to the Renegades need to try and fix, and it's not going to help, as we see here. That's Caitlin Blade crossing for another try, and it's, it's not the way the Renegades wanted to start, Des. No, it's not, and I... Brooke Boslin took a, uh, an intercept while Jack was talking and, and it looked very much like the, uh, the, a good start for them in defence, but she's caught in a position there. There's nothing she can do. She's in the right spot where she needed to be, um, just beaten for numbers off the little quarterback play there or return ball. And just beautiful hands there. So we see yeah. Dre Sand, Demi Ashurst, Tiani Bryce and... The list goes on, and Caitlin Blades, beautiful try in the corner, and now the athlete scoreboard out, UQ Rebels 6, Northern Beach Renegades and nil. We see here now we've got uh, Lala Duff there. She's working with Taylor McIntosh, and we've got the experienced Nikki Kennedy. Great to see her back into action. There's a nice footwork from Duff, and she's going to draw a penalty here, So, and that's they need to move up off the line. So they get a fresh set of six, and here we see again UQ Rebels pushing up, Kennedy back into Duff. Well handled there by uh, Danita Smith. Yeah, really nicely done. The uh, Duff's the, the, the controller. She's the one that's directing everything, all the traffic around, telling people where to go. It's uh, interesting hearing Jack talk about the line attack play uh, game plan. Yeah, I... I not 100% sure I'd be wanting to, to focus too much on that. Personally, I want to get a lot of the uh, the drive sorted out and give ourselves more opportunities and then actually get into the game plan. But Yeah, and that was looking a little bit... Uh, you know, it was a lovely pass from Nikki Kennedy. Actually caught the, uh, Nikki Kennedy actually caught the uh, head of Caitlin Blade, so it wasn't six to go. She was up in the channel and in the right space. And, yes, yeah, it's, it, it's difficult to see where they're going to find their gaps here as we see UQ Rebels work their way to the box. It's, it's like clockwork, and we've said it all weekend, and Rebecca Mai Mai, she just comes on at speed. And she's got a partner in crime there right behind her, working together. You take it, I'll take it. I'll take off this time. Through she goes, beautiful long pass, and then we see a try to Olivia Goodsell, her second try for the day. And what can you say, Des? Yeah, that, that, was, that was just very, very smooth, but to a large part, the, the, the Renegades are dropping off once they hit that halfway line, dropping off, and it's just giving my my so much space to run into that it gives them, you know, the initiative to, to do whatever it is that she wants. And you can see there's two Renegades players standing next to each other, so there's not a great deal of communication in defence happening. It, these are all little things that add up to, to make easy tries for uh, for the Rebels. Yeah, and the scoreboard's blown out a little bit here and, and we see another error there, unfortunately, and nothing is going right for the Renegades at the moment. So they've got to try and forget about the scoreboard for the minute, uh, just try and complete some sets, keep the ball down here and uh, just try and peg them back one at a time. But they, they've got to stop this midfield. They've got to work on their defence, uh, pushing up and it's hard semi-final at the end of a big tournament and, and the legs are weary and it's it's like a freight train going through here as we see Tiani Bryce, little beautiful oh. pass there. Demi Ashurst, oh, great touch. I think that's Seldon. Yeah, and had to be made because that yeah. was that was a try for all money. About to put the pen to paper, but be and it's great to see them still putting in those last ditch efforts, Des, to stop another try. Yeah, and that's a bit of leadership there from Nikki Saldir, and she's uh, she's the experienced head in this team, and and you know, needs to, uh, to to lead from the front, and knowing that 
OK, we're just going to keep chasing. This is a much better drive, and it's resulted almost in a try. That was probably their best set of yeah, the game Yeah, absolutely. Pairs. And all it is is not something really simple on the end of it. Talia Berryman with the dive at the line, but it's just... That's all they need. Keep it simple, but you've got to get the the midfield battle done right. You've got to get going forward. You've got to win the contest of the roll ball to give yourself some momentum and opportunities to get down there. Yeah, and that was very close there. Talia Berryman nearly opening up the account for the Renegades, but not to be. As we see down here now, we've got Britt Donovan drives it in, taking off to the left, and a good touch there by Holly Raff. Yeah, Holly Raff did really well. She was she was kind of stuck in the roll ball after she made the tag. Got on a bike, chased it, the the, uh, the half all the way down until she was uh, sure she was on side, and then just made the tag nice and comfortable. Yeah, and they they got a penalty there, the Re Northern Beach Renegades. So they're going to go to their box. Oh, it was a little bit clunky there. Forward. We've called play on. The refs have, have let them play on here, and we see their Pahuka moving up. Looks Nicole Saldern back on, right on the. The halfway line there. Oh. And they're going to get six to go here and a penalty there. Yeah, so here's an opportunity. Britt Donovan lost track of the touch count. She thought that, that one was six, not five. She was standing in the, uh, in the space and then everybody else has had to compress in and uh, somebody's gone in offside. So Renegades get another chance here. This is where they want to run their, their game plan, which is going to involve footwork. They're going to need to move the ball around first. They've got what they want, and that is going to be pretty close. I reckon that might be down. No, they're going to call that one a touch. Yeah, the referees have just subbed there. So it's going to be the, the first touch. So they've still got the rest of the set of six, but, but there was a little opportunity there, and we'll see on the replay here. She recycled it back, and very close. Ref's in a better position <laughs> than us there. So we see here Nicole oh. Sardone, and again, they just, it was a little bit messy on that occasion. So no way through at the moment for Northern Beach Renegades. So here they've got their defensive line set, Des. Yeah, I'm just pointing out the, uh, the, the halftime score in the other semi final on, uh, over on field two was, was 1 0 to the Scorpions. We've just seen the pineapples go in. Uh, maybe Jack might be able to give us a bit of an update on that. Yeah, down on the touchline here. I've just been across to field two. And the Sydney Scorpions, well, they're up by five. They've basically oh. just sealed the deal there, courtesy of a full-length try from Ellie Wilson, the number 16 young winger from the Scorpions there. So grand final matchup is looking more and more likely by the second, guys. Back to you. Thanks, Jack. There's tries all around here because there's a try scored over on field two on the main stadium here. We see Rebecca Maimai slice through. From acting half, and, and she picks up her winger for another try for the UQ Rebels. We'll see it here on the replay, Des. Yeah, my my, just with the show and go. That's why it's one of those tricky things that we teach now is is to to sort of hold a little bit more instead of collapse straight in and smash. But that one needed to be uh, fully committed, uh, shut down from the outside in, and um, because he. Really don't want to fall for those dummies. That ball has made its way all the way out to Boslin. She can't get hands to it, puts the foot to it, it goes out over the dead ball line. She's going to be penalised for that. Yeah, she couldn't get the hands to it there, but uh, that try brought up a hat-trick in a semi-final for Caitlin Blade. Yeah. So not so shabby. She's been good on the wing. As we see Fylde there, Ooh. and that could be a penalty through the ruck. The ref's called yeah. play on here. Oh, wow. Oh, that's that's the call you get when you're uh, you're eight nil up, I think, and uh, it's been given then. Yeah, so they'll just want to finish this game out now. UQ Rebels in a you know obviously efficient manner, not not use too much fuel up and, and get themselves to the final safely and, and injury free. So as we see here, Britt Donovan, she's not slowing down anytime soon. Coming in, she's going to go out of half straight through past the referee. And it's a good oh, touch good there. Tag. Holly Raff got caught up in the roll ball again. Make that tag. You can see there, she's, she's first two steps, really short, hesitant. Beautiful oh. touch there by Sophie Wickman. So we've seen injury at the back of the field. As I say, they're trying to get through injury free. We've got an injury. Yeah, it's Marama Thomas. When she's, as she's dived and been tagged, her knee, left knee, has just dug right into the turf. I reckon it's just a bit of a shock and a jar 
Yeah, so um, there's some medical staff down with her now. And I can see Jack's running down the field. And so we'll get an update off him very shortly. But uh, we'll return back to the action. Let, let's hope Thomas is fine as we see Andrew Sand just happy to take off, take off to the blind side and, and give him the ball back on the seven days. Yep, and this is prob that's a better start. The shooters are there and then the offload out for Boslin. So now the Renegades have got some flow. They've managed to beat those first couple of shooters, giving themselves some space to run into. This will end up with a better set for them. Yeah, that's better and again Saldern's here as we see Saudern late switch back with Bahuka. They need a little oh. flick pass, but unfortunately for Taylor McIntosh, she was trying to get the ball in and out in that same motion, and uh, it, it's definitely worth a try. Last touch, you're 8-0 down, you're in a semi-final uh, at the championships. You've you've just got to have a crack. Yeah, have, have a crack at it, basically, and Talia Berryman would have been really good to, to have swept around there, and with just a little tap, she wouldn't even have had to, uh, to, to catch it there. Uh, Taylor McIntosh, she could have just bumped it out for for Berryman to, to take that one. And they would have had a three-on-one over on this near side. But And I just heard from uh, Jack Rogers there. He went down and checked, and he's given me the double thumbs up for Thomas. So that is great news that she's uh, she's going to be back and, and ready for the grand final in a couple of hours' time as we return to the action here as the, the Renegades take the ball on halfway and again, they're, they're, they've had a few good sets, and, and we know their attacking capabilities, Des. So you, you can just, understanding for our viewers at home, how good this defence is, because there's so much strike power in the, the Renegades, as we see on show there. Yeah, and, and certainly uh, Coach Renee Murphy's uh, going to be more happy with the nil than with the currently eight. Yeah, and we saw there Olivia Goodsell. She was racing down the field. She skipped outside in and, and then safe play made the touch and gives her team a few more opportunities there. We see Danita Smith in the action. She's working with Britt Donovan. Down there. Oh, and, good tag. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, unfortunately, Kiala Duff got penalised there for an infringement in the ruck. Did yeah, I think he's just, just said that was a little bit too hard. I... I Personally, and she's I thought pleading that pleading with the yeah, refs, yeah, ref, something. Give us something, please, Jordan <laughs> Randall. I'm with Kiala Duff on that occasion. <laughs> now we've got another set of six here, and you can see here Duff. She's pushing out on a sweet play here, and that looks like Isabella Folds there. Yeah, Bella Fields Folds has uh, just swept around, and Lala's had to go up, make the touch. She's not been able to put in as much physical work on the touch as she would normally do because she's just been penalised for it. So she's not able to get those first two steps away. And Bella Folds is able to put the left foot on, step back across, nearly take out referee Randall and uh, put the try down to make it nine. For the Renegades players, as they, uh, they're they going to bow out of this tournament here shortly in uh, another couple of minutes' time, but a very young side. There's a lot of very young players. We saw a lot of them at the uh, the, the Pacific Youth Champs last year. There's a ball that goes out that's well defended. Still only fifth touch. Um, but f for them to go away from this tournament, they're going to have to to look at how do I add another dimension to my game in attack, and how like both in line attack and also how do I get myself going forward when under high pressure of uh, of shooting defenders. Yeah, they'll look back at this game, and, and there's been a couple of bright spots, and but they're just against this team that they've they've hardly made a mistake here. Is they just yeah. they're still shifting the ball? They're going to pop it back inside there to Folds, and they're just toying with them now. Just waiting for new players to come on the field there, recycling it back off the right foot, and there we oh, go. Oh, 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 I'll score. And no, even when they do make a mistake, you can score, at Demi <laughs> There's smiles all around, and we love seeing that in our game. And it, it, it's taken the score out, the athlete scoreboard out, to to ten nil to the UQ Rebels. And Des, run us through it. Yeah, look, it, it's it's Foles is just it's it's not toying. She's just trying to find space. Nobody's closing it down. Once the ball comes across, but and the step, but you know it's your day. When even when you drop the ball, when you miss it completely, and it lands ends up in the hands of somebody else who strolls over for a try. That's uh, Things are going your way, so... Well, Caitlin Blades had her share of tries. She'd yeah. already scored a hat-trick, so she <laughs> thought, why not? I'll just tap it on to somebody else and, and get them on the score sheet as we see Pahuka Berryman-Duff there. 
uh, having a crack on the short side. And we've got Lala. There'll be a little trick play down the, the blind side here. They tried that earlier, and that's a try. Excellent Final. to see, and they deserve that. So, Kiala Duff, you are on the score sheet for the Northern Beach Renegades takes the score on the athlete scoreboard at 10-1. And you're right, Des, they deserve that. Yeah, absolutely. 63 minutes worth of touch footy and they finally get a, uh, a try against the Rebels here. But it's just a, uh, a punish with the ball pop straight back in. Uh, and it is uh, Lala Duff that gets the try and gets the reward for the effort. The only person you could probably uh, say probably deserves it more would have been... Uh, Nicole Saldern, she, she's been hard working both of the two games that we've seen in this uh, between these two teams, but yeah, Andrew sure Sands going to rip an absolute cracking ball out right to left. Doesn't look, quite get there. We'll probably have time. This will be the last set, I'd say, for the game. So uh, UQ Rebels will be moving on to the, to the grand final in a couple of hours' time, which you'll see on KO and Sky Sports. Uh, and as you said, for the Renegades, is that, that should finish with ball in hand here. And they're still trying right to the end. And Nikki Kennedy's still pointing, talking to one of the other players there. But uh, they, they have had some bright spots we see here. A really good latch. They'll take off, back to the short side, and the ref. I think he'll be happy to say <laughs> that's all she wrote. Yeah, he was, uh, he was getting ready to, to, to go for the changeover for uh, touch number six, but just pure comprehensive victory of the UQ Rebels here, 10-1 over the Northern Beaches Renegades. Renegades have had a, a, a bit of an up-and-down tournament, but they'll, uh, to finish top four, there's no shame in that whatsoever, and we'll get confirmation from, uh, from Jack, I'm sure, in just a couple of minutes' time, but... Uh, it looks very much like the Scorpions have got through from the other semi-final, so it'll be UQ Rebels versus Sydney Scorpions in the women's final, which will be on a little bit later on this afternoon. And we're going to throw to an ad break now, and, and after the break we will hear from Jack Rogers on the sideline. Jack Rogers here down on the touchline with Sammy Joe Curtis. Sammy, you didn't play in this fixture, but 10-1, a phenomenal score for your team, the UQ Rebels over the Northern Beaches uh, Renegades. You got a grand final this afternoon. How's the team going to prepare for that? Um, we'll go back now and have a bit of a rest, rest the legs and stuff. But, yeah, the girls are definitely ready to rip in. Well, it was a big score indeed, but over on field two, the Scorpions, with a pretty big score themselves against the Pineapples, you got a lot of experience, of course, playing with and against the Scorpions girls. Uh, you can't talk too much about tactics, but uh, any sort of basic game plans that you can review? Um, I think we're just going to do our best, do whatever Renee and Leisha ask us to do, and yeah, I think, you know, the girls will definitely be putting their best foot forward when we go up against them and won't, definitely won't be, you know, taking anything for granted when we go out against those girls, so yeah. Sammy, you're a very composed side. I spent a bit of time in the box. We've got sideline interviews on KO this time around for the championships, but 
Uh, you know, you, I saw you splitting off into pods and having little chats here and there. Um, where does that sort of confidence come from? You just never look like you're under pressure at all. Um, I think we've got some pretty good coaches that really help us stay composed and we trust whatever they're telling us to do. But, you know, this group's been together for a really long time. We play a lot of touch and, you know, it's more like family than a team. So, you know, being around them is just naturally calming. So, yeah, just the girls and our coaches, just a great group. Well, it's been a pleasure, Sammy Joe, and good luck in the final. It should be an exciting uh, spectacle. So we'll see you there. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, the dedicated Dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. Roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free, to feel alive, but most of all, to feel new again. Down, they just think they are. Never know want to be gangster trying to play hard. Down, they just think they are. Never know want to be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website.
When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Good afternoon and welcome to the Championships presented by Inferno for a men's open semi-final clash between the Hunter Western Hornets and the Central Queensland Bulls. And I'm Gab Rose and I'm joined in commentary again by Des Fogarty for what's shaping up to be a, a, another great match here, Des. Yeah, look, this is the uh, the replay of the men's open's final last year that was uh, Sharks absolutely... Uh, Belted Hornets in the first five minutes, and then just coasted home. Really, it was it was a it was a really entertaining final. But if you remember back, cast your minds back, and it was uh, Jamin and Bob scored two tries in the first five minutes. It was a uh, Damon Moore had an absolute masterclass in that game. As we see, the the hoot has gone here, and and we've got Jardel Bob straight into the action. Jaden Bimbo. And it's going to be played at a lightning speed. Oh, you there we go. Nice switch. variation. And they're trying to get it on the seven. And you see Hunter Hornets, they're, they're trying to push up. Oh, oh, flick pass. Double flick pass. In we go. Stop oh. it. <laughs> Malcolm <laughs> Kenny with the first try of the day. And we were talking about flick passes yesterday, Des. And I, I, I venture, I guess there might have been three in that period of play. And... and and what a way to open our men's open semi-final clash. What just happened? <laughs> so from Bembo, the switch back on the variation. They recycle the ball. Damon Moore just is going to pop this ball out here. Little shape. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Jardel could have held onto the ball and just fallen over the line himself. All we needed was a little flick pass back out to the winger. And uh, we're back live to the action, but we couldn't believe our eyes what we just saw <laughs> there. unreal. Yes, you see Hornets back into the action, and they've had a set attacking the line of CQ Bulls, but they, they've managed to make the stop and straight onto the ball, and, and they're driving up the field here with Jack Leonard. And there we see David Zanette up the field there, and they're getting fresh legs onto the box here. And I'm still in shock at what we just saw. <laughs> that was the speed that that ball came out from Moore was extraordinary. And then <laughs> Jardel just catch. Oh, I don't really know that I want to put this ball over the line. And then just turns around and does a 360 and ties a bow on it and flips it out. And then the step back to, to finish it off. That was extraordinary. And then as we just we just saw Hornets make an error in the roll ball. But as we see, we just saw a, a great performance in the, in the Women's Open from the UQ Rebels who beat the Northern Beach Renegades 10-0. And, and they're going to take on the Scorpions. Uh, and they have they had a win 7-1 in their semi-final clash. So this afternoon at 4.40 on KO, as we go back to the action here and see CQ Bulls in for their second try. Looks like Bailey. I say out on the wing there, so, uh, but yeah, this afternoon, 4.40 on, on KO and Sky Sports, you'll see a, a great women's open clash. Run us through here, Des. Yeah, again, it's Damon Moore with the pick up, the left to right ball, and it's the long short, it's the link, it's the pass out to the link, and then the, the relay on that uh, has exposed the Hornets defence there. But again, it's two quick tries early. There's Dylan Thompson. Tries to reorganise the Hornets. They need to get on the board early. They don't want to get the, the same as last time. Oh. As Jaden Bembo has made that tag, I reckon he's moved seven metres and not a centimetre more to get that tag. Touch? Yeah, because it looked like their Thompson was going to slide through there. And, and they're going to need all the experience and, and skill set of Dylan Thompson here. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it can't be a, a one-man show. The, the Hornets need to get into their rhythm. I've, I've said this a few times. I, I, my observation is that the Hornets are a very much a rhythm-type team. They get into a flow or rhythm of uh, how they get the ball down the park, and that's when they are at their most dangerous. 
And we see there another little trick play out the back and a, a good touch there by uh, William Egerton, and he'll be another one to watch. As we said, there's a, there's a bevy of stars right across the park, both youth and experience here. But you see here just a little trick play at the back. He looks like he's going to go down, flicks it out the back there to Zane Cox. And it took a couple of uh, diving touches from the Hornets to avoid another try being scored. As we see along, they're going to pop it back in here. Looks like referee's caught it forward. Mm, yep. It's a nice play from the Bulls. Again, this time, Paddy Crow with the long ball over to the wing to pop back in. St. Cox dives over, but it, uh, there was a forward pass in it. And the athleticism of these these men these oh. days that we see on show, and the, and the female athletes, the way they their bodies, you know, contort into different directions to get the ball down, they're popping it back inside. Uh, oh, it really nice. is great to see. Yeah, there was a forward pass here at the end of that set, but the uh, the speed of the drive that was much more Hornets like than we'd seen so far in the first almost five minutes. Yeah, and they won't be panicking yet. No. Two tries in a game of touch. You know, we're, as you said, we're less, less than five minutes in as we see a penalty there. Just a bit too forceful in the touch. So, so right on halfway, we're going to see a penalty to the Bulls. But 2-0, plenty of time, and there'll be plenty more tries scored. So no need to panic. Uh, just get back to your processes and be just be do you and be more Hornet-like, as yeah, you're saying. Yeah, that's it. They just need to get into the fight. The, uh, they'll be looking to get a rhythm and get down and score. But Good touch there because we had Jamin Bob there. He was skipping off his right back to the middle of the field and he's got the ball in hand now. Making the touch on the seven. And really good touch there. Yeah. We had Matthew Atkins. And, and the, the Hornets came all the way up and took away Damon Moore's options there and, and he was pumping and looking to try and find who was actually going to be Open and there wasn't anybody by the time that uh, that he got smashed by uh, by Matt Atkins. But they're definitely looking a lot more comfortable now coming out of their box. We see Thompson. Ooh. Have we seen oh, intercept no. there? <laughs> oh, and he's off and running. The chases are coming. The try line's coming sooner, I think, and we've got another try there. A, a double in the first seven or eight minutes to Bailey Assey. He'll be super happy with that. It was kind of caught a deflection. And it was looking likely. From Thompson, it's, he batted it on. It's the right play from Mitch Wilton, the bat on. He hasn't got the execution right. It's landed right in the bread basket for Bailey Assay. And he's a big, big man. And just enough head start to get himself all the way down to the field, running around the Red Rooster signage down that, that end. Good work there. He's a, he's a commercial man. <laughs> yeah, the sponsors will be happy with that, but I, I'm... No doubt he came off for a breather there because that was a long run when you take the intercept on your own line and, and you look ahead and you've got... Uh, he had about 68 metres to cover, yep. but he did it very well there. And the, the athlete scoreboard's now out. CQ Bulls 3, Hornets 0. So we see a penalty there against the Hornets. And now we see CQ Bulls straight over to their box. And we're going to see Jardel Bob take it up the field. And as we see here, we're just going to throw down to Jack Rogers, who's, who's got some intel on the box as the ball goes out over the sideline. Over to you, Jack. Down on the touchline here, we just saw that amazing Bailey Assay uh, tr runaway try. The Bulls at the moment, three zip up, but expect Thompson to come back hard. That's their key, marquee player in this team, has been all weekend. And, uh, yeah, he'll be calling the shots here in the seven. So, Gab, stay tuned for more of that. Thanks, Jack. And, and the man in, you were just talking about, Thompson, Ooh. he's got a penalty here. And the, the UQ player's looking to the sideline to ask what happened there. Damon Moore. But penalty is still given. And there's a fresh set of six here for, for the Hornets. Lovely sweet play dive, but well touched there. Yeah, Will Eagleton on the sweep. Dill Thompson with the feed. There's going to be a bit of a conversation happen here, or a penalty perhaps. As, yep, no, this is going to be a conversation and probably a four sub. Damon Moore, oh, a bit more than a four sub. He said a little bit too much. And uh, referee Baggio isn't going to put up with that. No, he's too experienced campaigner and, and he's off to the other end of the field, Damon Moore. And this opens definitely opens the game up as we we're go. going to see a try straight away. It's hard enough to defend with six, let alone with five. And we see... 
Hugh Doherty over for the first try for the Hornets, and they're now back in this match. And, and Des, run us through this replay. Yeah, Jack Moffat here, just the uh, the step in and step around. Mal Kenny, he has to make a decision which way he's going to go. The step from Edwards is enough to take him away from Kenny, in behind him. There's not too much that Mal can do there. Uh, and the Hornets let back into it by the poor discipline. It yeah, definitely Damon opens the game up, doesn't mm. it? Because for our viewers at home, Damon will be off for a little while longer. A couple more sets. Uh, and Hornets get a couple more opportunities with the ball on, against five defenders. Yeah, one more chance here with the ball in hand as there's more conversation. Referee Skelly now. Having to clarify one issue. Not sure what was going on there. No, and they won't want to let him score here with five. As we see a long ball out, well handled there by the winger for Hornets. They've still got one more touch up their sleeve. They'll probably finish it back here on this side. Yeah. Make it difficult as we see there. Step back in, goes out over the sideline. They'll get the defensive line set, Des. And it's one more set uh, for Damon Moore. Down there, he's, he's got a moment to think about... Uh, whatever was said, and, and he'll fly back up to the box as we give oh. away a penalty, and that's an opportunity lost for the the Hornets there. Is that St. Cox that has, has earned that one? St. Cox has got the ball in hand and is about to take the tap, but that was uh, really well done, and that's that, you've got a team like the Hornets that can fly out the field with rhythm and score, and they just concede it with the error on the first touch. Yeah, now again, they're line defending as we see an out ball there. Skipping back in, but we do still have the extra defender for the Hornets. As we see here, Damon Moore is running down the sideline. So they'll be back to their full complement. It's six on six again. So we... Oh, the referees have stopped play again. And it's a penalty to Hornets for a hard touch. And now there's two refs on the field. They're having a bit of discussion. We're going to talk to the CQ Bulls there. Yeah, they're just having a chat to the captains, I think. This is just going to be a let's everybody Settle calm down. down. Yeah. Bit of Taylor Swift there. We need to calm down. Need to, shake, need to shake it off. <laughs> we could go a, a mash up here. That's about my, the extent of my Taylor knowledge, unfortunately. <laughs> and we've just heard an update... Uh, Jack Rogers, let me know. It's it's 2 nil over on the field number two. To the Swans. To the Swans yeah. over the Mets. Swans are looking really good this week. I, uh, I would not be surprised to see them get through that game, even though the Mets were, have been playing really well as well. We're back live to the action here on the main stadium, and we're going to see another penalty there. It's, it's an offside penalty in this instance, so it wasn't for a forceful touch. But it yeah. was for offside. So Not moving forward. Yeah, we've got about four, a bit over four minutes here left in this first half, and, and Hornets will be keen to get another try on the board. And they're an opportunity. It's play on here. Step in, step out. Connor Edwards just gave the team time to, to readjust. Be probably another penalty here, I think, if no, they're just going to play the advantage. There was a big drop back by the Bulls which you're not supposed to be able to do. Yeah, and we see Riley Jones here about to get to play on the sweep. Little quick play. Uh, but Floyd Ty couldn't hang on to it. So they've survived that onslaught there, the CQ Bulls, and uh, they get a penalty on the seven-metre mark, and, and no doubt they'll be... Oh, is they going direct here by the looks, going there first, and now they're coming back to their box. Yep, go forward to earn the box. Yep, this is what we've right, been talking Des. about through the day. Go forward first, get yourself some momentum, and then you can earn your subs. Uh, and as a player, it's all about doing the work to get yourself to the box and knowing that your job's not done until you get uh, all the way off. And there the referee's going to make a call there. Again, it's going to be for a forceful touch. I oh, know, foot, foot, foot in, in the ruck. ruck. Yep. So Hornets have got the ball there. They're going to get it on the on the halfway line. It's, it's uncanny how many penalties are right on the halfway line, Des. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's almost like it's a, a um, like a magnet for the ball. Yep. So as we see here, we've got Thompson back on the field here. And he's going to be orchestrating the plays here. And he's working with Luke Kane. Down they go. The, here he goes, Thompson. Oh. 
good touch good there. Touch by SA. He's had a good game, SA. Scored a couple and, and now instrumental in defence as well. And really good defence there by Lachlan Crow from the CQ Bulls. He came up and took away the time from Thompson. Yeah, and Luke Kane there just uh, he's popped the pass on the switch and had to go. We're going to rip that like 270 degree pass around over the shoulder. Nobody there. Yeah, and as we see the CQ Bulls and Bob, he's got six to go there. Uh, we're going to throw down to Jack Rogers for an update. Over to you, Jack. And we can see just behind me here the Bulls box. They're celebrating every single defensive play. Offense too, but Bailey Assay is getting a real rap from the squad on the sideline. Jardel Bob, really a leader in his box over there. It's fairly quiet, actually, in the Hunter Western Hornets box, so they're going to need to lift that energy a little bit in the second half, try and get back on the score line. Back to you, Gap. Thanks, Jack. And as, as we were saying up here in the commentary as well, SA has had a great attacking game, but uh, definitely his defence has been a feature as well. We see a penalty here for CQ Bulls. That, that similar call, uh, foot in the ruck. They're just going to take their time here, Jamin Bob. Have a think about where he's going to go. Dancing here, yeah, making the touch on the seven. Good defence there. Yeah, nicely done. Connor Edwards really had to, uh, he got on his bike early and had to be agile. St. Cox, well short of the line, well covered. Yeah, we no see he's, yeah, he's coming up slowly. He might have landed on his knee. He's, he's limping back to play the ball, so let's hope that he's okay. Once he gets moving, he's not, he's he's not coming off. So no, he, he he's staying okay. on there. And then we've got Bob, and it's oh, an intercept here. We're off down the sideline. We've got a chaser coming across. I think it is a try. Connor Edwards read it beautifully, got in a perfect spot, and then tucks it under the arms, and he was gone. Mal Kenny came flying across from the far side. Almost got him. He was only about uh, four or five metres behind. We've seen a couple of intercept tries now, and that he was up in the channel, and, and yep. look at him go, Des. Yeah, straight away. Right across in, in, at the uh, the front of the opponent's box. That always feels good as a uh, as a winger, not that I'd know. <laughs> and right on the stroke of half-time. So that that's a turning point in the game here. So it was 3-1 with CQ Bulls attacking the line. We're seeing intercept from Connor Edwards. And then as we go to the halftime break on the athlete scoreboard, CQ Bulls 3, beating the Hunter Western Hornets 2. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher was picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it! Door dash it! Roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. Down, they just think they are. Never know want to be gangster trying to play hard. Down, they just think they are. Never know want to be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps>
Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Welcome back to the Championships presented by Inferno for the second half of what's shaping up to be a, a super exciting and, and close game as we'd expect, Des. Yeah, absolutely. And the, uh, the, 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 the contrast between this game and the last time they played each other in the grand final last year, some good play. They might be coming back for a forward pass, though. Yeah, the contrast is obviously the, uh, the difference. Last year, Jamin uh, um, Bob, Got those two early tries, and then the Bulls really just extended and 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 dragged away from the Hornets. It took a long time before the, for the Hornets to get into the fight. It was well into the second half last year before they found themselves in, into the actual arm wrestle. They got into it early here in this game, and have tightened it all the way up. And that those two highlights from the first half, that absolutely freakish try, just minutes into the game. <laughs> Yeah, it was unbelievable. First set of the game. But we see here CQ Bulls, there was an error. And that looks like it might be ball down. And we are all tied up. Hunter Hornets, as we look on the replay. Might have been Josh Moffat, was it? Yeah. It was. Yep, Josh Moffat. Pass from Eggleton. Back, back inside, Josh Moffat. Three all on the athlete scoreboard. And I just had an update from Jack down on the sideline. And on, on our other semi final, 5 2 to Swans. Yeah, that sounds about right. The. Uh think that one probably won't tighten up the way that this one has. No, three all. So yeah. whatever was said in the halftime box uh, by the Hunt Hornets coaching staff, it has worked. They'll be super happy. They ha they did that with their defence. They got an error off CQ Bulls and got a repeat set, as we see here now. They're back in the action, the CQ Bulls, and they pop back inside. Nice. And that's a try, looks like, to Zane Cox. And blink of an eye, we're back to 4-3 to on the athlete scoreboard in the favour of CQ Bulls, Des. Yeah, really simple, this one. It's the pick-up from Moore. The long ball over the top. Well read. Cox has hit the, exactly the right line, knowing that it's just going to get the, uh, the the bat back from the winger on that side. I'm not sure if that was yeah that was uh, Assay again on that far side. Yeah, and we're going to go throw down to Jack Rogers to see what he's got for us out of the halftime boxes. Oh, but hang on, Jack. We've just seen a oh, touch called. Sorry, Jack. I'll throw to you now. Well, uh, not much you could do about that last try from the Bulls there in defence for the Hornets, but really positive half-time talk that I just witnessed. Uh, they're prioritising their defence, and they want to get up and be really aggressive on those first two shots. They want to slow it down, slow down the game, and then uh, on those later shots, they want to be firmer in the touch. It's as simple as that for them, and they believe if they can do that, they can go the distance here. Thanks, Jack. And, and while you were talking, we've seen another try from the Hornets from... Uh, I think it was Luke Kane Luke there. Kane, yeah. and we'll see on the replay in a moment. And we're, we're all tied up at four. You, you can't look away from this game. It's just action-packed. So let's see what the next 10 minutes brings. We look at the replay there, Des. Yeah. Luke Kane got himself nice and low. He's buried himself subterranean-like. That pass, as we come back to live action, Jardel Bob not happy with himself. He's thrown a, uh, a poor pass that had it connected. They had the numbers out on that uh, their left-hand side. Yeah, and they'd done a good job. They, they had the second phase going, but the, the pass out of the hand just uh, wasn't as good as Bob would have liked. But uh, he doesn't make many errors, so no, we'll, we'll give him that one. We see here Hornets up the field. We've got Thompson on the field there. He's going from half. Here he goes. Nice long ball and a bat on. Bat on. It's going to be called late. And it's yeah. called that. Oh, it was going to be another amazing try, Des. Yeah, it was. But uh, referee Skelly's uh, basically said that the, I think it's the winger assay has made the touch. Yeah, we'll see here on the replay. Beautiful bat on there. And it's back in. Look like it's going to be tried. But referees right on the spot there. Called the ball back. But the Hunter Good Hornets, finish. they've come out of their blocks firing in this second half. And you have to. It's semi-final of the championships here. It's, it's do or die. There's no second chances. So you cannot leave anything in the tank. You have to win this semi-final. Good play. Nice little drive there by Dave Zanetti. And he's uh, earned his team a penalty for offside. And he is going to get him going forward here. 
They're in their second half, in the, uh, the attacking half. Yeah, so we'll see. They've got a few touches up their sleeve. They're just slowing things down momentarily. Sweeper's coming to this short side. Not a lot of space to work with there for Zane Cox. No, and we've just heard it from Jack Rogers down on the other field and field two. There's a, a player from the Mets down, although he's up now uh, off the back of the field. So let's hope he's okay and, and that game gets back underway. So we see another innocent here. Uh, Lennon. We've got Chris Lennon. He's off. He's got oh, catch a say in pursuit, but Chris Lennon, ball down, finger pointing in the air. And what would you know? The Hornets have hit the lead, Des. Two intercepts, and that's really just driven by good, solid defensive shape and the players into the right spot. But Chris Lennon here off the ML play, that, that middle, middle peel, and Lennon right into the, exactly the right space, and he is a shot out of a cannon to fly down. He gives the, uh, the salute to the, the crowd. Yeah, the crowd will be happy down there in that corner. And on the athlete scoreboard, Hunter Hornets 5, beating the CQ Bulls 4. And it's been a, a frantic start to this second half. We're only about six minutes in, Des, and yeah. uh, there's been so many tries. It's just been action-packed. Can't look away, whereas over on the other field, the uh, as I look away, <laughs> the uh, the game's only just about to get restarted after that, uh, after that injury. So... There's a bit of conversation going on between referees and players and all sorts going on over that side. So, As we see Leon Barnes with the ball and the Hornets have just lifted in this last five minutes. So they're going to have to respond to the Bulls and we know they've got definitely got the cattle to do it as we see Bob there throwing the long ball. He might po try and put great defence there for yeah. the Hunter Hornets and they're, they're straight onto the ball. The energy and enthusiasm at the start of this second half is, is excellent to see there. As yes. we see Josh Moffat... I was just going to say, Squires and uh, Connor Edwards were in really good spots. Sorry, it wasn't Squires, it was Josh Moffat. And we'll see Luke the Kane there. The and oh. Oh, oh. Wow. It's, it, it, I need to take a breath. There's a the lot ball happening. Went over the sideline, Des. There's a lot happening here. Luke Kane is in the gap. He could have dived for the line and maybe had a, uh, a slightly better option, but... Yeah, he tried to get Salim Squires. He kind of thread the needle kind of around behind the defenders. Uh, and we're back in the action here. And they're driving it up the field now, CQ Bulls. And on we go. We see Bob with the ball. He's offloading there, taking out a half. Nice cutout pass to Zanetti. But well handled there by the Hornets. Yeah, they uh, pretty comfortable in defence on that, that set. So Jardel just sends that one. Out into the corner to try and make the Hornets earn their way to the box. But they've got their rhythm. They've got their flow as they're steaming onto the field here now. They are steaming onto the field. And, and again, I just had Jack in my ear. We've had a bit of an update as we Great see the Hornets to go it, ahead no, again. It's gonna, oh. No, no, no. It's uh, forward pass there. Might be the bat back. This ball from Lennon. Yeah, either of them were, both of them really, really close either way. So, looks like it might be the ball from Lennon that has been called forward. But Okay, and as I return, I just hear from Jack that the, the Swans are actually down to five players for the rest of the game over there. So, that could change the result. There's been a send-off over on field two for the Swans. And uh, so, the Mets will give themselves a chance here playing the remainder of the game against five players. So, it's all the details we have. We'll get back to the action on the main field. But uh, wait for some more updates on the other semi-final, Des. Wowzers. That's why uh, there was an injury to the head. We can speculate all we like about what's happened there. But, oh, well. We'll return to the game here. As we said, both these games, you, you cannot take your... Your eyes off as we see a drop ball there again, right on halfway. The ref's just slowing him down, letting him get back into position. And we've got about seven minutes left. We're a bit over halfway through this second half, and it, you can't pick it yet, Des. No, it's all going. The Swans have scored with five players, though, by the way. They just put a try on, so whether you've got five or six. That's right, you've still got to defend. So as we see here, speaking of defence, the Hornets will be looking to defend here against Jamin Bob. Easier said than done at times, as we've got Zane Cox hitting a hole. Play it. Well Good defence. Yeah, Liam Squires. But they've got a penalty there, so they'll, they'll have to do another a set of defending on their line, and they'll really want to get a stop here, Des the Hornets. Yeah, 
Floyd Ty coming in at link as well. He shot up out of the line, and that's uh, made life a lot easier for Squires at yeah. link. But the penalty comes, and so now they're being told to move forward. There's a bit of extra encouragement coming from referee Skelly on this side. Yeah, and you've got Damon, Damon Moore working with Liam Barnes there. As they push out past the seven, and that's Edwin and good touch. Yep, and the crowd noise you can hear there is because the Swans have scored again with five. Wow. So. Egerton makes a touch, but oh, the ball's been the away, up. and that is Jamin, Jamin Bob. Bob. And he's getting up slowly, but he's got a try for his team, as we'll, we'll see the replay in the minute as he puts the ball back over to halfway. And again, it is Damon Moore with the fake long, soft hands for Jamin. Damon's been involved in everything in this game. He sure has. And as we see now on the athlete scoreboard, we are tied up here at five tries apiece with about five minutes to go. Yeah, there is. There's only five minutes to go. The Hornets just need to control. Long ball over the top. That's not going to be able to work with. Bailey Assay in really good position out that side. Yeah, and he gets in really good position, doesn't he? He gets up, and, he, and he's, a, he's a tall man, so it's hard to get it over the top of him, and, and we know how strong and powerful he is. We've seen that today in attack and defence. So, again, the wingers, as we speak about all tournament, making a massive it's difference in this game. difference. And, and, and Assay and Kenny, they're both big, big wingers. Um, not necessarily just being tall. It's that they're big bodies. They've got explosive power to, uh, to get them to where they need to be. It's, uh, it's such an important aspect of of the position and, and underrated by a lot of people. but uh, Not step, up here with no. you or I. <laughs> we know how important they are as we see Hornets into action. Drop back inside. Oh, they've played Phase. it extremely close to the line, but we're going to see a try Squires. here, Des. Squires. What a finish by Liam Squires. The second phase play there, doing it a metre and a bit from the line where you've just got no time to do anything. It's just get the ball in the hands, flick it out as far as you can. I can't even see who it was that threw that ball, whether it was Eagleton or uh, Mitch Wilton. I think it might have even have been. It's electric. If we see on the replay here, that that roll ball was literally that face play less than a couple of metres out from their own from their line, but they managed to get it out to Squires. And on the athlete scoreboard, Hornets hit the lead again. Six, CQ Bulls five. But this game is not done yet, not by a long shot. Tries to get it around the corner, but that's ball down. It was, it was thrown into him then uh, by Jamin Bob. Yeah, Floyd Ty in really good position and good shape as he's uh, trying to cover on his own player. Hornets now with the, the advantage. They're in front. They've got the ball. They've got their tails up. There is going to be a penalty as well now for offside. This is where the Hornets are at their best. They've got the, uh, the foot on the throat now, and it's just going to be about running all the way through to the end of this game. Three minutes to go. Yeah, that penalty definitely helps. Got a new set of six here as we see Thompson ball in hands. Working with Chris Lennon. And they're just slowing the play down here. Seeing You can see there Thompson pointing where he wants the ball to go. Lennon at dummy half. Beautiful. Oh, and there's another intercept. Another Des. intercept. Yeah, that's, again, that's good defence and really good positioning there. I think that's Braden Hegarty on that side. And now we see a penalty for CQ Bulls offside. Oh, hands on head there. For Luke Kane, but uh, penalty has been awarded about five metres shy, seven or eight metres shy of halfway, and CQ Bulls will have an opportunity here with around two and a half minutes to go. I don't want this game to end. Nobody does. It might. We might get a drop off. You never know. <laughs> we'll wait and see. I'm not willing to call any score predictions or winners as of yet with two minutes left in this game, Des. They are t my two favourite words: drop off. <laughs> As we see Bob in... Oh. That's a big contact from Dill Thompson, mm. and he is going to get spoken to here by uh, by referee Baggio. He's going to slow the game down, which is not going to please the Bulls that much. No, because... They the, want the, the game to the keep going. He's ticking, and he's been four subs, so as we're going to see some substitutions on both sides, they were getting their key men on here. As we see, it looks like Damon Moore coming back into the action, and, and again, he has been instrumental. He really has been the best player on the field for me. Yep. Um, oh, oh, that's an error in the roll ball. Jardel couldn't get control of that one. Loses it. So I reckon mm -hmm. Bulls might get two more chances with the ball in hand there. Lennon does get smoked. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ball will come forward. But I would imagine that 
Referee Skelly's going to force sub somebody here as well. That's. And as, he, as he's doing that, uh, Des, we've got another score update from Jack, who's doing a lot of running down there on the sideline between the games. The Swans are now in front 8-5. Yeah. So they'll be going through to, to the grand final. Uh, Which is not bad, considering I've seen at least two tries go while they've been down to five players. So. No, it's an amazing effort. As we're back in the action here, this game's still in the balance with just under a minute to go, and, and Hornets will be desperately looking to, to seal the deal with a try. Oh, oh, and I That's... think... They've done it. No, it's a forward, forward pass, pass. So the game is still in the balance. Uh -huh. I was getting excited. I was on my tiptoes. As we see there, Bob, here's the replay. It was beautiful hands. And now there's a, a penalty to CQ Bulls live Riley in action. Jones. Oh. And Moffat's tip on is the one that's been called forward. There's about 30 seconds to go. We'll get this one set of six to go. They're driving it in there, Damon Moore. Yeah, they won't get another chance with it. It's got to be a try this time. Moore has it. It's down it's for... Looking for phase. There's going to be a snow. Not incorrect roll ball again. And then Damon crow. Moore knows he's he's not even racing back to give the ball. There's, there's only about 10 seconds left on the clock here. What a game, Des. What an absolute cracking game of touch footy. Lockie Crow there just couldn't quite execute. He was not square when he's rolled the ball. And... Hornets will get a measure of uh, retribution for the Bulls beating them in the grand final last year, but that was an absolute cracking game of touch footy. There's highlights in every minute of the game, and uh, wow, catch I feel our like breath. I, and... uh... <laughs> lived and played every play there and then, and at 5.30 this afternoon do not go anywhere because you're going to have to watch this grand final. It's going to be between the Hunter Wester Hornets and also the Swans. So 5.30 on KO and Sky Sports. That will be a fast game of touch footy. Both teams play very similar styles. Fast flowing. Yeah, that's going to be an absolute cracking game to watch. It'll but... be a great game and we'll be back soon after the ad break. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. 
We're down on the touch line here, Jack Rogers with Jack Edwards and Josh Moffat. The Hornets just getting over the line there, guys. One try in it, and you'll play uh, another grand final here at this year's championships. Jack, I might go to you first, but it's always a great matchup against the Bulls, and half time it was looking a little rough there, but what was said in the box that got you guys over the line? Yeah, for the past six years, I suppose, we've always had that ongoing battle with the Bulls. We've been pretty well the top two teams for a long time so it's never never an easy contest um three nil down you're going oh what are we going to do here but we've been in this position all tournament to be honest with you so the box is really calm at the moment and uh yeah we just know that once we get our, ourselves right we we start to plug away a couple of casualties over the re- weekend which you've managed extraordinarily I was talking to jesse jenkins over here on crutches um you know some shuffling around and that sort of thing too is part of this now you're winning it for the rest of the boys that can't be out there? I might go to you, Josh. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, losing those quality players isn't the easiest thing to deal with, but um, that next man up mentality is just what us Hornets like to live off, and we've got boys playing out of positions and busting their ass out, so it's just awesome to see them doing a job and honestly being some of our better players out there in that, um, in that position too. Well, i got one more question. You'll play the Suns in the grand final, and I don't know if you've heard, but there was a suspension on the field at the end there. Uh, Pierce is out for the next two matches. Don't have the details yet on what happened there, but they still got across the line with five players on the field, so they are a force to be reckoned with. Do you have much experience playing the Suns, guys, and what are you expecting? Yeah, look, they're, they're a classy outfit. They've been building for the past three, four years. They're fit, they're fast, and uh, we're just going to have to match them in the midfield, and if we don't, well, it'll be probably a repeat of last year's grand final for us, so we'll be ready to go. An honest approach there. Jack, Josh, thank you so much and good luck in the final. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza chicken salt chips step up to the podium my friend because you have smashed it smash it door dash it the roost is calling chicken is the king the new burger range from red rooster it's in all of us A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down, they just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website.
And welcome back to the Championships presented by Inferno. And we've got a grand final on our hands here. I'm Gav Rose and I'm joined by Des Fogarty for the grand final of the Women's 20s, Des. Yeah, here we go. The first of the big games on the, uh, the main stadium field. And it is the Southwest Queensland Swans playing against the University of Queensland Rebels. Swans with the ball first and that's an absolute cracking start. It's... Uh, Carla Nobbs has thrown an absolute tremendous pass right to left over the top for the uh, the finish. She's created the four on three off the ML play, the middle link play, middle middle peel, and finished off nicely by Laura Fry out there who just had to catch and put down under pressure. Really great start for the Swans. And we've seen that on numerous occasions, tries off those first set of six, those plays that the, the teams work on at training. And, and both teams coming into this game after tough semi-finals with the Swans beating the Suns 6-5. And then we had the UQ Rebels beating the CQ Bulls 4-3. As we return to the action here, we've got an all-Queensland affair. Skipping outside here, she's through. Touch has been called. Oof. So no way through there for Evie Clarkson. Lily Sisten at full stretch. Yeah, we'll see the replay here. Out she goes. Yep, she caught the, got the touch and uh, no complaints there from the CQ Bulls. Oh, and there's, it looked like a hard touch from where I am, but maybe not. As we return to the play and we see here the, the Swans working their way up the field, they're going to recycle the ball out and that's nice um, enterprising play as we come up to the last touch. Skipping out. Play on. Oh, she's right in the action there, Laura Fry. The first couple of minutes, getting seeing plenty of ball, already scored a try. And and UQ Rebels, they're going to drive the ball up the field. Because the ball finished near their box, Des, it made it quite easily for them to get fresh legs on. We're only two touches in. Yeah, straight into the action now for Rani Hagen at half. She's the big star of this team. And then just a little miscommunication. Player outside there, that was uh, Natalia Hickling coming in on the switch. Yeah, um, and Rani Hagen, he spoke of, she's just electrifying. She's so fast. like. And it's a perfect perfect condition today in Coffs Harbour for these finals. It's, a, it's quite warm out there, uh, as we'd expect at this time of year. So these players are going to have to be fit and, and, and going to be fast as this game progresses. And we see Swans having a little trouble... Uh, getting towards halfway, and, and that's a better run then. Yeah, and again, Carla Nobbs. So she's had a really good start to this game as well, Des. Yeah, and uh, just a, a not square roll ball, but the. Uh, okay, I'll let them get away with the actual tap, or maybe it was a forward pass, so there was a tap. Yeah, play on. Play on, Ref, let, and let that's good. Play. We want free flowing, especially in these under 20s divisions, yeah, Des. Absolutely. So it, it's like they're playing in the backyard. They just want to play. They've obviously got their structures sorted, but uh, as we go here and skip out on the left, and uh, Ref's going to just play the touch. So Swans will get the ball on the on the seven metre line there. Good touch there again by Nobbs. And Swans, they're getting the ball. That they'll go forward first, and as we see a lot of this game, oh, oh she's great nice hand to hang on to it. <laughs> Great hands and saved her team from line defending for a set of six there, Des. Yeah, and they're trying to get the go forward first. They have got it the way across. They do, they're already on the fifth touch. Not going to be able to earn a penalty, but they uh, the only reason they're, they've even made it as far as halfway is because of those hands. Oh, it was Cushy. Great hands there. And they got to halfway, but that's definitely better than uh, line defence for a set of six. We see a shift here from, from left to right on your screen. Just couldn't get that last pass away. Yeah, Laura Fry defended really well there. And here we see that... Looks like they might have got back in the action here. This is Hickling. Hickling, and another one to watch. And to get the final, you've, you've obviously got a, a, a great team. You've got players all over the park, from, from wing link to middle, and, and all the players coming on, on each time. It's, uh, it's always a team effort when you get to the grand final. See, they're caught from acting half, so Swans will get the ball again on their seven, and they'll be looking for a, a better set this time coming out of their own half. As the ref's called play on here. One of those ones that could have gone either way, but he's just said play on. Let's keep continuing. And she's yeah. just got caught up in the rush there. Swans haven't got much rhythm here these last couple of sets. They started really, really well. They haven't got their rhythm back. And they're quite strong in the touch, UQ Rebels. So it's a little bit unsettling. Oh, she a footwork. beautiful step there. 
from the Swans. It was number 11, oh. Indiana, Ke Indiana Kelly. But she went one way, came back the other way, and now we see UQ Rebels are, are onto the ball and, and they march it up the field. They're straight into their processes. And again, because it was near their box, we're two touches in, fresh legs are on the field. Here they go, working up the field. They're happy to go between the two of them. And we see there, Hagen skipped a bit of oh, a touch again. Oh, 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 that was close. Kelly claiming the tag. Kelly or Bakiri? And we're looking there. Bikiri. Hagen thought she was away. Millie Evans. But has Millie made Evans. The tag. Yeah, she's made the touch there, and so it's a it's a changeover in our game. Acting half gets caught, and it's a it's a changeover to the other team. And and you're right, Des. They're just really struggling in this part of the field, and, and definitely UQ Rebels are, are winning that midfield battle. And it's with the speed and, and also the force at which they're making the touches. See another great touch there. Yeah, and it's those first three three tags. They're really putting a high high press and getting a lot of pressure onto the Swans. They're not getting clean roll balls, and it means that. They're on the back foot. They're having to go from a standing start when the pass comes to them on the next drive, and they're just being trapped in their own half. So they have the lead 1-0, but they really need to uh, to shake loose yes, of we what see the Rebels there. are doing to them at the moment. And that's a great diver. He's ruled the touch there. Great defence as well. Looked like Isabel and Lorraine was, was going to be in there for a little pass from Rani Hagen. And here goes Hagen. A late switch, but well defended there. Yep, and the Swans... Hopefully, for their sake, they can get into a rhythm. The ball movement is better. They've got go forward, but then they're struggling. They're running into each other in the in and out of the box. And as you see, just as they're trying to get out of their half, we're going to throw down to Jackie for a bit of an update at the start of this game. We're about six minutes in. Over to you, Jack. The UQ Rebels are not at all frazzled in their own box. You can see here they're still confident in their, in their defence. And right behind me here, you would have just seen on your screens, uh, just trusting in their speed on the ball. The words from the box are pretty simple. It's gas, gas, and then heads up footy. <laughs> so those two little things. Back to you, Gab. Thanks, Jack. And just in the background where you are, we see an injury to, her, to number eight from the Swans, Ella Searston. So let's hope she's okay. There's a player from the other team. We've got great sportsmanship in our, our game, Des, and you saw there the number 33, uh, which is Imogen Murphy. She was straight over to check on uh, Searston from the Swans, but she's up and actually jogging to the sideline, so I'm going to say we're going to give her the thum thumbs up. Yep, Jack's giving me the thumbs up from down in the sideline. He's in perfect view there, so it's great to see she'll be back in the action shortly as we turn live to the action as the UQ Rebels, and that break might have been what they needed. Look at here, they're driving up the field here. Great metres, Des. Yeah, they got uh, they took the opportunity while the ball was dead to, to sub all six players, so they got six fresh players on. They don't have to run a box set. They can... Uh, be as expansive or as direct as they would like to be. Another good touch there by Carla Nobbs. We saw yeah. Evie Clarkson there. She just skipped across the field and, and turned a late switch back in. But Carla Nobbs up to her eyeballs in this game already in attack and defence. So let's see if the Swans here, that looked a little bit better, but they're just up to the challenge at the moment. I know they're behind on the scoreboard, UQ Rebels, but they're definitely winning that midfield battle half, just over halfway through this first half, Des. Yeah, I'll be... If I'm the Swans coach, I'm asking them to move the ball a little bit more. So that time, one of their players stayed on the field to drive forward and then give that switch to one of the sweeping players onto the field. But uh, oh. Oh, We see here a runaway try. That's going to be play on, and it was simple as you like. And we've got number 88, Natalie Hickling. She has raced down the side and a beautiful smile on her face. So I think she got the ball there from uh, Sini... Yeah, too. So you look here, there wasn't a lot on. We see a player there from Swans go down, so it became a two-on-one situation. She won't score any easier than the grand final, Des. No, I wouldn't think so. It was just... Uh, maybe Clarkson just got the ball into a really easy <laughs> spot. Yeah, nice, Sally. Good uh, post-try celebration. So on the athlete scoreboard, Des, we're one all, and that kind of came from nothing, but it's probably that midfield defence where that's where that try came from. Yeah, and, and it's 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 what I call the box three. The, the, you've got three types of tries that, that you score, and box three is uh, the type that comes from somebody falling over uh, or intercepts or something that's pretty much out of everybody's control, really. And they've Although gone back time. down to this well, and she's, she's made the break down the side. She's got Rani Hagen inside, back outside. Oh, it's a, uh, forward, it a pass. forward pass. 
I want to play on that right wing at the minute. There's plenty of tries this <laughs> afternoon being scored down there. and uh, It's not the scoring side usually. No, and it's looking very... It's looking simple, but we see a beautiful pass back in. Yeah, and I think the they've caught that Hagen. last one forward. Yep. Hagen back to the winger there. She was nearly in Imogen Murphy. Referee in perfect position for that one. Yeah, but it was enterprising play again, and it was just that eyes-up footy that we, we love in all ages. But you, you definitely see it a lot in these younger age groups. So we're a couple of minutes shy of half time. The athlete scoreboard's one all. Swans will need to, to you know get this part of the field right. Uh, as we see, there's just a little bit of confusion again. But I'm sure their coaches, very experienced coaches, they'll be getting to them, get them to the halftime. Oh, as so we see a run down there. And there's two touches left up their sleeve here. As Swans are coming in, now we're on the last touch. So we'll see what they can do here, Swans. There won't be much on it because it's a static start, last touch. And Nobbs takes about three steps. Gets tagged, turns the ball over. So really not much that could have happened there. And it must be hot out there. I just see from Jack that the Swans have actually got, when they come to the, the sub box, they've actually got ice packs uh, yeah. around, their, around their foreheads or around their necks. We turn to the action here, speaking of the Swans, and looking for a double there. Up touch easily, Laura Fry. She's now on the wing closest to us. So, yeah, the ice packs, and that's a good re recovery technique, trying to bring their core body temperature down and, and give them a bit more chance at recovery before they get back out onto the, onto the field. Indiana Kelly now with the ball just... Controlling play a little bit. They bring it back across to this side. They try a little bit of a punish play. They're a little bit far out to run that one effectively. They do. They are. They are a very young side. This Swans group. Uh, and Kelly just uh, drops that one. Yeah, couldn't get. Couldn't reel that pass in, and and the Rebels here. But this is better defence from the Swans. You can see them here on your screen. They're really pushing up as we see a. A couple uh, of them yeah. got entangled with each Tangled other. But there as we see a break Hagen. here. She's through. Is it Hagen or is it Hickling? No, it's Hickling. She's looking for support. She had to wait for support. And there we see Isabel Narain. She nearly scored earlier and now she's in for her first try for the grand final. Takes the lead now to the UQ Rebels on the athlete scoreboard. UQ Rebels 2. South Queensland, West Queensland Swans 1. That Beautiful is, run. That it's that is same really area just, of the field, Des. Yeah, really just heads up footy, this one. That's what we were talking about before. The, the heads up to see you've got two defenders making the touch. There's a bit of an opportunity to just explode past them, and Hickling has taken it. Yeah, and we know the speed that this UQ Rebels team has. So, uh, Rani Hagen can apparently run the 100 metres in a time of 12.05, Des. That doesn't surprise me whatsoever, having seen her run with a footy in her hand. I yeah. don't know that there's many players out there or many athletes out there with uh, who are sprinters who can run the similar sort of time that uh, would be able to do it with a footy in their hand. And I was talking with, as we see the action here, but I was talking with Scott yesterday. Back in the day, there used to be sprint races at these tournaments yep. at the back end, and uh, they don't do them anymore. But if they were on this year, I, I venture, I guess, Rani Hagen would be right up in contention in that race. Yeah, we've been doing them down in our Junior State Cups as well. We didn't didn't run the sprints this year. We ran something different, just a little bit of a passing accuracy kind of thing. But, yeah, a little bit of novelty just to, to break it up a little bit through the day and, and, you know, give some opportunities to get the juniors involved. Yeah, as we see racing up through here, the UQ Rebels step off the right. We've got an overlap here. Here we go out to the wing. No, but well covered there by the Swans. Yeah, the ball was touched in flight there too, so they've got a full set of six here now. Yeah, so Ruby Cannon, she didn't panic there. She uh, she heard the ref's call and, and didn't throw the speculator back inside. As we see a little punish play out here, and oh, beautiful hands there. Got and Great tag. Equally as good defence there. That was Sophie, Sophie Brennan. Brennan. She saved. No, oh. no, they've ruled the try. Maybe I she thought was in offside, live but it was is extremely close, and we'll see on the door, on the replay here. Little quickie, a punish play out there. Great hands. Brennan's claiming the touch. She's clearly onside, but okay, referee's there. Yeah, so we've got Piatto scored the third try for the UQ Rebels, so we are 3-1, about 90 seconds before half time. So they really want to try and get one back here, uh, the Swans. Yeah, and they've uh, they started really, really strong since then. They've kind of broken down a little bit. They haven't been able to get a rhythm. No, they're pointing here. They know they know what they want to do, but. And that's a beautiful oh. pass, but an equally good touch there by uh, Kiara Denny. 
it looked like she was slicing yeah, through. The, the hand came through. out and, and off she went. We'll see on the replay here, Des. Yeah, the pass from Searston. There's the two Searstons in this game. Yeah, good touch from Kiara Denny. And they, they're really good coming out of their box now. They've really found their feet, haven't they, the Rebels? They're coming on at speed. And it could just be that little bit more experience at this point in time, Des. It's uh, seeing them lead on the scoreboard. As we look out there and we see... Oh, great touch. Good it was touch. none other than Rani Hagen, the lady we were speaking of just earlier about her speed. She just... She floats across yeah. the ground, doesn't she? It's beautiful to watch. And we'll, we'll probably have about one set left here before half time. And uh, they're still pushing up in defence, the, the Rebels and the Swans. They'll want to get a finish this set with a good set coming off their line. They don't want to give the, the Rebels an opportunity just to have half time. And you can see, I mean, that's good interplay there at the back end of it, but you're still on your own 10 metre line. Oh, so we oh, see an opportunity ooh. here. She was through the gap there. Couldn't quite hold on to it. But that was nearly something out of nothing. But you're yeah. right, there's a few more passes interchanged there, and it was it was looking likely. Little skip out there by Nobbs again. And unfortunately, couldn't hold on to it, Van Herden. But as we go to the halftime break in this uh, Women's 20 Grand Final, we have the UQ Rebels 3 uh, beating the SWQ Swans 1. And we'll be back after the break in the championships presented by Inferno. In When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. And welcome back to the championships presented by Inferno. We've got a great game on our hands here in the grand final of the, the women's 20. And I'm joined here by Des Fogarty. And uh, how did you see that first half, Des? Yeah, the, uh, the, the Swans started really, really well. And the Rebels kind of got taken aback by that, that score on the first set. But after that, they really worked their way into this game. And just by sustained pressure... Uh, we're able to create a couple of opportunities to get uh, to get some tries on the board, and they they're a, a more experienced side. It's still a very young team, but uh, they're more experienced than this Swans group. So working the way in, and the Swans players are going to learn a lot of lessons out of this. Oh, and there was a long-range dive there, but there again it was Nobbs uh, working with Ellis Easton there, and. Uh 
interesting fun fact that uh, Ella and Lily Searson are actually the nieces of uh, one of the greatest coaches in our game and commentators here, Carly Bank. So they've got nobody better to tell, help them in their, their game as they develop in the coming years. So, And in a moment we're going to throw down to Jack Rogers as we see dummy half court there and, and get some information from the halftime boxers. Over to you, Jack. Well, thanks, Gab. I was in the halftime box of the Swans just now, and uh, Coach Abby Prendergast, she's still very optimistic about the Swans' chances, and uh, rightly so. They've got a good game plan to get back into things here. Uh, they think that their sort of middle-middle uh, at the start of the set is being red, so they're going to look for a double latch coming into their box set. That's what you should be looking out for. And uh, while they look a little out on their feet at the moment, I think uh, they're going to rally Oof. and don't count them out yet. As we return back to the action, we see Rani Hagen. She just slices through them like bread to butter. And we see a great try there. Isabella Narain takes a score out on the athlete scoreboard. 4-1 in favour of the Rebels. Des, run us through Rani Hagen there. Hagen just too fast. Big left foot step. She's got really good body shape. Left foot step and then pace. And she's able to have plenty of time to link up with Narain to, uh, to finish it off. But for the Swans... Yeah, I need, them, I need them going forward first. It's, we've, we've spoken about it before, but they've got good ball skills. They need to move the ball around a little bit more, and that'll free up a bit of space for them. I see we see knobs there. So we'll look out for that double latch that, that Jack was speaking about. But uh, you're right, Des, they've, they've got to go forward because this UQ Rebels that we've seen in the under-20s and the Women's Open, they just yeah. continue to push forward in defence. And, and that's really where they're winning these battles. And then they've got so much strike power when they come down to the line uh, that it's hard to stop. And the Swans really doing a good job in this set defensively of getting up and applying the same sort of pressure that Rebels have been applying to them. But the pace of Evie Clarkson and then just a really nice pass out to find Takarei, who's able to, uh, to, to sort of coast over the line in the end. The pace of Evie Clarkson here is just too much for them. Again, they're just skipping on the outside. They're beautiful soft hands, and, and the gap opened up. She looked to pass, and then you're right, Takarei, just an easy run to the line there. So now we see the score 5-1. It's going to be hard to claw back here. So, But as we know, plenty of tries on offer, always in under-20 women's. They've got to get some more um, time down here at the uh, their attacking end of the field. So let's see where they can come up on this set after conceding points. Uh, they'll be hoping for to claw the scoreboard back, but it's not going to help there. Again, we've seen a forward forward pass off the ruck and straight onto the ball of the UQ Rebels. Yeah, they've really got their tails up now. Just... It's it's everything's being done crisp. There's uh, good control. Hagen now just coasting. Doesn't need this. She's not under any pressure, so she just cruises across, offloads it. No, and they they don't panic, do they? No. So they just seem to have time. So this they're running fast, but they've just got time with ball in hands to to see where the little opening is. As we see here again, skipping out to the outside, play on, play back inside. And a oh, beautiful great tag. touch. Well done. We'll that see was the well winger red. there. Is that Charlie's Walker? That was a beautiful touch because I thought it was going to be another try. We'll see. This will look great on the replay here. We've got Grace Jacobson. Skips back inside. Back to Takaray again. She was going for a double. That's Sophie Brennan. Sophie Brennan. Well done to you there. As we see one of the Swans players, she's laid out on her back there. She is in her team's box. Referees are just going to have a small conversation to see what's happened there and they're, they're going to get a penalty here yeah forceful in the touch and they have been quite strong in the touch uh rebels we'll try and get an update on who that is and and that they're okay but uh yeah they're, they're very physical they've been getting away with it they're strong in the touch as we see again here the the swans work their way up the field they're going to get a couple of touches attacking the line this might be a really good opportunity for the swans to get back into a rhythm a starting from halfway with a penalty, it's just like going from a tap-off, getting into a tap-off move, but not too many options there. And, uh, and just down in the Swans' box, it was Ella Searson that was um, bundled over the sideline in the box, but she's back up and she'll be back in the action in the next couple of minutes, Des, so that's yeah, good to absolutely. see as well. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, Rebels now just going to stroll down onto this side, a loose 
attempt at the catch there from Graham. And the ball goes to ground. So the Swans will have short field. Yeah, they're, they're right on halfway here as we see a, a good run from try scorer Laura Fry. And she's got speed to burn as well out there on that left wing for the Swans. And they're up on the seven metre line there. Skipping out near the referee and they'll get six to go here. So that's enterprising. Yeah, no, that, that's, uh, that's positive for them. Good little pick up and, uh, and run. And there's still ten minutes on the clock. So there is time but they... They need to be next to score, but we've seen infringement in the roll through the referee indicating ball didn't go through the legs. And so on the seven-metre line, UQ Rebels will, will get the ball back. And they're going straight up to start with, forward first. Well, they get a couple of subs off out the back, and now we'll see a shift. And it's yep. just there's, they're nice and wide and spread, and so it's spreading the defence, so it's making it hard for them to rush up and get them. And now they little pop back inside. Fresh players are on the field. And they've still got a couple of touches up their sleeve here. Yeah, good lessons here. Forward first and then move the ball. Good use of the ball to uh, to get it across. And she's offside. That's going to be play on. Yeah. And that's just like shelling peas for, for Rani Hagen there. And we see a try. Looks like it might be Imogen Murphy. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Yep. But, uh, but she just runs straight at the offside player who didn't have time to retreat. So the referee correctly called play on. And she hits back a beautiful hole there, Imogen Murphy. And now we see the athlete scoreboard in favour of the Rebels, six tries to one. And now this task with about nine minutes to go is... Uh, Tough. It might be insurmountable. <laughs> so we won't write them off yet because there is, as we said, nine minutes and you never know what can happen in our sport of touch. But uh, they really need to make things happen very quickly, Des. Yeah, and for a young team, it's it's very hard to to adjust your brain into that that real tough mentality to go, no, let, we're just going to keep going. And especially if you haven't been on the end of, uh, of too many losses in a grand final of a tournament like this one, you've usually had been pretty successful week well, all through the week. It's tough to, to get your head into that space to go, oh, what do I do now? Yeah, and Charlize Walker just tried to make her way through and said that she's drawn a penalty here, so... And no touch, so that's good work there by Walker. And as she runs off the field and and gets some of their strike power on here, we've got Ellie Croker coming into the action out here on the left link. So they've still got about four touches up their sleeve, trying to draw the Rebels' defence out. You see a nice little pass over the top. Yep. That's the right option. Hadn't that's thrown one out to the wing for a while, and so uh, those wingers... Defending from the Rebels might have been starting to creep their way inside. That might get yeah, turned that was over. Forward. That's a shame. And we see a little injury here again. And as we said, it it is hot and they've played plenty of games over the last three days. So she's back up again. As we see UQ Rebels just straight back in. It's it's just like clockwork. They just doesn't matter who's coming on, which pod is coming into the field. They just do the same. See a little trick play down the wing here. Oh, and look at that. Oof. Speaking of speed, who we've got there? She's it looks like Evie Clarkson. The, Evie Clarkson has set the grass on fire there. <laughs> that was, she was lightning fast. <laughs> that was just... So they looked like they were coming out to the open side. Little trick play. She stepped onto the field, shifted it back, right to left, and Evie Clarkson, I would say, definitely sealing this game. Beautiful. Lovely running style right down the sideline. 7-1, UQ Rebels. Yeah, really good, complete performance so far. It's uh, You can't say that they haven't deserved it. Swans, though, they all want to get another one before the game wraps up. So we see a good little out ball there to, to Nobbs. And again, she's coming out wide, trying to skip outside her player. And just as we have a break in play there, UQ Rebels will uh, get their hands on the ball and be driving it up. We're going to go down to Jack Rogers for an update in this grand final. Over to you, Jack. Hey, guys. I've just been in the Swans box and they're keeping their heads held high. They've done a great job to get to this final. They've just talked about how hard it is to face the pace of this UQ Rebels team. We just saw a runaway try for the seventh on the board. And, yeah, it's just a pace thing now. You wonder what would have happened if these two teams clashed on day one in this competition. Obviously, fatigue is starting to set in for the Swans now. But the Rebels, they're running away with things here. Yeah, and as you said, it's just their pace in attack and defence. 
uh, that we're seeing, and they're going to be the victors here in this game with about five or six minutes to go. They're going to line defend here, so Swans are going to get a few more opportunities, and uh, and it might have been interesting if we'd seen them even in wet conditions because it is it's perfect conditions for speed, and UQ Rebels have got it all across the park. So as we see some enterprising play here, they're looking for the little inside play, but again, well defended. So not only are they attacking well, uh, Des. Their defence is excellent as well, as you'd expect from for the champions. Yeah, they've they've got really good shape. They're well coached. They've been uh, they've got themselves into good shape all the way across the park, whether it's uh, it's in the midfield or on their own defensive line. Indiana Kelly and er a a penalty and a repeat set here. But the Swans don't seem to have too many. Bullets left in their arsenal. Kelly's gone for a little bit of a sweep and a, a dive at the line. They do look very tired. As I said earlier, they're, they're a very young team. Um, how resilient they can be as the ball comes out. And well defended. Good shape again out on that side. There was that little bit of space to, uh, to have a crack at. Oh, and they've got a forward pass there off the ruck. So they're going to get another opportunity here. So they'll be looking to finish this game strong and get another couple of tries on the board. But, yeah, that speed in attack and defence. So you can feel like you've beaten your player. And then a couple of steps later, they're right on top of you. So And they're still pressing out here, Rebels. They're trying to get out beyond that seven-metre line. So we'll see what they can throw at them here, the Swans. They'll have some trick plays up their sleeve as they get the touch on the seven there. Little out play trying to catch the offside player and they've just got caught up again and that might be Ellis's and she's yeah. been in the been in the wars a little bit this second half but game of tough, league going on yeah there. very tough she's back up and and straight back into it at acting half there as we see an incorrect roll ball and and that's just fatigue Des. yeah it's uh it's tough it's hard going out there for uh, for the swans at the moment they're doing everything they can but and they there's another forward out. pass. And it's hard also for the UQ Rebels because they know they've got this grand final sewn up. They, they still want to keep playing. And they've given away a couple of penalties the last few minutes, but they, their coaches won't be too concerned. When you're winning your grand final, 7-1 with about three minutes to go, you're, you're a pretty happy coaching box over there, Des. Yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, well, I would, I'd imagine it doesn't get any better. As we see Nobs with little fly playing. There's an opportunity here. And we see here, beautiful pass, go. and Laura Fry's going to get a double, is she? The touch has been called. The ref pay on the sideline, they're paying it. Laura Fry, congratulations, well you've got a double in a grand final. So that's what we wanted to see from the Swans at the back end of this game. It's just that little fly play and ball moving that you were talking about, Des. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, you can see it's, it's perfect conditions for footy. It's uh, So throw the ball around, little dummy, just to force the winger to peel out. And uh, that pass from Emma Bell was uh, was right on the money. Yeah, Head she did not a really good it. job, didn't yeah. she, Bell? Could have gone herself, but she went the gap, engaged that wing defender, and then and then offloaded to Fry. So well done there, Swans. As we see, a good touch again there from the, the Swans link. Yep. It's only about two minutes here. They'll they'll want to get a stop there as we see Bell take the touch on the short side sweep play. And another great diving touch, Des. Yeah, good tag from Emma Bell. But again, the Swans actually had really good shape there defensively. So they were, even though it's a it's a big dive by the uh, the smaller player on the on the taller one, they had good shape. Everything was under control. As they come here, they're working to their box. They'll probably get one or two. This might be the last. I might get one more time with the ball here. Yep. As we see, their Swans. It's last touch. As she's taking off there, Kaushi. And she's through, oh, she's Kaushi. Through. She's just looking for some support play. And they've finished this game with a flurry of tries. That might have been Charlize Walker. The referee's awarded the try. We'll, we'll have a look on the replay in a minute. But that just was all too easy. Yeah, she just sort of ran a really good angle coming out, of, uh, coming out from half here. Real hard angle wide. Just catches the two players flat-footed. And uh, Grace Jacobson... Plays herself out to try to get the uh, the last second touch. The Swans have added a little bit of layer of respectability to the scoreline here in the last uh, last couple of minutes. Seven threes are a well and truly respectable scoreline. 
looks a lot better than 7-1. It sure does, and it's great to see the Swans finishing with a couple of tries as we see, and again, some good defence on their own line. So yeah. this will probably be the last set we see for this grand final in the women's 20s, and uh, UQ Rebels are going to be well-deserved winners. We see a little late switch there. Drop it back in. There's an overlap out here, but well defended there by Sophie Brennan. So they're finishing strong here, the Swans. They might get time for one or two more plays. Brendan's been good for uh, for the Swans on the wing. So a good effort. We'll see these Swans players a lot over the next few years. They're uh, like I said, they're they're pretty young. They've got plenty of uh, plenty of touch footy in and left. As we see, a well deserved. <laughs> well, there's now they're on the ground at the uh, UQ Rebels. Congratulations, you are champions for the women's twenties in the 2004 the championships presented by Inferno. So well done to all the players and coaches. And we'll be back after a short break to wrap up the action for this women's twenties grand final. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Here on the touchline with the victorious UQ Rebels team, Rani and Evie with me. What a phenomenal game uh, we've had there. 7-3, the final scoreline. And, well, you looked set from the get-go. It was a good start. I might pass to you, Rani, to talk about what got you off to such a flying start. Yeah, I think just our message through the whole game was just have intensity the whole game and, like, let's not drop, let's stay up, stay high. And I think during that game we really showed that our intensity was high so we could play the best footy that we could out there. So that's what I well done, Rani. And you've got quite an extensive coaching staff here as well. Uh, Evie, talk to us a little bit about how that sort of inspires you. And I guess, what does a normal training session look like for you, Q? Because it looks pretty fast-paced out on the field. Um, yeah, well, our coaching staff are amazing. Like, I feel like without them, obviously, we wouldn't have just got the results that we just got then. Um, our training sessions, I mean, they're... They're, they're fun but um, yeah not only do the coaches make us great players but they also make us great people and I think we're all very grateful for that well congratulations on the final I do have one question though a foot race between the entire UQ Rebels lineup who takes the cake uh, I reckon Saini Saini or Natalia Saini Honest. from dummy half from the wing 100% no I'm not going to looked like anyone could have won it out there Rani actually did uh, volunteer to run 100 metres after the race. Probably don't have time for that on the coverage today, but 
in the future we'll see plenty more flashes of pace. So congratulations, girls. Enjoy the victory. Thank you. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it! Door dash it! Rooster's calling. Chicken is the key. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. The craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free, to feel alive, but most of all, to feel new again. Damn, down, they just think they are. Never know, wanna be gangster, trying to play hard. Damn, down, they just think they are. Never know, wanna be gangster, trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website.
Welcome back to Coffs Harbour CEX International Stadium for yet another grand final here. It is the men's 20s. The South Queensland Sharks will be taking on the Sydney Mets. Jack Rogers here and back in the commentary box with Carly Banks. You've had a busy morning, Carly, and it's about to get busier because these two teams, well... This should be a clash of the titans. Yeah, this is a very, very competitive division, um, working all the way t to the um, Inferno um, Championships final. And, uh, yeah, looking looking forward to uh, to this one. Um, the Sharks are in stellar form in their semi-final and also the Mets. So, yeah, it should be an epic clash. Well, the Sharks, they'll have a first stab at the line here early and they'll get top bins. Kaya Taker. Last year, I really enjoyed commentating Lennox Taker and now brother Kaya as well in there as well, both involved in the play. Yeah, yeah, they were... Um their form was irresistible in the semi-final against um, Hornets this morning, and um, they still have a have an amazing combination. The little follow play, bang, and Lennox gets it down. Fantastic work from Kaya though, and uh, they're off to a off to a flyer. One nil, the Sharks, and of course the Mets team. Well, uh, equally full of juggernaut touch football players. Anyone's game here on the main stadium. Sharks with the early advantage. Love that defensive setup. They know what they're doing here in defensive Sharks, but the Mets are through. Can they find a spare player? They can, and the ball is down. That's beautiful work just to hold off there, Carly, and uh, wait for support. Yeah, fantastic work there from Australian under-18 uh, youth representative John Paul Catalano. Um, he slides through from Akinhoff, runs that really nice across-the-face angle, was patient, was running out of out of real estate there, but managed to find Horatio Edwards, and we are one all locked up here. Uh, it's probably going to be a try fest in this game just based on the attacking resumes of these two teams. See what they can do here. Xavier RC with the ball. Jai Charlton as well a force to be reckoned with in this side. Yeah, he, um, he's an absolute superstar, Joy Charlton. Um, you know, when he puts his foot down and, and says go, um, you know, the game goes up another level. So, yeah, let's keep our eye on him for the duration of this one. Penalty blown for offside there, so really good rucking from the Mets. They work they up their way up through the middle of the park now. A little buddy play to kick things off here, so kind of smart. It is a war of attrition out there in the heat. I was just down on the touchline for three games in a row. Using the wingers early on in the tackle count sounds like a smart thing to be doing. Yeah, now a repeat set here um, for the Mets. Let's see what they do um, and how patient they can be with the footy in hand. Getting a couple of fresh legs on. Not a lot of time for that. Yeah, they sent JP out again here, and um, he's obviously the chief uh, playmaker in this team, and, uh, yeah, I think uh, we'll get a shot for him very soon. Uh, unfortunately, not a correct play the ball, and the referees, um, our 20s haven't um, sort of been on um, the stadium field much, so so um, in both grand finals, sort of we see the you know the players sort of their fundamentals have been picked up a lot more by the higher grade referees, and they're really sort of yeah needing to be very very good in their one percenters. Coming through now, Carter Skinner, Jai Charlton, left to right, almost plucked out of the air from the Mets, but offside is the call. So six more to come, and yeah, it has to be said. This Sharks lineup, they'll fancy themselves to go in again here. Yeah, but great channel there, defence from um, Vavroel. He's um, he's a he's one to keep an eye on. He's a he's a very sharp customer. Wally, he wants the ball back, nice and quick here. And, uh, they will get it. So the Mets off their own line, looking sharp, and they'll work towards their box. Let's see what they can do here. Maybe a little latch play. Here they come, sweeping on the tail end of this set. They want a good strike here. Fifth and last. Can he work his way through the line? He's got pace to boot. They've got space on the left edge. Going all the way. No touch made. Off the back of their box. And that's a beautiful try and a beautiful celebration too, I might add. Yeah, fantastic piece of play. Um, the Mets really had a bit of a clunky start there, but then they got that. Um, they got to their latch really, really sh sharply. And then, um, then it was a pick up and go from uh, Horatio Edwards. He's featured prominently early and he's been able to get that, uh, get that ball away and go and gets this ball down and uh, Sydney Mets 2-1 up. Close to the line now. It's Kaya Take up. That name we're going to keep hearing all day. Back on the inside there to Kaya Murray. Picking up from half Taker. Let's see what he can do. Six more to come. So a good result there for the Sharks. 
Good defence though as well. Just getting up and in the face of the attack. Oh, there's some brotherly talk out there. They're plotting and planning. Yeah. And, theme, uh, the, uh, theme the Jaws music, mate. Absolutely. So will it be Lennox or Kaya that neither of them seem to want to play the ball? They want to be the half. And uh, it's exci an exciting prospect when you've got two brothers who are just so in tune with the game. So they'll reset there. Picking up from half now is Harry McNamara, potentially. No, they sort of recycle the ball here. It'll be taken a taker instead. Oh, they're in trouble. Oh, diving at the line and the ball's down. And just a clinical duo. Yeah, definitely. Um, those at home who are, like, watching and don't watch a lot of touch, um, yeah, just the body position um, that Lennox is able to achieve there. He gets the, you know, the defender in on the inside shoulder and then he breaks to the out and there's just no way in the world the defender was going to get to that in that space. So, um, you know, if you're the... If you're the um, uh, the Mets coach, what you're looking at is you're trying to get the boys well out past the eight metres. I mean, easier said than done because, you know, the Tikas own that seven. So very, very important that, uh, yeah, the Mets, you know, sort of address that fairly quickly. Oh, and has the touch been made? No. Referee says the ball has been grounded. The Mets are over once again. And, yeah, tries just keep on waterfalling over in this 20s grand final. Yeah, JP. Um, he, um, again, Australian under-18 boys representative in 2023. And, um, you know, he's... His maturity and the way that he's grown as a player um, in the last 12 months has been exponential and he's really leading his Mets team um, as well as you possibly can. So, yeah, we've got a cracking grand final on our hands here, Jack. Well, we continue back in play and seemingly never leaving the field is Taker. Has he set up another one here? He no, has. the touch has been called. Oh. And oh. we'll see that on the, the replay momentarily. Looked mighty close. It surely did, but, uh, yeah, referee's in a great position. To adjudicate on that one. And oh, I think he's got his... Oh, <laughs> looked close. Might have got him on the boot, clipped him on the way through. So yep. benefit of the doubt there. 100%. Yeah. And the Mets working towards their box. 3-2 the score. They've got a slight buffer here, but it's not much to work with against this Sharks attack. So... Over the halfway line now. It's fifth and last. Hop, skip, and he's through. Can he find a player? He goes long to the wing, and that's try time. Mark Bashara for the Mets putting the ball down. But, I mean, that's just awesome work from dummy half there, Mets. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic piece of play again. Um, Ladder Levi, he done a magnificent job there um, of picking up and slicing through. Um, yeah, a clean pair of heels. Just watch him get into the in goal and he's just looking around, shopping around and a left to right, find the ever-present winger and yeah, aren't they happy about that one, Mets? Absolutely, Carly. And yeah, had a, could have gone earlier there to the link, but that would have been the incorrect option. And you know what? The Sharks have just fired back. They're going nowhere in this matchup. So 4-3 straight off the back of a set play from the tap. Uh, the athlete scoreboard attendants will be working overtime. Mm. We better take them over some water because um, <laughs> they're going to be uh, in for a, a very long afternoon the way these two teams are playing. So Joy Charlton, the architect there off an ML platform, hits the short runner and, uh, yeah, fantastic comeback there from the Sharks and it's 4-3 to the Mets still. Carly, he had me sold there. I even thought on the <laughs> replay when I'd seen it in live that he was going out the back and it still just went short there. So... Mets now in the seven, working at close range here, trying to snipe a try, and not afraid to swing the ball side to side. They want to spread out this defence, or rather on this occasion, kill the ball in the corner. So off their own line now, the Sharks, they're down by one, just need to get the ball down the other end, and then you know points will start coming. What can they do here? That's a good yeah. driving run. Fantastic. Chase Davis, I think. Yeah, Chase Davis, um, Queensland 15's representative um, in 2023, and he just keeps growing from strength to strength. He's an exceptional young player. We get a penalty there. The number four, Xavier, I see he uh, went in a little aggressively there with the ball in hand, so you can actually give away a penalty touching the opposition too hard when in possession. And that's what we saw there. So the touch, just checking the touch count there, the Mets, because they want to get a good strike here at the end of this set. Watch him go. Look who it is again. Picking up from dummy half. This time, can't quite. Oh, gee. Almost made something or nothing there. 
Yeah, nice piece of play there um, from the Mets, but equally resolute defence there uh, from the Sharkies. And let's see how they go on this get-out set. Ryan Field, the winger there that just stayed in touch, stayed alive. He did the right thing. He's trusting his team's passing game. And he has every reason to. Now, Sharks dishing all the way to their box. Jai Charlton plays the ball. Just an aggressive player when he's driving up the centre of the field. Yeah, and you need to be strong in those uh, roll ball contests. And, um, you know, he definitely puts himself in a um, decent position there. Now, we've seen like a uh, penalty here for throwing the ball away. And we're at about 10 minutes in now. We've got six to go before half time. It's really, really important. And 20s, it's, it's probably the difference between men's open and 20s. It's about staying composed and keeping your head on. And, and in big games, you know, it goes without saying that, you know, those one percenters are really, really important. You don't want to give away piggyback penalties and, you know, allow the other team to have field position like this. Close to the line here, and JP. that's a lovely ball. Goes to ground. JP again involved. Catalano, impressive. And, you know, back there, Carly, on that uh, sort of the thrown away ball, I actually think it slipped out of his hand. I think it, it's hot out there, and I'll tell you what, the players will have sunscreen on, <laughs> maybe a little bit on the hands there. I, I don't think there was any sort of frustration or bad intent. Just sometimes happens, and that's why you've got to put the ball straight down. Jai Charlton here, he uh, gets threads the needle. Tries to get a player through the hole. Offside is the call. So, yeah, they're clearly listening to the referees out there. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, they've listened very well there. And referee um, Freshwater, um, yeah, he's trying to cajole them to get out early and stuff. And, uh, yeah, might be another penalty soon. Oh, here we go. So, it's tense at the line. One try in it. And the offensive team are the ones that need that try to equalise things. Charlton's still on the field. They're playing to the short and the winger up in the channel. Yeah, definitely saved a try then. That was a that was a fantastic piece of dis, uh, of defence there from Frost. Uh, Ryan to make, Field, I think. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, to make that one. Um, that was um, that was that was really well done. Yeah, Ryan Field's been impressive in defence so far. It's a couple of saves now. Can he do it again? Looked like it was on on the short <laughs> side there. So the Sharks, Charlton wants the half position. Oh, no, they're going to keep on going here. They don't need a half. They just want to go straight for the line. Not to beat. All three, the athlete scoreboard. Four minutes left in the first half. All the grand finals today, we fully expect to be close encounters. Here we go, Taker. He's through into the end goal. Can he find a player free? That was actually mighty close considering they were working with about 20 centimetres. Yeah, he was looking at that cut line into the link up um, there with um, with his um, attacking options, but unfortunately couldn't find um, someone for that pass. And, uh, yeah, the Mets are now getting themselves out of trouble and ploughing downfield, and he's got spiders. Nobody wants to touch him. <laughs> um, but here they go. They're going to come in here with their latch, and here come their subs on, and let's see what they do with this back end. They go again. They've been really dangerous from this area, the Mets. They, they like to scoop through. So this is actually new territory for them. Starting static there, and they'll earn themselves an offside penalty. It's about to say six again. Referee calls uh, Xavier Arce offside. So with about three minutes to go in the half, um, it's really, really important, this set of six. Sharks have to do a really good job here. You don't want to let the Mets get up by two close to half time so yeah it'd be interesting set of six here for both teams couldn't help but notice ladder levu out in the middle of the park have just subbed him on and that's a hard touch there so penalty got to be so careful they've really got their strike pot on here now ratio edwards is out there they play the short ball appeals for a forward pass but the referees say all clear and ladder levu Puts over his teammate and a little celebration there. Yeah, the boys were happy with that one, weren't they? Um, and uh, that kicks the Mets out by two now. And, um, yeah, the dump sort of close to that seven-metre line makes it really, really tough for the defenders to get themselves back on side. And a very good decision by the referee. Um, you know, the, the defender tried in vain, but he never made the seven. So there we go, a 5-3 lead to the Mets. So for the first time in the match, a two-point buffer. And the Sharks needing to hit back soon here. They want a bit of a morale boost heading into the second half. Plenty of good takeaways, certainly, in the attacking area of the game. Probably the defence that both teams will be looking to tighten up at the half-time break, but we'll talk about that later because Taker's got the ball, and you know what that means. 
Jaws music, Carly. <laughs> <laughs> so Carter Skinner plays the ball taker, goes back to the left, tries to hit his brother, and they'll earn six more touches. It's uh, always quite the spectacle, the 20s. It's such a fast-paced game. Yeah, definitely. Um, the craft here, though, is sort of on the seven. The Mets have got to get out. They can't allow these guys to keep having multiple strike dumps, you know, in that area. Long ball now, and it's down. And just as you say it, Carly, you let them have enough roll balls in that seven, there's going to be a try eventually, and it's the number 12 there uh, that gets over for his team, Dylan May. Yeah, especially with the sort of variety that Lennox Ticker has in his game. Not only is he good at the static stuff, he can also pass. So, you know, he's a threat all over the field with every single single option that he's got. He's one of the complete, um, one of the most complete young players, um, you know, in the sport in his age. And it's one of those things that, you know, the Mets really just have to get out as far as they can and be as brave as they can. Otherwise, he's just going to keep shelling peas all day long. Absolutely right. As we see the Mets here... Touch on the shoulder, and uh, that was a close call. They really would love to go into this half. Only one down, the Sharks. Mets, of course, they want that two-point buffer. Seconds left on the clock now, so we can expect that this will be probably the last play of the half. And, yeah, that'll be it. Straight to the boxes. A hard contested half so far, Carly. And... Uh, it's all or nothing here for both teams. They're, they're both within inches of this. <laughs> and, uh, we've got a little drum kick there on the, on the broadcast, but it's, uh, yeah, what do you think will happen in the second half here, Carly? Oh, mate, it's anybody's game. 5-4, um, the game's evenly poised, and I uh, can't wait for the second half, Jack. Should be great. Don't go anywhere. Live on the championships, brought to you by Inferno. We'll see you soon. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Grand final action back here at the championships brought to you by Inferno. Jack Rogers in the commentary box here with Carly Banks. Men's 20s action. And the Sydney Mets lead the South Queensland Sharks 5-4. Carly, it should be an exciting second half. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it'll be uh, very interesting to see what happens here, Jack. And uh, Mets with the first use of the footy. Oh, 
and uh, first use and first loss. So Sharks off their own line. Very interesting to see if the halftime talks have changed anything here. Troy Skinner, David Collins, the coaches. Yeah, both very experienced coaches. Troy Skinner um, has, uh, was the Queensland um, Junior Coach of the Year and, and David Conkey Collins um, very famously coached the Penrith Men's Open team to all those successful um, wins in the Vorden Cup um, and uh, one of the most experienced coaches and nicest guys that you'll meet in the game. Now battle between coaches... And of course, more importantly, battle between players on the pitch. Let's see what they can conjure at the tail end of this set. And uh, enterprising play here from the Mets. That's a great box set from them. Can they make anything of it there? No, they'll be pretty happy with the result, though. They've gone the full length of the field on that set of six. Yeah, really, really good effort. This is just going to be end-to-end. -end. Both teams will be sort of just trying to get some ascendancy here early in this first half because, um, you know, it just gets tough. It's really hot, and, and, and it's traditionally this tournament, you know, uh, it's like it goes up an extra five degrees in temperature for finals day here, and uh, everyone just sort of has to lift, and, and, and you've got to get into the grind, and, you know, you're pushing yourself, you know, as much as you possibly can to keep your team in it, and, and, and both these sides will be searching for that, you know, early ascendancy in the half to make life just a a little bit easier. Well, Cade Robson had the ball there in the middle. Oh, oh straight for the line. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> outrageous from Taker. And Z uh, Xavier Arce on the inside just sort of looked at him and said, oh, get over yourself, <laughs> mate. But I'm sure that he's seen that a million times on the training ground. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Kaya Tika, how's oh. his feet? Um, often, I mean, we always wax lyrical about about Lennox but Kaya um, is an outstanding young player who has you know just as much ability as um, as your big brother and uh, yeah really really exciting to watch those two boys play their craft. Oh they're just a thrilling spectacle the takers and there's plenty of other players out there on the pitch too who are making their mark and one of them you just see there on your screen here they go close to the line Horatio Edwards and they're pulling it back. And that's unfortunate. Nice little quarter, quarterback exchange there between the players. Set piece and just um, a little bit unfortunate there not to not to have it pay, uh, pay dirt. But, uh, you know, they'll, they'll keep at it. And, um, yeah, unfortunately, um, yeah, for Sharks, they've conceded a penalty and they've given Mets a chance to, um, yeah, break this deadlock here. Well, they're within striking range early on in the set here. They're going to go out to the left. Let's see. Through the hands, it looks good. Rowali finds the link, and that's a phenomenal try there. 6-5, the score. The Mets lead once more. Yeah, fantastic um, sort of patience there from Mets. They were a little bit unlucky, you know, on the play before, and JP ran out, little sweep of play, nice little catch and pass and a good finish, and the Sydney Mets are out 6-5. Akia on the halfway mark, still plenty of time in this fixture, 11 and a half minutes is all stands between these two teams and grand final victory in the men's 20 division. Let's see what the Sharks can cook up here in, res in response. Great touch, sprinting off his own line. Says, yep, I got back on side, no problemo. And here they go again. Carter Skinner plays the ball. Charlton out the back and just the defence there screaming up off the line just putting so much pressure on this Sharks attack yeah fantastic work from Bashara the winger he read that passive out the back um, like it was child's play and, he, and, he's, and, he's, and he's done a really good job for his team there but now a penalty advancing upfield and then let's see if the Mets can take advantage of this really good field position Lisey Frost just tried to put that ball to the ground ac accidentally clocked a player coming through, so a penalty blown, and the Mets last time they were gifted a penalty close to the line, they took full advantage Let's see what they can do here so, again their strike players, in the centre of the park, Horatio Edwards is there, look at the players on his left and right, that is no coincidence <laughs> <laughs> here they go, Catalano plays out to Edwards yeah, needed a valiant defensive effort there. A little reverse quickie um, got on the outside and nearly caused a real issue there for the Sharks' defence. So John Paul 
Uh, wants to work with Edwards here. John Paul close to the line. That ball is down, and Catalano right now, he's keeping his team uh, right in front here. Yeah, yeah, fantastic work there from JP. He's done really well. He's the master of the quickie. They work between themselves back and forwards, and they got both middles, and then gets to the outside of Davison, does a great job, and, uh, yeah, fantastic uh, work there um, to put the Mets up 7-5. Carly, when you've got that sort of quickie option between Edwards and John Paul Catalano, and then, you know, you look to the left and you see Ladder Levu, who's been picking up from half and burning some of the quickest players in the game. How do you defend against that? We'll have to talk about that in a minute, because speaking of not being able to defend certain plays, the Sharks are straight back down the other end, 6-7. Yeah, fantastic week there, uh, work there from Tika, picking up a little late switch there with Chase Davis, who came through and, and, and scored the try and uh, narrowed that gap to 7-6. So we we'll watch him just pick up and go, and just patience and great presence of mind for young Chase Davis um, to come back on the switch and for the Sharkies to get that 7-6 um, scoreline, just narrow it down by one. I think we've got a lot of footy to be still to be played here, Jack. Fit for tat touch, that's for sure. And one thing's certain, it's that the amount of tries uh, that we're seeing in this match will continue to grow. Bristol uh, Paints' try-scoring leaderboard will be lit up right now. And uh, I'm sure in the players' minds, more important to them, taking that championship home. So yeah. Offside piggyback penalty here. Yeah. Both coaching boxes would probably be thinking, yep, there's a lot of tries being scored, but, you know, if you get a couple of stops, then the whole complexion of the game will change. And, you know, that's why completions are at a premium, not being able to make errors, you know, trying not to make errors as much as you can. But, you know, it's a big thing here for the Sharks to try to get a stop to not allow Mets to score at will because it seems like every single time they come down on this seven, they've come up with points. Well, here they are again. And you know who's out there. JP Catalano at 11 as well. So Catalano picks up from half, skips out to the left. He oh. finds space. And once again, we're going to go through for a try. He's just, I mean, he's the conductor really out there right now. Ryan Field on the end of that try went through the hands of uh, Vaviakilo Rowali. And, yeah, the Mets just keeping their noses in front. Two points is the margin. Yeah, really good good combination there, um, you know, between JP and Rawali. Um, you know, it was very unselfish of him. I felt like Rawali could have almost scored himself, mm. but uh, unselfishly, you know, gave the pass off. And, um, yeah, the Mets have now kicked out by two. So interesting to see if the Sharkies can respond. Well, Sharks crossing out. Red Rooster signage on the field, close to the line. Oh, since he felt that an intercept was on the cards there... Uh, the Mets defender, I think it might have been Mark Bashara. Uh, I'll correct myself, it was Daniel McMahon. And he's just looking for it again. He's looking for an intercept, not for a touch. And it's risky business out there. Maybe he thinks a three-point buffer is the way to go, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's risky, risky business. Let's see if he'll get up in that hole yet again. That's clearly... A directive from the coaching staff. Oh, and a bit of incidental contact there. They're both sort of taking a bit of a yeah. knock. It yeah. looks like actually Tika a funny looks... bone and then to a head. Yeah, Tika looks um, a little wear. bit injured, yeah. Mm. yeah. He's back to his feet, which is great news. That's really good. And, um, yeah, and they'll take him off. And, uh, yeah, hopefully the young man is okay. Kaya Tika. Replaced by his brother. So that's not a bad little substitution to be coming on um, at that point in time. They'll be disappointed. Oh, close to the line, Tika. They'll be disappointed not to be working together, but at the same time, I sense a little slight brotherhood rivalry out there trying to do each other, and it's not exactly a bad thing. Many great sports people, uh, siblings, have uh, you know, gotten better and better by pushing each other. Yeah, they, definitely, but they're great mates as well. Absolutely. They're, uh, Perman, uh, you know, outstanding young men, and, uh, yeah, just a, just a credit to their family. Picking up from half Horatio Edwards. Let's see what he can do. Tries the late switch there on the inside. Can't make it work. It goes to ground. So still just two points in at 8-6 on the athlete scoreboard. And yeah. we're nearing the tail end of this match now. Just six minutes left. So tensions are rife. Yeah, the Sharks have got to stick, you know, in this grind here because um, Mets have done a lot of work. Um, mm. You know, I know David Collins very well and I know how much time he's put into this preparation with the Mets boys. 
and um, I know that they're very fit, that they've worked hard. Um, he's worked hard on the culture of this team. Um, he's taken over. He's, um, he's a great coach of young men, and uh, to see him have a couple of years break and come back into coaching over the last 12 months or so uh, has been really, really good, and, and you know, um, it's great to see you know his team make a grand final. Absolutely, Carly, and so many success stories at the championships this year, which we'll be celebrating all afternoon and evening. Players who, for some, it's their first final. For some, probably up to their 10th. There are so many, maybe even more. So, lots of success stories here to celebrate. Let's see what happens now that JP has his hands on the ball. And I, I sort of said that because I knew he's got the minus touch out there today. Everything he touches turns to gold. And uh, at the moment, he's pushing his team towards those gold, gold medals. Yeah, he is. And, like, uh, showing off his passing game, like, they've, you know, he's been, he's been mostly static all day. and then, But he's capable of throwing long. And he comes out with that beautiful left-to-right long ball. And he kicks his team out by three tries. Sharks really need to respond now. Or, um, yeah, things are going to look, uh, look, look like those medals, as you're saying, could be heading, heading down to Sydney. Bruce Frangier, the try scorer. The Sharks... They need to hit back fast now. Four and a half minutes left on the match clock, so not a lot of time with the three-try deficit. But if there's one team that's going to do it in this 20s division, it's this attacking force, the Sharks. They go for the corner. Can they get there? It's a beautiful dive. The referee's talking. And, uh, yeah, offside. Sounds like a good call. The touch was made, but another player offside in the yeah, mix. Yeah, it's a shame that the Sharks winger didn't look back on the inside and um, and throw the inside ball to the link because um, there was definitely support there and they were a big chance. Oh, oh, oh diving in the Stop line. It. Tika again. I feel like we've seen that on repeat. It's like a broken record out there. And the thing is, is that you can't see it coming. Yeah. He's just so quick to ground. And oh. he's diving from two, three metres out at least. It's definitely the shootout between... JP and Lennox, oh. um, they were teammates in my Australian Under-18 boys team last year in the same pod working together. So I imagine those two boys, it was uh, pretty nice to watch them uh, weave their magic together, but on opposite sides of the halfway line here and turning on an absolute spectacle for the fans. This scintillating matchup is coming to its end shortly, but for the Sharks, they're hoping there's another twist in this tale. Let's see what the Mets can do here. Oof. Offside. So the Mets here having the latest laugh. Got the Sharks there. Hook, line and sink up. Now, they'll try to put this game to bed. You've got to think that a try at this point just about seals the deal. Defence, it might be the most important defensive set of the weekend, of the year for many of these players. The national Championship. And that's not what you want to see. Carter Skinner there sort of getting a bit involved in the intensity of the game. Yeah, probably could have done without that penalty. Very <laughs> inopportune time there and um, yeah, um, very smart play there um, from the Mets just to just to, um, you know, to procure that penalty and um, now be very important just playing out their set making sure that they do all the little things right. You don't want to give Sharkies another opportunity here. Well, well, unfortunately. Well, it's gone to ground. You yeah. know, involved in that little repeat set there again is J.P. Yes. Catalano. But it's a name that we keep on talking about, and he's probably just about earned himself player of the final here, realistically. Um, unbelievable effort. At least that's the way it looks from the commentary box. Yeah, just, it's not over yet. I think Lennox Tika might want to have a say about that. I think so. They're close to the line. Looks like the referee will call touch pass. So it's very unfortunate for the Sharks, but uh, there's still time. It's a minute and a half on the clock, just enough for two tries, but they will need something special to happen in this Absolutely. defensive set. They will. So Mets will be looking to get out of, out of their area as smartly as they can, no as safely and carefully yeah. as they possibly can. Just leave the ball down the other end in the corner. And Ooh, unfortunately, an there's an error. That's and, uh, uh, what we want for entertainment's sake, that's for sure. Definitely. But for the Mets now, they will be forced to defend their own line. Yeah, the fans in the, the stands will be a little bit nervous <laughs> now, and here comes Tika. Oh, oh and he's Tika. dropped it. There we go. He's had, had to a, be the ball game. Barely a blemish on his resume in this game. It's um, not an opportune time for that whatsoever, but 
That's okay. They can still fight here. Almost a foot on the line. Could have almost... Oh, oh that's, that's not going to work. He's passed the ball to a player in front oh, of him. Oh, my and goodness. It's all happening. Yeah. Giving him Easter eggs there. Yeah. That's... Sharks have got to get moving here, though. Like, the clock is against them, so they really just need to move, get down, they get a strike done, and try set. and score now. Yep. They 100%. may not be aware of the time situation. I'm sure that clock's big enough and those coaches should be saying and saying it. They really need to. Oh, close to the line. Yes. Did he make it? Oh, so close. Oh. So he never Tika. does wondering when it's Tika, no, does he? No, 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 no. You just love watching him play. Oh, not even sure if the touch was made there. It wasn't. And that's just beautiful work from the centre of the park defensively there. Uh, Darby Crowley, who oh. saved his team from defending again. They're embracing down there in the Mets box already. They're pretty excited about this, and they're just going to play out out time here. And um, there'll be scenes. There'll be absolute scenes when this full-time siren goes because uh, it's a well worked well, victory. And here they come. Here the come Mets the boys. 20s division. It's the Mets as they run onto the field celebrating a great win. 9-7 is the score. And you can just see the emotion in the players out there. They get over the line and look at massive team effort. But John Paul Catalano, I mean, the performance from this player in this grand final, take a bow. Uh, that's an extraordinary performance for the Mets. Yeah, this was um, a great um, spectacle as far as under-20 men's touch goes. Um, you know, a lot of attacking uh, weapons on show. Um, fantastic effort, of course, from JP Catalano um, and his yeah. and his team. But uh, Lennox Tika and his brother Choir also turning on, you know, um, a fantastic display. And, um, yeah, a great a great effort from the boys and, and, and a very close 20s competition um, across the board. But, uh, yeah, full marks to, uh, to the Mets and Sharks and congratulations to uh, David Collins on on a, on a win in the uh, in the championships. How good? It's been amazing, Carly, and thanks for covering that with me. What a great game of touch football. The championships, there's plenty more action to come here. Opens finals on the main field. It's going to be incredible. Brought to you by Inferno. Don't go anywhere. We've got mixed women's opens all afternoon and evening. See you soon here live on KO and Sky Sport next. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com.
Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it! Go dash it! The roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it! Door dash it! The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. 
game down, they just think they are. Never know, wanna be gangster, trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and a chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin, I'd like to pay my respects to all the people, past and present. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rex Craig. I am a Cossard of local Aboriginal elder. Happy to be here this afternoon to Del Welton Country for Touch Football Australia. From myself, on behalf of our local Cossard of Aboriginal Elders group, we identify as Garland Bella, do you give our Aboriginal Elders Corporation? And our Aboriginal totem is Carpet Snake. With me today is Mr. Ben Ferguson, another Cossarder, a local Cossar Aboriginal man who will be foreman on the didgeridoo as part of the work of the country. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to share with you in our culture, Aboriginal culture, the land we are here on today is called Gumbanga Country. Gumbanga Country is a traditional land of Gumbanga people. All Gumbanga people who have established traditions and cultural connections to the territory. Gumbanga people are the traditional stories of their family's land. Have been for many thousands of years. Having the knowledge of sacred Aboriginal sites through storytelling in ways that only Aboriginal people can tell. <laughs> From myself, on behalf of our Garland Miller Aboriginal Elders, I would like to extend a warm welcome to everyone present here this afternoon. Welcome everyone to Coffs Harbour. Welcome to Coffs Harbour International Sporting Station Stadium. Welcome to country everyone. Welcome to Bombay Country. Thank you ladies and gentlemen and have a great touch for the retirement. I'll hand over to Ben. Thank you.
to the championships live here from Coffs Harbour presented by Inferno. We're about to get into our first Opens Grand Final for this year's championships. You can see all the punters start to make their way all around field one. Scott McAllister and Gab Rose with you for our three Opens Grand Finals this afternoon. Big atmosphere starting to build. Gab and looking forward to our first Opens Grand Final between the Sydney Rebels and the Brisbane Cobras. Yeah, perfect conditions. I've just been walking out around in the stands and the crowd is building, Scott. It's going to be a great afternoon of finals touch. Yeah, absolutely. Now, these two teams have been heavyweights within the mixed open division for a number of years, haven't they? But it's been a little bit of time between drinks for the Rebels. They haven't won a mixed open title since 2020. For the Cobras, a little bit longer. 2016 was the last time they took the mixed open championship. But it's a star-studded list. We'll see the team list very shortly as we take a look at some of the pictures of the crowd. And the stands are starting to fill up. We've seen a lot of grand finals already. A lot of our seniors and masters divisions have made their way through to grand finals. But everything starts to centre around field one for these massive big opens grand finals. And uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere out here at CX Stadium in Coffs Harbour. It sure is, and the uh, Southern Rebels won their semi-final 9-6 over the Sydney Scorpions. On the other side of the equation, the Cobras had a little bit closer affair with a 5-4 win over the Hornets. So we should see, as is normal in mixed open, the big games, plenty of attacking prowess and, and tries scored. Scott. Yeah, now both these two teams were in the same pool as well. They've ended up finding each other again here in the grand final. Nothing really split them at all through the pool phases. Five wins and a draw for the Rebels, five wins and a draw for Brisbane. They played each other in round one. Final score, eight all draw. You couldn't have scripted it better, Scott, for this grand final. So we'll wait and see how this transpires. As the players on our screen, we can see the, the coin toss has happened, the referees are ready and the players are lining up and they'll be uh, walking out onto the field in any moment and they'll all be keen to get into this clash and, and as you'd expect in a grand final, Scott, we see uh, talent right across the park. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams starting to get ready, our referees as well, and it's just those final nerves. You played in big games before, Gab. You played for Australia, New, Zealand, uh, New South Wales, I should say, in the women's open division. What's going through these players' heads right now as they're about to work their, walk their way out onto the field? Yeah, there'll definitely be a bit of nerves as you come into a grand final, but you've, you've got to kind of trust in the work that you've done in the lead-up, and, and it's that connection piece. We play a team sport, and, and you can't win it on your own. So I think you just got to get around each other, have each other's back no matter what, and whatever's happening out on the field, you stay positive and, and trust and you know what you're doing. Now, we mentioned both these teams have a rich history in the mixed open division as we see our three referees make their way onto the field. The Rebels are chasing their 10th national championship, and they've won nine in total since the... The, uh, national Championship competition format inception in 1997 for the Cobras. They're looking for their fourth mixed open national title. Now, three referees that you just saw on field, Campbell Muir, Zoe Jenrick and Matt Lavery. And we now see the Southern Rebels make their way onto the field. All smiles. They look pretty relaxed at the moment, though, don't they, Gab? They look very relaxed as we see uh, former NRL player Scott Prince there. He's in the number 23 for the Rebels. And he just gave a, a fan a, a high five as he ran out on the field. And, and, of course, he's no stranger to the big stage. Absolutely. Playing for the Southern Rebels this year. Has been playing for the South Queensland Sharks over the last few years in this mixed open division. And interestingly, number one, Zach Bazunas, is my next door neighbour. There you go. So I've known Zach for since he was just a young toddler wandering around the backyard, and he's now in the Australian Mixed Open team as well, going to Nottingham later in the year. So if I get excited, it's a, a shout out to my neighbour, Zach Bazunas. Absolutely. You might get a, an invite to a family dinner or something like that during the week if the Southern Rebels can get up. Brisbane Cobras coming out to the field. They look nice. And relaxed as well. A lot of experience through this team lineup. We'll have the team list after the national anthem, thanks to Bristol Paints. We'll highlight some players to watch for both of these two teams as they line up on field. 
And this is a special moment as you wait for the national anthem. This is one of the, the beauties of our sport and all sports that you get to be a part of this moment. So we'll take a quick pause ourselves for the national anthem of Australia. Ladies and gentlemen, please now stand if you're able for the Australian national anthem. Take a look at the Bristol Paints grand final team list now. Point out a couple of names for us, uh, Gab, in these two team lists. Yeah, well, obviously, Zach Bazunas in the uh, Australian mixed open team, as we spoke about all, all, earlier. Roy Prasad, we've got Josh Rosario, Carly Walsh, and Scott Prince, and, and Sailor Perrot are the ones to watch for the Southern Rebels. On the other side, for the Cobras, haven't watched too much of them, but I watched it earlier in the week and we saw Caleb Matters was carving up. We've got Jackson Underwood, Natasha Adams, and, and Talia Russ Russman's had a great tournament as well. Yeah, absolutely. They've got a nice balance of experience and some really young, up and coming superstars of the sport. They're coached by Charlie Borg, who is a, a mixed open specialist. He's been in this position a number of times, former Queensland mixed open coach. has coached the Brisbane mixed open team for a number of years as well. He knows what it takes to win big titles. But you look on the other side, Roy Passard, just an absolute legend of our sport. He's been coaching as well as playing within this team. What an absolute legend he is. Yeah, and it's, it's hard to pick a winner on this. And as we said, when they matched up in the round matches, it, it was eight all. So I'm expecting, obviously, a close and a tight tussle, but we want a high-scoring uh, affair for our, our crowd that is continuing to roll on in, and, and they'll be expecting an exciting grand final here, Scott. Yeah, you just never know what you're going to get in a game of mixed open touch football. Like you said, yeah, there's going to be points. We can guarantee that. It's going to be excitement. And uh, the national championships have just pulled out some absolute cracking grand finals here in the mix. Look at these scenes right now. Final instructions from Charlie Borg pumping up this Brisbane Cobras team as they make their way out onto the field. There's a bit more intent about them now. It was all smiles and everyone was pretty relaxed, but it's go time now. And the Cobras, they look like they're ready to go, as are the Southern Storm, as you can see on screen. Yeah, so you can see the Rebels there just having their last moment instructions as they make their way to the field, but you can't help but be pumped up after the National Anthem. I had goosebumps going through there, and uh, it looks like we're about to get underway in this mixed open grand final, Scott. So both teams make their way out to the field. It's the Southern Rebels who will have the opening tap here in the mixed open grand final. Zach Bazunas... We'll kickstart us, and we're underway. Southern Rebels opening possession. His Bazunas did a good job just to get away from the defender there from Brisbane. They're in a little bit of trouble early here. Players look like they're offside. Zoe Jenrick's going to point to the spot. The absolute perfect start here for the Southern Rebels. They score first in the GF. Yeah, and we'll see this on the replay here. They started fast. You see Zach, he came out of the box and just caught an offside player, and he's nice and tall, so he just slid through, and he'll be happy with his start there, Zach. And, and what better start for the grand final for the Southern Rebels? Brisbane from the tap restart. They won't be phased by that at all. 
You know, this is going to be a long game. Big, long bomb into the corner, just running out of room. In the end, not a bad option. They went early as well there, Brisbane, chanting their hands. Yeah, and Billy Barker, she just ran out of space. It was a beautiful pass from, from left to right by the Cobras, but you'll see here she was trying to tiptoe down the sideline. Alex Conan throwing the pass and nearly ran straight into Jack and the cameras there, Scott. Yeah, we might throw down to Jack Rogers, who's down on the sideline right now. What's the atmosphere like, Jack? Oh, I just had to take a little step away from the sideline there because that came barreling over towards us. Down the other end, you can see it as well, but uh, the grandstand's filled up. It's absolutely electric. I'll let you get straight back to it because try time here. Back to you in the studio. Yeah, thanks, Jack. Another try to the Southern Rebels. What a set that was, going the full distance, and picking up from half. Great work from uh, Josh Backus. We'll take a look at the DoorDash replay. Talk us through this one, Gab. Yeah, and again, skips out in pretty similar spot to where Zach went earlier, and he just he was patiently waited, and it was Sailor Parrot that got the try there, and and. We know Sailor in, in New South Wales, and, and she plays predominantly women's, but she's done a great job there. Just bit her time and gone over the second try for the Southern Rebels. So they've got the early jump. Here the Rebels. It's Brisbane. Now pull and restart. Thompson, short ball. It was almost there. It almost looked like it was opening up for Ken Adams. Yeah, if he could have got a hold of that, it looked like he was going to slip his way through for the first try for the Cobras, but good defence from the Rebels, and... I just have to go back a bit there to, to play the ball. Oh, yeah, it really did open up. Kent had a good look at it. Rebels now. Hughes gets them over the halfway line. Nice option for them just to head back down that right sideline. Prasad into half. Nice clean pick up. Early release as well. And they thread it through. Good defence coming across. Haley Crotty. A big touch had to be made. They'll get the penalty as well. Yeah, it was really good defence there, but you can see, Scott, how fast Rebels are coming. They're going into the box fast, and their transition is excellent at this point. We're only a few minutes into the match, but they just look like they're built for speed here for this grand final and, and perfect conditions to play a game like that. Absolutely nice, dry, fast track here. And we rain earlier on this morning, but absolutely perfect conditions. Oh, Matters has gone through a hole. There's a touch that's being claimed back from one of the Rebels players, but the, but the Brisbane Cobras... They have got their first try here in the grand final. It comes off the back of Matters. Yeah, and we'll see the replay here in a moment, and, and he's been instrumental in getting them here to this grand final. And, and Sailor Parrot called the touch, but the ref had called play on, uh, and it's a try there. So it's 2-1 now, Rebels over Cobras. Lovely setup from Alex Condon, another player to watch here for this Brisbane team. And I think we have our answer, Scott, on, on what type of game it's going to be. Oh, yeah, it's going to be high scoring. Rebels again to Zunas. Oh, picked off here. Play on is the call. There's nobody at home. Have they got the toe to go? It's Ken Adams. Can he keep going? He's headed towards the corner. He's going to stretch away here, Ken Adams. What a turnaround this has been from the Cobras. Back-to-back -back tries in quick succession. And we're locked up again here in the mixed grand final. And you'll see there, as he took the intercept when we see the replay, the Rebels stopped for a moment. I think they're waiting for the referee to make a call, but the, the only call the ref made was, was play on as Bazunas through that intercept. You see, they just took a moment or two, and then Adams was on his way, and there was no stopping him. So in the blink of an eye, we are back to even score, to all. Great finish there from Ken Adams, one of their experienced players. I'm sure a little thought in the back of his head when he took that one. Would have had a little question whether he had the toe to go the whole way. And absolutely, yes, he did. Stretched away. And now Prasad down on the deck. Yeah, when you get those intercepts, you certainly want him probably five metres from the opposition try line, not 65 like he took, took it. But it was a great run, and, he, and he's got his uh, team back level pegging with the Rebels. He's Prasad at the back, but they're well-numbered, Brisbane. It just feels like a, a gear has switched within them now. They're, they're up and about. And that obviously comes from a bit of momentum from some points. They look sharp in their defence. Yeah, and they, were, the they were two tries down, but that's nothing in a game. Oh, any touch, but particularly mixed touch. So, And the ref's going to call... A little yeah. bobble in the play ball there. Yeah, so be, as you said, Scott, the, the Cobras are now working into their process. It can be one little shift and one try, and the momentum in these games can change. Hughes feeds it out. The back to Prasad. Tash Adams comes up and makes a touch. One of the captains of this Brisbane Cobras team. Here she is again in defence. It's Bacos. We've seen him go from half already once. They decide to kick out this time around. The oh, final pass. Oh, they're going to bring it back. 
That was slick, and it was positive play from the Rebels, wasn't it? They could see that Brisbane were just retrieving in defence, and they just decided to continue to run. Yeah, and the running game suits them really well. Those beautiful um, hands there from Gemma Squadrito. It came back for a penalty, but, uh, of course, Gemma, daughter of uh, Dom Squadrito, who's a, another legend of our game. Brisbane now from the penalty restart. Roll over the halfway line. Tash Adams, she'll head over to the interchange area. Penalty given here from Matt Lavery. As we see Scott Prince into the action here in, in the, the link position for the Rebels. Seen him on screen a lot of the weekend during our advertisements and, and now he's here live in action for the grand final. They're coming his way now. They go away from a Condon. Floating ball out to the left-hand side of the field. A lovely ball from Alex Condon. Second try assist for him. Emma Holden finishes it off. Her first try of the game in Brisbane. They're in front. Yeah, and she had a bit of work to hit, a work here to do, Emma Holden. But you're right, Conan. He he looped the ball over the top of the winger, and it was a beautiful dive to the to get past the outstretched arm of Carly Walsh there. So Brisbane Cobras hit the lead for the first time in this match. Three tries on the trot for Brisbane. Sees them take the lead now on the athlete scoreboard. Rebels looking to hit back. Bazunas, nice play out the back. Beautiful final pass and great defence. Coming across there from Brisbane, they had to be stretched. Josh Rosario almost setting that try up for the Rebels. Here he is into half now, goes to Bazunas, has a look, oh. goes long and open pastures here for the Rebels. And Brittany Rudd scores their third to lock up the scores yet again. That's going to look amazing on replay. If we get the measuring tape out there, I'm going to say that went from at least the midpoint of the field. I and mean, we're looking at probably a, a 20 to 25 metre pass there from Bazunas. He just let that one rip straight over the top. And a great catch there by uh, Brittany Rudd and three all. Pushing from the restart. Sean Hooper, they'll just come back and play the ball. No wonder there's been no footballs in my backyard. It's it skipped my backyard and gone a couple it's of houses down. We'd now we running passing see those. Moffat into the in-goal area, linking up with Condon. They're going to say ball down. And Condon asked the referee. It just didn't look like he had full control as he was looking to plant that one down. But dangerous as Ryan Moffat injects himself into this grand final. Oh, wow, that's pretty close. And the toucher was almost there as well. You have to have both hands around the football and ground it. It's a little bit different to a traditional rugby league grounding where you can kind of use the, the force of the, the ground as well. Oh, as we see a little play out the back there and a good touch there. We see Billy Barker. She had to come in and affect that touch and did a really good job there. But it's end-to-end -end action, Scott. It's, it's a great game. Bridgman from the restart. It's the try scorer, Ken Adams. Getting them towards the Southern Rebels 10 metre line. Yeah, and you see they're pushing up here. Jack Lewis, the number six for the Rebels. And also Roy Prasad. They come out to Kellum. He has a little juggle. It's just enough. Prasad says, not on my watch. Pop over the top. Ball hits the ground. Rebels have got some work to do. This and Hughes. And you're, you're seeing really good ball movement from both sides. They're opening up the field, so they're long pass, and their wingers have got great catches, and uh, as we see Rebels drive the ball down the field. Last touch here for the Southern Rebels. As they'll loop it over, we'll head down on field with Jack Rogers. Yeah, Scott, thanks for that. And Gab, too, I've just spent some time in the Rebels' box. Roy Prasad, the legendary uh, middleman, he's running the box over there. He's pulled a couple of players aside and said, we're not going to have it all our way against this Brisbane Cobras team. So it's about making some alterations and breaking things down here. It's going to be a tri-fest, guys. Enjoy. Thank you, Jack. Brisbane back in control now. Moffat switching in, comfortable in defence. Zuna's making the touch. And they couldn't nearly got a penalty there, and... As, as I say that, we do see a penalty. The refs have been very strict all weekend, and it's continued today in, in throwing the ball away. You have to give the ball back on the mark. They don't want it to be slowed down, and, and the attackers then have to go and um, fetch the ball. So the refs have been very consistent with that, Scott. The Rebels with Bazunas. Gee whiz, he's been busy in the early stages of this grand final. Out to Hughes. They'll just get themselves set here, the Southern Rebels get... 
players back into position. Off it will come back up and make the touch. They're happy to burn a couple. Southern Rebels, what have they got up their sleeve? Prasad and Hughes working together here in the midfield. They come back to Hughes. Right foot goes back to Prasad. Well, you just felt like there was something coming. They worked it perfectly there, the combination of Kieran Hughes and Roy Prasad. Yeah, it just opened up. It was all too easy for Roy Prasad, but great work there by Kieran Hughes. So, so they engaged two defenders there, so they got them both up, and that is just too easy for those two experienced campaigners. Rebels back in front. 4-3. It's been a top effort from them just to hold, get themselves back into the game. Those three tries on the trot for the Cobras. Really good touch there by Brittany Rudd out on the wing for the Rebels because it was it was looking dangerous there for the Cobras as we see Matters in at dummy half. Shapes to go open. It's not much options. Sends a huge bomb out to the left-hand side of the field. Yeah, by the time that gets out there, the defence had time because it was a little bit more loopy to, to try and get the distance. Uh, the Rebels' defence had time to get out to, to mark their person. Good metres here. He's tucking it up under the wing, going... Nothing too fancy about it from the Rebels. Now Zunas picks up short ball. They've got the numbers. Quality try from the Southern Rebels. It was a quality set, though, in the lead-up work that they did. Like we said, it wasn't anything fancy, just hard and fast up the field, and they were able to put the polish on the back end. Yeah, and you saw a really good latch. I think it was by Gemma Squadrita, and we come in here, and now Zach Bazunas off to Squadrita, and we spoke about before her nice, lovely touch there and a beautiful pass out. Brittany Rudd for her double. Oh yeah, it's all high fives and clapping over in the Southern Rebels box there. They were happy. Now it's the Rebels who go back to back tries. Sees them in front now by two on the Athlete scoreboard. 5 3. Rebels in front here. Mixed open grand final. Big looping ball and off the fingertips of Billy Barker. Oh, that was a chance. Yeah, she'd like her time again on that. She took a really hard pass earlier in the game and it was similar to what we saw where Condon passed to Billy Barker, but unfortunately it was kind of going away from her. It was a hard one to take. Yeah, it definitely would have been hard to take. She was running out of room and going on the angle as well to be able to grab it midair and then get it down. was going to be another a tough one for her. As we see Brisbane given penalty away. Kieran Hughes will tap and restart for the Rebels. A full set of six to work with. And he's there again with his partner in crime. He's had a really good start to this game, Hughes. We saw this last time. They were just happy to throw the footy around amongst themselves. Not too worried about engaging the defence too much. Here they go, Hughes. This time they try and put pressure on it. And they send a shooter up out of the line. And Hughes, too classy. He felt the pressure coming, got the ball away. And they finished it off in the corner with Jessica Rosario. Yeah, and it was a, that was a half opportunity that became a try as opposed to the half opportunity down here for the Cobras that they couldn't quite convert. But these two working together beautifully and great pass over the top there. Oh, and we're seeing Tassie. another try, yeah. So the, it's, it's right across the park. There's really good teamwork and, and they're all making a difference out here in this grand final. Scoring in threes at the moment. Brisbane, three unanswered. Now the Rebels have put three on. And back in front by three on the athlete scoreboard. Moffat had a good dive in. Almost looked like he lost possession coming into the line. Might be a penalty coming here for the Brisbane Cobras. Yeah, and Jack Lewis adamant making the touch. But you're right, Scott. There's a penalty there. And uh, we haven't seen too many penalties or repeat sets on the line. So it'll be interesting to see how this set plays out. If we're going by our times tables, it'll be time for the uh, Brisbane team to score. Hooper, short ball, Moffat. Oh, oh, picked off here. No, they'll come back. A penalty. Oh, he was gone. Yeah, there was no stopping Jack Lewis then. He was nearly at the halfway line before a blink of an eye. So, But we're getting a penalty here, and that's the second penalty for, for the Cobras. So we won't want to see a third penalty, or, or for the Southern Rebels, they'll have somebody on the sideline. Shift the ball straight away. The Cobra is out to the left. Oh, footwork here from Hooper. Goes again on the right foot. Tries to squeeze in himself. Nice touch. Yeah, really good touch there. I think it was Squadrito. And he, he skipped outside his middle and then tried to do the same against the female link. But uh, he ran out of space. 
Off it plays it. Condon, they're in trouble here. They've got Prince coming in. Oh, the final pass goes astray. And they just can't get that final pass to hand for the wingers. It's They're kind of going in front of them, going above their head, and it's under pressure. It's a really hard pass to execute, but a uh, couple of occasions they may look back and say, what if for those tries? That's great wing work as well coming in. Rosario forcing Moffat to throw the pass. Well, we've had a little bit of everything here in the mixed open grand final. Three tries is the difference. And the Southern Rebels in front. A little bit of everything there, Gab, in the first half. There sure was, and I was in shock there when the Hooter went. It felt like it's, it's been such a good game with so much going on that uh, it flew by. So I can't wait for the second half, Scott. And we're going to take a quick break here. Halftime score in the mixed open grand final. Southern Rebels 6, Brisbane Cobras 3. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher was picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. Welcome back to the National Championships. And just come out of the halftime break. Halftime score here, the Southern Rebels 6-3 in front. After scoring the last three tries there of the first half, Gab, it's going to take a bit of work here for Brisbane. This will help them right away from the, from the restart. We know they've got points, and we know that they can score them consecutively. Like the Rebels, they scored three on the trot as well, which leveled things up earlier on in the first half. Yeah, and this will definitely help here. There was an error from the Rebels coming out of their own line. Ref called play on there, and uh, we see Alex Condon. He'll be the one to watch in this set. Diving in at the line. I'll pop back out. It's Noah Lester. The bright blue boots on in the number 13. They come back to the open side. Matters. Nice little jinking stutter coming into the line, but good defense. 
And the Rebels will restart on their seven metre line. As they now head towards their sub box with Scott Prince. And we'll head down to the sideline with Jack Rogers giving us all the news out of the halftime break. I spent that half in the Brisbane Cobras camp. Coach Charlie Borg, the very first thing he said is, we score next, we win the game. They're confident they can do it. And I will pause here as right behind me. Uh, we've got play on, uh, Scotty. Try to the Rebels. So not the best news for the Cobras, but they did have a plan for this too. And that plan is that they've got to shut them down, coming to the box uh, like a brick wall. That's the words that I heard out of the box. Ken Adams was adamant. We shut down their box, we shut down their game plan, and we win the championship. That's all from me. Thank you, Jack. Well, I won't be too happy in conceding the first try here in the second half. They need to get that brick wall mentality back. And the Brisbane Cobra is down by four now, Gab, and that just seems like now it's starting to become a pretty big task here for the Cobras. Yeah, that makes it hard. First time Southern Rebels were down this end of the field in the second half and, and they come away with points. And you'll see their execution there. They've just those little tip-ons and, and under pressure passes, they're just going to hand for the Rebels. And, and that's resulting in the... The scoreline we're seeing at the moment, Scott. Come to the open side. Nice work from Thompson to come back inside to Condon. Defence Bazunas. I've seen him pretty agile with ball in hand. This time having to make a big defensive play. Alberta touch here has Condon. He's been their go-to man throughout the game. Receives it back now. He's got a great left to right. Takes it right to the line. Comes off the back there of Zach. Zunas, ball downs the call and the Rebels come out of their end of the field. Yeah, and you see the, the number 14 for Southern Rebels, Josh Rosario. He was really pushing up in defence there and uh, trying to get out and make the touch beyond the seven and, and, and protect his mate there in Zach Bazunas. On the run, with backers, nice touch. Just stifled them up. They're coming into the last touch of the set regardless. Brisbane, probably not the worst place to start their set of six. This part of the field and transition is going to be important for them as they make their way downfield. Talia Rasmussen plays it. It was definitely a better set defensively for them. And, and often momentum is built on the back of defences. We see here Condon take out a half, a little play. Oh, oh, throwing absolutely everything into that. Great defensive play. Brittany Rudd. We'll see her on the replay, and she really put her body on the line in wow. straight in. She copped a, an accidental arm to the head, but she's straight back up. And Brittany scored two tries there already in this grand final and, and potentially saved one there. So it's, it's body on the line for this grand final this afternoon. Big metres down the left-hand side of the field. Nice little pop-out ball. They're on the front foot here, the Rebels. Now they're punching out of their interchange area, Prasad. They continue on with the run. Fifth and final touch. Hughes has a look up, takes fingertips. They'll get a repeat set. Zero touch for them as well. Falling in the hands there of Sailor Parrot. It's a dangerous set, and this is going to continue on now after the repeat. Yeah, and here we see these two again. It looks a little bit like rinse, wash, repeat. We've seen this a few times this afternoon. This time they're going back in, but a good touch there by the number nine, Tasha Adams, for the Brisbane Cobras. But they're just pulling. They're just waiting to get them out. Seeing where the hole is. It's Hughes threads it. Nice work from Tash Adams. Good touch on George Azzi. This is the last touch. I'll finish it off in the corner. Hand the ball back over to Brisbane. All the work to do if they want to make some changes onto the park. They do a good job putting the ball through the hands on the first touch. And the second touch is now a little juggle from Rasmussen. That puts Brisbane under a little bit more pressure now. Yeah, they're just getting their subs onto the field. So, And they'd had a good defensive set off the line, coming in the line, their Cobras. So uh, Rebels wouldn't have been disappointed where they finished the ball. But they'd be super happy getting the ball back in this prime real estate down this end of the field. You can probably take their time a little bit now as well and just manage this set of six. As Rosario... You can see him just jinking, throwing the footy around. Bazunas, they go short side. Adams looks a little bit short. Bazunas tries to get on the outside of him. Matt Lavery hasn't moved. He's communicating with the players, and he's going to point to the spot. The Rebels, they're stretching away with this, and they've got one hand on the trophy. Yeah, you just cannot afford to make errors coming out of your own half. We saw there from the Brisbane Cobras on that occasion. Rosario and Zach just skips out in front of an offside player, and with that long reach... Plants the ball down to take the score out to 8-3. And you're right, it, it's going to be hard to claw back from here, Scott. 
What a grand final performance he is having this afternoon. Zach Bazunas. And the Cobras really need to be the next one to strike here, Scott. There we go. They've got numbers on the right-hand side and trying to get on the outside. Diving in, Alex Kellum. Looking dangerous. Here he goes, feeding it. Eads now plays it. Condon again gets into the in-goal area. A great recovery in defence. Beaten on the first occasion. Didn't give up on the play. As we take a look at the door dash replay, this is good defence. Yeah, he's been really good, Alex Condon. And, yeah, Jack Lewis recovered well there because he was kind of got behind him. He just kind of turned his body and managed to affect the touch before the ball was put down. So that's what we need to see from the Cobras. They need to chance a hand and, and look at their key, key players as we see a mistake here. So, again... That's going to help the Cobras, and they really need... They've got about nine minutes left. They really need to be next to score. From the penalty restart, gave Brisbane an opportunity to get some replacement players. They'll still have another two. Condon and Danger Man makes his way back out onto the field, along with Natasha Adams. Ken Adams, Ryan Moffat, working in the middle here for Brisbane. Moffat plays it. Adams now picks up switch. Ooh, was looking to pop back out potentially and give it back to Adams. He dived in at the line himself there, Ryan Moffat. Yeah, he nearly snuck through, didn't he? The gap opened up, but it closed just as quickly. And there's plenty of strike power here in this Cobras team, but it's a bit of a brick wall defence at the moment for the for the Rebels. They need to really push hard in defence here, Scott, and, and try and get a mistake from the Rebels. Zunas goes forward on the first and pick up too many metres. They'll straighten up coming down their sideline now over their 10-metre line. As Prince makes his way back out onto the field, the referees have pulled this up. Yeah, in the coaching box over for the Rebels, that's probably three times the last three sets they've had the ball that they, they've just managed, they've made a mistake going into their box. So that'll be something, whilst they've, they are holding a good lead at the moment, in a grand final you just cannot give the opposition too many opportunities. A bit flat here on this play, Brisbane. Now they switch in Lesser. Sends it to Condon. Again, happy just to burn a couple of touches while they get their shape. Get themselves into position. Condon shapes, gets into the end goal yet again. Who's well, been threatening all second half. This time he finds matters. And it just felt like it was only a matter of time before the Cobras could get another try on the board and it had to come off the back of Alex Condon. Yeah, and that's who they went to. And you see again, similar we've seen a few times this game and he gets behind the line with ease, patiently waits and then it's matters right on the try line and uh, game back on, 8-4 with about seven minutes to go. His second try of the grand final, that young man on screen. His father, former Australian men's open player, won the 45s grand final this afternoon for Arana. Next generation coming through. It's Bazunas goes long, huge ball. Nice slide defence, though, from Brisbane. Adams comes up to make the touch. Rosaro now, shy of the seven. Bazunas again. This time they played out the back. Beautiful football here from the Southern Rebels. They can do no wrong in the grand final. Brittany Rudd gets another try, and they're ninth of the game. Yeah, and that's a, that's a hat-trick for, for Brittany Rudd, so she'll be really happy with her performance, and, and why not? Standing out wide and and on the receiving end of these beautiful passes. Again, we see Bazunas, a play out the back, Barkos, and then on to Brittany Rudd. What a performance this has been. Southern Rebels chasing their first title since 2020, and their 10th national championship in the mixed open division. And that's not going to help. Penalty is they're, they're trying to get down to the line and instigate something. You see hands on hips in the box. They look a little bit dejected at this point, Scott. And it is a hard fight back from here. We've got five minutes to go and five tries to catch up. Rebels rolling in. Again, they come to the open side. Leap ball off the fingertips. You can see the smile there, Sailor Parrott. She was trying to get her hands on that and she would have been away for another try for her. But uh, that's probably one of the only opportunities we've seen that they've missed today, the Rebels. See the replay there. A tough one. Going to head down on the sideline with Jack Rogers. 
Scotty, it was 8-4 on the scoreboard. The uh, Brisbane Cobras had just scored their previous try. Scotty Prince comes off the field there in the Rebels box and says, there is so much time left, guys. Stay tight. It is not over. Simple words, but experienced words. And that's what's coming out of the camp. Rebel right now. Looks like they're probably going to get away to the end, but don't count the Cobras out yet. Yeah, don't count them out at all, Jack. And they almost went over there again, getting themselves into the in-goal area. It was just a, a ball out the back, and Matters, it ended up being back in the field of play. A little bit too hard to get it back over the stripe, but uh, they are continuing to throw. Now, Hughes down the sideline. Good touch from Crotty. Really good touch. And we've seen that play... That's the first time we've seen in this game, but today it's that little trick play back down the box. They look like they're coming to the open side. A player slips on late here as we see Hughes. But, yeah, really good touch there. So, But, yeah, you cannot ride off the Cobras yet. And Matt is there when he, he took the ball before. He was just be before the try line. Holden plays it. Lester feeds it from half. Condon back onto the field. That's a better drive, Scott. Nice work from Kellum as Thompson picks up, looking to switch players in underneath. Crotty just net balls it over the top, straight into the hands of Josh Rosario, who just gets straight back onto the football. The Rebels are looking to finish this game off in style and get themselves a penalty. And they'll be in no rush here. You can see it looks like Scott Prince with the ball. And as we said, an experienced campaign, obviously in rugby league and touch. And... There's no rush here. They've got about three minutes to go. They'll just try and play out the set, bring it up this end of the field and make it really difficult for, for the Cobras to work their way down the other end. But it's been a great performance by the Rebels in this grand final. Oh, quality. Quality grand final performance from the Southern Rebels. Another national championship coming their way. They might have more tries in their back pocket. As they continue to throw the football around. They're toying with the Brisbane defence at the moment. Prasad inside the seven now as Hughes, flat ball comes back in, Hughes footwork and the touch is made. Jared Thompson making the touch. Yeah, and it's the last touch here and I venture a guess they'll always be happy to put it over the sideline here on the... As we see another little trick play, it's... No, they didn't get six to go there, but uh, they're never letting the... They're not going to die wondering, are they? No, absolutely not. They're still fighting for the six to go there, the Southern Rebels. They've got a possession back. And we'll be looking here for the Cobras to make their way up the field, give themselves a, an opportunity to score a late consolation try. The penalty there is going to help. They're going to get a penalty just short of halfway. And they'll get a couple more opportunities and a full set of six here at the, the Rebels' defence. Hooper gets them going forward. There's another little roll in the play of the ball. Brisbane get the penalty from Campbell Muir. Tap and restart. Full set of six to work with. Minute and a half to go in the mixed open grand final. Women's open grand final to follow. Sydney Scorpions taking on the University of Queensland Rebels. Two top teams in the women's competition make their way through to the grand final. And it's going to be an absolute cracker as well. Yeah, it should be another high scoring affair based on what we've seen as the Brisbane Cobbers try to slice through there. But, but this defence is just too strong with about one minute left to play in the mixed open grand final that's going the way of the Southern Rebels. Prince picks up metres on the first. They'll follow suit. They've been clinical coming out of their end of the field. These metres, Brisbane continuing to roll in defence. They can't match the running game of the Rebels. Zunas shows it to Rosario. Goes long again. We'll finish it off in the corner. They won't be too disappointed with that. No, they'll be happy with that. It's wasting a few seconds on the clock. And with last set here in hand for Cobras... They've done an amazing effort to get to the grand final, Scott, but for them, unfortunately, they've just come up against a red-hot Rebel side that's oh, as we oh, said, tiptoeing down line. the sideline. They've only made a few mistakes, and their, their attack has been brilliant. It's, it's just been really hard to contain. We'll have one final possession here, the Southern Rebels. One eye on the clock as well. It's Bacchus. He plays it, feeds it from half. Zara, do they have one more in them? Right on the full-time Huda, they'll come back and play the penalty. Yeah, and it would have been... Oh, we're going to play the penalty out before the end of this championship game, and uh, I'm assuming they'll just be happy to go up and shake hands and just say, today, Southern Rebels, you were too good for us, as we see them running onto the field now, Scott.
Oh, weren't they just? What a performance it was in the grand final. They had questions thrown their way. It was a great fight back in the first half from Brisbane to level up the scoring, but they just really rolled away with it. The way they came out, scored first in the second half, put some back-to-back -back tries on it. It was just too much for Brisbane to be able to handle. What a performance. Yeah, it was a great performance there, and I think you're right. Cobras probably need to be the first to strike in the second half to, to reel that lead in. But congratulations to both teams and to the Southern Rebels, worthy champions in the 2024 championships. Well, we'll head down on field with Jack Rogers. He'll be grabbing one of the Southern Rebels winning players to have a chat and wrap up the mixed open grand final. Women's open grand final to follow as well. UQ Rebels taking on the Sydney Scorpions. More to come. Stay with us. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, the dedicated Dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it! Door dash it! Roost is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. You just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. You just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Here on the touchline, I've got co-captains of the Southern Rebels, the championship winning team, Zach Bazunas, Carly Walsh, guys. So exciting to get the win. And it's not the first time, of course, that we've seen the Rebels win this mixed division. Uh, Carly, I might throw to you first, but how do you keep coming back and doing this again and again and again? Um, I guess uh, like our prep is pretty hectic. It's, it's not fun when we first start, but I mean... We're, we're a really close-knit unit as well, so when, when we work, we, we bleed for each other. That's kind of a little bit of a team motto. Um, and considering last year we got knocked out in the semi, it was we kind of had to come back with some redemption there. We, it, it killed us last year, so, I mean, this is just a great feeling. Yeah, that tough game last year, it, uh, you could sort of feel it out there. It's weighing on you, and uh, you've sort of got rid of the demons here this year. And, Zach, you were part of that team last year, of course. Uh, what does it mean for you to get such a, a great score on the scoreline here, this Cobras team? They're a pretty hefty side. Uh, what was the plan of attack here? Um, I don't know. I think the plan of attack, we, we don't really focus on the opposition. We more focus on ourselves, and that's what makes us, I guess, more come out on top today. We stick to our guns. We know what we're good at. Um, we don't really focus on the opposition. So, yeah, pretty stoked with the outcome. So, Well, the Southern Rebels, our winner here today, 9-4 by an extraordinary margin, guys. Enjoy the victory. Go and soak it up with your team. Congratulations. Thanks, Thank you so much, guys.
When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher was picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Go dash it. Roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. Down, they just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Down, they just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website.
When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Welcome back. Live, the champions, the championships, the grand final here in the women's open division. Sydney Scorpions taking on the University of Queensland Rebels. Both teams are starting to make their way out onto the field for this one. Scott McAllister and former Australian Women's Open representative Gab Rose with you in commentary for this final as well. The two top teams have made their way through to the grand final, which is what you're looking for at a national championships. And it's going to be all on the line here to see who's going to be crowned champions, Gab. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this match since watching both these teams on Friday. I'd penciled it in as a potential grand final and... Uh, here we are on a beautiful afternoon in Coffs Harbour as we see the Scorpions players making their way back towards the tunnel to be introduced to the crowd. But uh, based on the semi-final results, Scott, this is going to be another high-scoring affair. Yeah, absolutely. The Scorpions winning their semi-final against the Sunshine Coast 7-1 for UQ. They won 10-1 over the Northern Beaches. So comprehensive victories for both teams in the semi-finals. Both finished on top of their pools. Four wins and a draw for the Scorps. The UQ Rebels coming in undefeated into the grand final. Six wins without a loss. Of course, the Sydney Scorpions, though, Gab, last year's champions and they won in a canner as well 10-1 was the final score in the 2023 women's open grand final danny norman player of the final in that one look for her today as well to be pretty influential yeah and, and they'll be looking to go back to back they're, they're obviously a champion team as we see them just being introduced onto the to field there with their captain laura Petty and Dana, danny davis who just said hello to to her mother-in-law and young son as she walks on the field. So that's a nice moment for her as she goes into a grand final. First one as a mother. Looking to go back to back this year, the Scorpions. It's a long time between drinks since they got their uh, championship win last year, having to go back to the Elite Eight under the Sydney Scorpions banner. It was the last time they won a Women's Open Championship for the UQ Rebels, of course. First time here at the Championships this year. A club-based team from Brisbane. Got a lot of players, though, who have represented the South Queensland Sharks over the last few years who have met the Sydney Scorpions in grand finals here in the Women's Open. These players are going to be very familiar with each other. It's a bit of a Queensland, New South Wales, feel about it as well and it just sets up what's going to be a crackerjack grand final here in the women's. Yeah and I think that's the intensity they're going to be played with and, and they've just been a juggernaut this weekend and 
I don't know how they're going to be stopped, but uh, yeah, if anyone's going to stop them, it's going to be the Sydney Scorpions. And uh, both coaches got experienced coaches in Barry Gibson for the Scorpions and and Renee Murphy for the for the Rebels. And, and they both have game plans. They'll know each other's game back to front, but there'll be some little trick plays as we see the UQ Rebels coming out. Hats coming off as we're in preparation for the Australian National Anthem. And the UQ Rebels looking for a, a pretty rare uh, triple crown as well, winning the Metro Cup in Brisbane, winning the Queensland State Cup at the back end of the year, now looking for a national championship as well. Both teams have made their way out onto the field. They're lined up for the National Anthem. We'll take a quick pause ourselves before the Women's Open Grand Final kickstarts. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please stand if you're able for the Australian National Anthem. Here we go. Both teams will head to their respective sidelines. Sammy Joe shaking the hands of our three officials. Amanda Sheiky, Zach Jenrick and Jordan Randall officiating our grand finals this afternoon here in the Women's Open. We'll take a look at our team list very shortly as well. There's just stars absolutely littered across both teams this afternoon as we take a look at the UQ Rebels, their final huddle, and we get their last-minute instructions. Referees as well will be communicating. Let's take a look at the Bristol Paints grand final team list. Like we said, stars galore in both teams for this grand final this afternoon. Yep. Yeah, it's even hard just to name a couple. You could go down and every player and, and name the talent across the park. And, and that's why they're both here in this grand final. But obviously at the top of the Sydney scores, we've got uh, Mackenzie Davis, who's had a whale of a tournament with Hannah Dyball, Stephanie Ali. You could go down the list. Danny Norman. They've all had... And, and a young gun coming through is one to watch here is Wyera Ellis for the Sydney Scorpions. And then on UQ Rebel side... You know, Britt Donovan's had a great tournament. Tiani Bryce, Demi Ashurst, Marama Thomas. Caitlin Blade scored so many tries. The Fylde sisters, so Sammy Joe Curtis and obviously Rebecca Mai Mai tops them out. So they're all smiles as they were on the national anthem there. And uh, this is set to be an absolutely cracking grand final, Scott. A bit of history on the line here as well for the UK Rebels to be the first club-based team to win a national championship taking on this juggernaut that is the Sydney Scorpions. We've got sister combinations as well across both teams. Shelley Davis and Danny Norman. And we've got uh, the Fylde sisters as well, the twins, the combination. Both of them have been great throughout the tournament. Lucia is jumping around. She's got the bright pink boots on on the far side. Jumping up and down, there she is, that young lady on screen. Australian women's representative, she'll be heading to the World Cup. Has just been everywhere for the UQ Rebels throughout the championships this week. Mendesiki gets this underway. Sydney Scorpions, first possession to kickstart us here in the Women's Open Grand Final. Shelley Davis in from half. What a tournament she's had as well. Been ever reliable for the Scorpions. Puts it out in front. And they chance their hand there early. Nice little set play coming in, just doesn't quite come off for them. Yeah, she's been great, Shelley Davis. She just only knows one way. It's full speed and it's it's straight ahead. So, and interestingly, on the siblings, we've also got sibling another set of siblings in the UQ Rebels, in the Murphy sisters, and you know, mother daughter combination with Coach Renee Murphy. So there's there's lots of different combinations and connections going on here in this grand final. I'll burn a touch here. The Scorpions forcing the mistake from the UQ Rebels on the first touch. Now Dybul goes, looks inside to Shelley Davis. The Sydney Scorpions know they'll bring it back. Forward pass on the inside ball as Davis has a little look over at referee Shiki. He's saying, are you for sure? 
Yeah, yeah. it was pretty flat coming in on the line, wasn't it? They thought they, thought they had it there, the Scorps. Yeah, and you see the, the smile on Shelley Davis' face turned into frustration there. She thought she had the first try in the grand final, that uh, not to be as UQ Rebels or, or work their way out of their end of the park. Rebels now coming out of the end. They'll look to be a little bit cleaner. We're going to head down on the sideline, soaking up all the atmosphere, Jack Rogers. Yeah, Danny Norman there leading the way for the box for the Scorpions. And she had a lot to say before the match there. Very excitable. Uh, said that the UQ Rebels are going to throw hurdle after hurdle after hurdle. They're expecting a rodeo of the words coming out of Camp Scorpions. So expect to see end-to-end -end footy. Back to you, Scotty. Thanks, Jack. Looking forward to this UQ Rebels rodeo. That sounds pretty exciting. Scorpions back on the run. Well, they've thrown everything else at teams right across the weekend, so why not throw a radio? And as we see Warrior Alice try to cut her way through and nearly elbow her way through there was Macy Carruthers, but well defended. Skipping across the... Is Ellis. Turn the ball over. Now, the UQ Rebels deep down their end of the field. Britt Donovan, she's been great this weekend as well. And another mistake. From the UQ Rebels, they're making changes. This could be an opportunity here for the Scorps to throw it around. They'll put the brakes on and hold things up as they get some fresh players out onto the park as well. Yeah, they're only just getting their full complement of players, but at the same time, Scorpions were making some subs as well. But they're going to get a penalty here by the referee, and they're going to have a full set of six, and it looks like it's going to be Dyball and uh, Shelley Davis to lead things as we see Danielle Norman coming at the back as well. Davis will hold things up momentarily. Full set to work with now. They look to pull the trigger. Dybul tries to skip on the outside. Big touch from Mara Thomas. That was a beautiful touch. She was fully outstretched, and uh, Dybul was nearly in for the first try, but equally up to the task, Thomas. Dybul again, plenty of touches. This time switches, plays out the back. Norman has to snatch at it. It might have just stifled. It was just enough to hold things up. Fifth and final play. They go short side. They'll come back and play it. A little bit of confusion and out what, there. What Danny Norman's saying was he's, he's made to go back to the mark, and she's saying they were actually on the mark. So, But the referee's call will stand. And back here, the Rebels will be trying to work their way. And that's something, Scott, they've been excellent at all weekend is the speed they go into the box and then come out of the box. So better start to their set this time around as Andreessen. Marches them towards the halfway line. And my might, she will steady the ship for them. Coming into the last, Tiani Bryce gliding across the field again, switching in Goodsell. And a better set for them as well. They didn't punch too far downfield, but a completed set of six is exactly what they needed there, the Rebels. Yeah, they definitely needed that. But you just see as Rebecca Maimai comes onto the field, she does it every time she enters the field of play. She just goes hard and, and she creates something for her team every time. And a loose play. The ball, it's got to be a penalty... You Maggie O'Reilly was was hopping around. She wasn't sure which way was that which way that was going to go, but there we saw it go in her favour, and, and she's happier than anyone in that situation. It's PD plays it right on the seven metre line, back on the inside. Nice touch again. Simon Bellafold's getting involved. Ian, you just cannot let Mackenzie Davis have any room. She'll cut free. She makes mistakes there. Sorry, Mackenzie. That's my commentator's curse. Less than five minutes into the grand final. Got it out of the way. It's out of the done. system. We're done. Here we go. There's Lucia. Hits it down cleanly. Tiani Bryce follows suit. My, my. Players will switch on out the back. Demi Ashes plays it on the championship's logo. Yeah, they're pressing up and putting lots of pressure on here. The Scorpions, nothing available for the Rebels. Searching for a repeat set. They're not going to get it. This defensive start here from the Scorps has been super impressive. Yeah, 100% right there, Scott. And you can see they're trying to unsettle what the UQ Rebels have been so successful at all weekend. And, and that's probably the way to try and try and get around this team is to unsettle them, getting to the box and getting out. And now they've drawn a penalty. So they'll be really happy with the start, the Scorpions. And uh, they've definitely had weighted possession. And as we know, in these big games, you cannot give teams too many opportunities down on the opposition's try line. Carruthers off the tap restart. Oh, a little bit of a heart attack moment there for Ellis. A good job to regain. One yellow boot, one blue boot on. And she, she can pull that off. 
She's talented in many sports and has been for many years. As we see her slide through, touch has been called there by Demi Ashes. And as I said, she's had a really good tournament, Demi. Ellis Ball in hand again. Norman goes open side, out in front. Carruthers, they've slid nicely here, the UQ Rebels. So it's positive signs. They've definitely weathered the, the most of the pressure, particularly defending their line. But they'll still be calm, you would feel, in their box because the scoreline hasn't been troubled as of yet. And they've just got to continue to work their way into this game. Yeah, you're right. And, and we saw in their semi-final against Renegades, who also have amazing strike power, they just could not penetrate the line with this UQ Rebels defence. As we see, it's going to be a real to forward pass there. But, uh, yeah, yeah, the defence, they, they, their victories, they've got such strong attack, the UQ Rebels, but they, they base their wins on defence. So, But Scorpion's doing everything here, and, and they've probably had the better of the first six minutes of this game, Scott. Even that set of six there for UQ, just getting over the halfway line. Defensive pressure continues. And you see there, they're trying to get the, the Scorpions players are pleading with the referee to pull the, the UQ Rebels defence up. And Davis and Dieball have been a lethal combination for the Scorpions this week. Then we see their Dieball late switch, but there, there's going to be no room there. But they're finishing on the, that far corner on the opposition's seven, and they'll be happy with the finish to that set, making it hard for UQ Rebels to get to their box. Two fold sisters combined as they come across field. Donovan, they get a penalty. And this will help them. Probably and that's probably first. the best set, I'd say, yep. Scott. First time they've received a penalty down this end of the field. It just helps them give it a little leg up, get them into attacking position. And sometimes we see when that happens, you weather a storm for a little while, you get your first opportunity down the line and you can convert it into points straight away. And with players like Mai Mai on the field, it's, uh, it's going to be hard to stop here. We're going to see him get a repeat set. Drayson working with Mai Mai. Bryce sweeps, takes him on herself, dives into the line. Nice touch made. Yeah, look like Shelly Davis diving full length. She might have copped a knock in the nose there. Uh, Bryce, let's hope she's okay because, again, another player that's had a cracking tournament. She's going to head over to the sideline. Last year's player of the series in the Women's Open. Files from half, picks up Mai Mai. Shoots it over to Murphy. Yeah, she couldn't get her hands on that Murphy, but uh, well defended there by Scorpion. So we've seen, we thought it was going to be a really high scoring affair, but we're, we're close to nine minutes in and, and the defence has been the feature of the game, Scott. We haven't seen any tries. The athlete scoreboard has not been troubled as of yet. Another golden opportunity, though, here for the Rebels. Open side files, Andreas in. The right hamstring taped. Doesn't look too unfazed at the moment. Gets solid contact. Takes him on. Hit a rungy ball in one hand. Touch on the inside from Shelley Davis. Yeah, it's hard to get through there. And we're seeing these combinations there coming out now. We've got Curtis there. We've got Files working outside. And we're going to have Mai Mai. Looks like she might be coming back on a sweet play here. Round to the left-hand side. They get it to back. And incorrect play the ball. Not facing square. Scorp straight back onto the football. So they look to put it through the hands and get... Towards their interchange area. Shelly Davis again. Meter Eater. Oh, tripping over her own feet there. Was Hannah Dybul. She pops back up. Takes a breather herself. O'Reilly. In at the line. Carruthers. Oh, it was Mackenzie Davis trying to switch it back out the back. Yeah, and a good defensive set there. So they've got the ball about five metres shy of halfway. They'll get the ball in straight into their process. We see Britt Donovan get the ball there. But good pushing defence there by Mackenzie Davis. Ashurst plays it as Donovan works in the half. Nice ball movement, gets him downfield. Ashurst has got fast feet, decides to rip early. And the sixth touch is made. So good set from both teams there as Yuki made their way downfield. But uh, Sydney Scorpions look pretty comfortable in defence. I'm going to head down to the sideline, Jack Rogers. Yeah, just spent some time in the University of Queensland box. Andreas and is uh, definitely a leader there, uh, vocal with all the players, trying to keep them on their toes. No one's fallen off the bull yet in the, this rodeo, Scott, uh, but you can guarantee that some of the silent assassins there from the UQ Rebels, maybe Lucia Fields, could be that player to spark and break through. 
Thank you, Jack. A mistake from the Scorpions has given possession back here to the Rebels. It's completely swung in terms of momentum and field position between these two teams. It was all Scorps to start this game. Rebels have had multiple sets of six down this end of the field. Still yet to trouble the scoreboard. Bellafold picks up in the link coming in. But again, this defensive effort from the Sydney Scorpions. It continues. They're throwing everything they can at the Scorps and they just can't find an answer at the moment. No, it's just it's, this defence from both sides is excellent. We see a mistake. penalty there, and they're going to give him another opportunity. And uh, we'll see somebody's going to have to break soon. So we'll see here. We've got uh, Files there, who Jack was just talking about a moment ago. And we'll see what she can manufacture here with about five minutes before halftime break. Tiani Bryce is back out onto the park. She feeds it here from half, receives it back from Andreas, and on the outside, Marama Thomas. Let's have a look. They're going to bring it back, the referees. They're going to say touch. Yeah, if we see a replay here, that was super close. So we see Bryce. She's back on the field after a knock on the nose. And, yeah, touch was called. And, and I'll go with the referees there. Lucia plays it. Andreasen starting to get herself in the game. Good soul diving in at the line. And the first try here in the Women's Open Grand Final goes the way of the UQ Rebels. It was a mountain of defensive work from the Scorpions, and they just couldn't hold on any longer. Yeah, and it took a, a beautiful pass and a great pick up there by Goodsall to get the opening try in this Grand Final clash. But, uh, yeah, beautiful pass by Andre Sand, and uh, it's 1-0 now to the UQ Rebels. And, again, it's that weight of possession. So opening points... Here in the women's grand final, 1-0 UQ Rebels on the athlete scoreboard. Scorps will be looking to hit back. Here's Davis. Back on the inside to Petey. Nice defence. Back my might. Belafides was coming in from the right link position as well. Yeah, and, and, and Petey and, and Davis have been working well throughout the tournament. And, and she's got a really good pass left to right, does Mackenzie Davis. So we see it here. She slices it through the link, but a great touch there. Yeah, Kate Hammond having work to do. It was a lovely ball, like you call. We take a look at the door dash replay. Getting on the outside shoulder there of Hammond, but did a great job to make contact now as we see Britt Donovan under pressure. O'Reilly makes the touch. They've got to go back to the mark. Again now, the Sydney Scorpions' wall of defence forcing pressure on the Rebels as they try to work their way downfield. They're throwing the ball around, trying to get themselves... As much meterage as possible, Lucia Files takes it right to the line. And it comes off the arms there of Mackenzie Davis. Yeah, and that's an unlucky end to the set for the Scorpions because Maggie O'Reilly there had done a really good job of un unsettling the momentum of the, the Rebels. But it, it came off Mackenzie Davis, so we get again another set of six. And the player there that set up the first try, Andrea Sand, she's in the thick of the action here and we look to see what she can do here. Come back open side, Marama Thomas. Lucia Files tries to cut out and over the top. And ball dips away. Yeah, so they save another onslaught there, the, the Sydney Scorpions. And uh, we'll see they want to get it to their box and they want to work it way up the other end of the field here with about 90 seconds before half time. O'Reilly gets them forward.
second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss. A dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. And most of all, to feel new again. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down. They just think they are. Never little wanna be gangster trying to play hard. <gasps> Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and the chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Welcome back to the championships. We're underway here in the second half of the Women's Open Grand Final. YouTube Rebels in front by one. They've got the opening possession here in the second half. Can they kickstart us? And get another try on the board. When points have been at a premium, Gab, if they can get one here straight away from the restart, they go up by two, it'll be all sorts of pressure on the Scorps. Yes, yeah, we see there, Fouds. No, she hasn't made the touch, so that's a try, as you said, Scott, in the opening set. And we may see more tries in this second half. We see Lucia Folds there opening her account for the grand final and takes score out to 2-0 to the Rebels. Knows where the camera is as well, Lush. You're in the big shuckers, and it was just kicking away from that point. Wow, she got rid of what, one, two, three defenders. They just held off her, and it was just how she flicked the switch here. Look at this. Yeah, and this will look great on the replay. I think we'll get a, a bit of a wave or a, a high five as she scores the try. She turns straight to the camera. We see it on screen. Big smile. Oh, I didn't see it on camera. 2-0. Now, Scorps really need to respond here. On the run. Davis off the left foot. Very dangerous in that position. UQ be coming out of their end of the field. My might off the first. Tiani Bryce now shows it. We'll head down on field with Jack Rogers, who's got all the information from the halftime break. Well, the Scorpions camp at halftime. I've known Barry Gibson, the coach, for a very long time, and you can just see it in his eyes. He, uh, he said to the, the players, he said, you've got them rattled despite the scoreline. Uh, you've got to beat on fitness at the tail end here. So the Scorpions, they didn't look gassed at all. Uh, they believe that UQR, so that's really what this battle is about now. It's a war of attrition, and uh, it will be so interesting to see if the Scorpions can bounce back here. Scotty, back to you. Thank you, Jack. Yeah, more pressure after leaking the first try of the second half for the Scorpions. It'll be interesting to see how they're feeling at the moment in the early stages of the second half as Norman plays it. Ellis gets herself into the in-goal area looking for support and finds it on the left-hand side. Referees are going to point to the spot. Great work. Well, you've called her early, Gab. While you're at Ellis... Well, it's going to be a strike play. She sets up their first try here to kickstart them in the grand final. Yeah, she's so hard to contain. She just bounces off one foot and she gets the ball out there to, to Piper Marchant to open up the account for the Scorpions. And 
Yeah, it's very hard to defend when you're as quick as that. And, and she did well there, Marge, and she had to kind of keep her feet in the field of play. And uh, Jack's called, and they're, and they're back on the scoreboard, and it's game back on 2-1, Rebels over Scorpions. It's a great finish. Hardly any room to work with. Might have got it down. First try on the board. Rebels now looking to hit straight back. Sammy Joe is caught. Forced to retrieve back out to the seven. And this is probably more of the game we were expecting where we've already had, we only had a few minutes into the second half and we've already seen two tries and that's what we're expecting and, and now it's delivering here. It's a beautiful pass out wide. We'll see what the referees are going to do. I've, yeah, they're going to award the try there. And you're 100% right. It was the early release from Ashurst. Pretty much as soon as she got it in her hands, just let it rip as the retrieving defence was coming back from the Scorpions. Too much to ask to try and get across there and make the touch Ellie Wilson. And all of a sudden, we've already seen three tries here in the second half, and I think things are starting to open up. Yeah, they sure are. And you see, as she, she got that ball on the seven-metre line, which gave her time and space, and she just needed that moment there. As we see there, Scorpions looking to score straight back. It's out for good hands for Mayolo. It's out in front. Kenzie Davis. Let one sing. Here she goes, working with Petey. Yet again in the middle of the field for the Scorpions. O'Reilly plays it. Do they go down the short side? They've got all the numbers there, the UQ Rebels. Referees just coming together quickly here. Zach Jenrick and Jordan Randall, they say six touch. Yeah, it was really close there, but and she doesn't need much space, Mackenzie Davis, because she's got that little skip out. Uh, but it was a, a really good touch there. And here we'll see UQ Rebels will... They'll get back. They'll come straight up the field. You'll see Mai Mai take a hit before she exits the field. Skips away from O'Reilly. Skips away from another as well and picks up valuable metres for the UQ Rebels. And for young people watching there, she skipped out, but she didn't then try to beat another player. She found a player so they could stick to their processes. So very good play there by Mai Mai. We see another oh, half opportunity. Yeah. They've got a penalty. Yeah, Lucia Falls just... Sliding across field. Don't want to hold off her too often. It just looks like she's cruising, cruising. Then all of a sudden, like we saw with the first try here in the second half, she just flicks the switch and then she's gone. Yeah, she's come to life in the second half and that and that try really has ignited her as we see a nice long dive there. Good touch there by Maggie O'Reilly. She had a really good defensive game, Maggie O'Reilly. Rick Donovan comes back to the seven-metre line to play it. Marama Thomas directing traffic. They come... Back out to the right-hand side. Ball dips away in front of Olivia Goodsell. Yeah, she had no no chance there to get it, Goodsell. Uh, she's taken some great catches today, but that one was a bit beyond her reach. It's Carruthers. Petey now out in front. Mayolo plays it. His replacements come onto the field here for the Scorps. Norman just having to take an extra couple of steps to go over to pick that one up. Referees have picked up a little infringement. Yeah, and it's a strong contact in defence by Caitlin Blades there, and she just held the, the player that was trying to roll the ball. She held her up, and it, it caused an error. So well done out there by Caitlin Blades. Lucia Folds, the happy to burn her touch. Just allows the Rebels an opportunity to get some replacement players on. Coming in towards the back end of the set, Ashurst. Nice touch there from Norman. You can hear, hear from our microphones down near the field, they're just saying run. And I think that'll be directed from Renee Murphy and the UQ's Rebel coach. They just want to, they want to run at them and, and go all day. So they've been fit and fast all weekend and they'll be wanting to, to finish off in that manner as well. So a nice little recycle play there from the Scorpions. O'Reilly straight and hard coming into the line. Mackenzie Davis kicks away off the right foot, gets into the in-goal area, needs support, slides oh. in there and finds that support. Back with Maggie O'Reilly. And they needed that one, the Scorpions. They're still hanging in this game. They're down by one, 3-2 on the athlete scoreboard. <laughs> this is going to look awesome. It's like she got shot out of a cannon there, Mackenzie Davis. As she ran along near the dead ball line. She slipped, still managed to find a player and full stretched out Maggie O'Reilly. I spoke about her defence so far in this game and she's come up with an important try there for the Sydney Scorpions and 3-2. It's going to be an exciting finish, Scott. This young superstar of our game. Recently selected in the Australian Mixed Open team to head over to the, the World Cup. 
She's starting to be an influence here in the grand final. And talk about players who are influential. That is Tiani Bryce. This young lady has scored another try here for the Rebels just to push them back out by two. Yeah, so they've done all the good work to get the try back and back in the game here. And you'll see it just opened up. Andre Sands pops it back into Bryson. As we said, she's had a really good tournament. Pressure back on the Scorps just when they feel like they're getting themselves back in the game. The UQ Rebels just seem to find a way to answer the call. And keep that buffer between the two teams. Yeah, there's still pl there's still plenty of time left in the game. I think we're going to see a lot more tries with Shelley Davis with Dybal drop back in, and that's been their pet play this weekend. They've tried that with success many occasions, and they didn't get the try, but they've got a penalty, and um, we might see them try that again, and then you might see a, a variation or an option on that. We call that conditioning in our game. You, you try and get the defence to go one way, run it a few times, and then you come back with one of your different options. Like this battle in the middle of the field between Davis and Rebecca Maimai, two very similar players, just absolute stalwarts for their team. They're looking to set up here again. Oh, Reset themselves now. Davis directing traffic at the moment, getting players into position. They come to the open side. You know, space to work with. They'll put the brakes on and come back out. Alicia Tapar plays it. Back in field again. Davis barking the instructions here for the Scorps. Dival plays it. Davis is going to get it back. Has a look up. Just didn't quite get it all out of the hands. No, it looked like she was trying to wind up and get that pass out to the winger, but she just couldn't get her positioning on the hands correct there. So we're just looking down and, and the coaches in the Scorpions box are, are writing a few notes and maybe going to make a few adjustments and, and tell their players as they come off into the box. Still look very calm. And like Jack said, reporting up, and they felt like they were still in control even while they've been down on the scoreboard. And that's still reflected with how they're shaping up over on the sidelines for the Sydney Scorpions. As Gab said, still plenty of time left to go in this one. That's better defence from the Scorpions. Scott, oh, yeah. and they forced Hannah an error. Dival. Experience there of Dybal. Not the biggest player out there, but she threw a lot into that without being over vigorous as well. Earns her team the football back. That was a big play there from one of their big players. Yeah, and they got a penalty there again for, for not giving the ball back to the attack right on the mark. So they got mushed up a couple of metres. So here we see they'll be looking to... They've got Ellis, Aero, O'Reilly and obviously Davis. We'll, we'll probably see Ellis and Davis work together. And Danny Norman, of course... Shaping up now as Davis comes on the sweep. Kenzie Davis back in field. They'll be looking for phase play. They send it out. They're well covered. O'Reilly puts the brakes on. Comes off the right foot. Back to Mackenzie Davis. Feeds it to Danny Norman who strolls over. What a try from the Sydney Scorpions. They just didn't give up on the play. Never say die attitude. The Scorpions continue to claw their way back into this women's final. Yeah, and they're patient there. The ball went out one way. They couldn't see a gap, so they're light on their feet. They all got back, and you see they became live players. If they don't take that step back there, Davis, and then she claps her hands. She passes to Danielle Norman, and... Uh, yeah, we're back in the game. 4-3 for the Scorpions. The Rebels still hold a narrow lead, but they really need to get a stop here, the Scorps. Uh, but UQ Rebels, we know they're synonymous with fighting back straight away. And we see another beautiful pass there. Good for the corner, slings it back in field. Well, they saw the space out there on the left. It was definitely worth the shot. Goodsell could feel the pressure coming back in. Dybal again, which is inspirational for the Sydney Scorpions team. First touch, and she picks up 15 metres and gets them on the front foot. Is the momentum starting to change? You can feel like there's plenty of energy now and they're going to give a penalty away, the UQ Rebels. Another set of six here for the Scorps. Yeah, there's definitely been a momentum shift in the last few minutes. And you're right, it was a couple of runs going into their box. And now they've got a fresh set of six. And the young lady we've been speaking about this game, we've got Ellis. She's about to get the ball in hand here. And it looks like she's going to work with Danielle Norman again. Hold things up. Carruthers takes a look at the UQ defence. Ellis, all the Scorps tied in around the ball. They come back to Carruthers, comes off the right foot. This is the phase play again, but they just lost the cut touch count there, the Scorps. Yeah, and well done by the UQ Rebels. They were under pressure and they want to hold on to this narrow lead and they're just marking the spot there. Yes, and they'll be looking pass. for a strong set, Scott, to, to go back to, to what they know and what's been successful for them this weekend. And 
Club is just a little bit too much there. She's trying to be eager again and be physical in the play of the ball. Trying to win possession back for a team. It's early in the touch count. It might not hurt them too much, but this is important around the midfield now for the Scorpions. They want to try and keep the Rebels as far away from that seven-metre strike zone, which they're marching towards now. Yeah, and you see they've got my mind Bryce on there, and they'll be working together. Bryce here, she's gone behind the line, in fact. Oh, big touch, mate. Zach Jenrick just holding things up. It was good work from Carruthers. She got beaten the first occasion. Had to come back again as we have a look. She dives there on the ground, but it was the covering defence as well. They snuffed that one out. Yeah, she did a really good job there. As we see, see there, Mayolo drive up the field, and that's what they need. The Scorpions are getting a bit of momentum here with Davis. Back with Dyball. Davis, early ball. Dyball, this running game out in front of Petey. It was too much. Unfortunately, they get the penalty. Full set of six here for the Scorpions. And with only a few minutes left on the clock, It'll be interesting to see what the Scorpions come up with and, and I guess who they put on the field, who they think the ones are that they can uh, get this game back to an even keel with a couple of minutes left on the clock. You can see Dyball's out there with Davis and I think Danny Norman's back on as well out in this right link. Come back to the open side ball, dipping away. Maiola's done a great job to hang on to that if she has. Put under a mountain of pressure. That could be an important moment in this set as well. Maintaining possession here for the Scorpions. Dyball half. Davis takes them on herself. The touch has been made. They've got one more to come. The Scorpions. Minute and a half left on the clock. Yeah, and that makes it hard. She's coming into the last touch. She's going to need something individual brilliance here off one of the girls. As we see an overlap potentially. Oh, Mayolo flicks it back over the top. Ooh. They get a repeat set. You can wow. see hands on hips there. They're looking quite tired out there now. They've been out there for a while, the um, UQ Rebels defending. And here we see Mackenzie Davis back on the field working with Davis. Well, this is a huge moment in the grand final. The Sydney Scorpions looking to level up the scores. 60 seconds left in this game. Open side, Petey comes off the left foot. Petey doesn't get away from the second. Danita Smith there, mate. Touch. And there's a penalty, another set of six here for the Sydney Scorpions. And that's the second penalty. The, the, the clock is winding down as we speak, but if they draw another penalty here with about 30 seconds to go, one of the UQ Rebels will have to go, and that could be it. There it is. Penalty has been given. Jordan Randall, that might be the second. No player has been pulled out here for the Rebels. They've got to be careful, though. There's still time on the clock. Mackenzie Davis almost on the outside of Rebecca Maimai. Play on is the call. She was short of the line. The Sydney Scorpions have leveled things up here in the women's grand final. And, of course, they went to Mackenzie Davis, and she's hard enough to defend six on six. But when it's six on five, as we go back to the action, even Stevens. Scott, what are we going to see in the last ten seconds? Well, they're still going to have one final crack here. The Rebels, they've already made their way downfield. Andreas and Huda sounds in the background. We're going to Bristol Paints extra time. Well, how fitting. What a comeback from the Sydney Scorpions. Down by two during stages there in the second half. They level it up. That mountain of pressure. Back-to-back -back sets. Attacking the line too much for the Rebels. Into extra time we go, Gab. Yeah, and I think everybody in the crowd, and I know Scott, you and I are both happy with a drop-off here because it's been an exciting game. It wasn't the high-scoring affair we, we were expecting originally, but that second half really really came to life, and it's a toss of the coin here as to who wins this championship. Yeah, absolutely. So for those that might be tuning in that might be not too familiar with the sport of touch football, extra time period. We have two minutes on the clock to start. We drop from six players on the field now to four on four. If one of the teams scores during that two-minute period... That team will win. If scores are still level at the end of that two-minute period, we drop down to three on three. The game is live from that point on. Next try wins. It's all on the line to see who are going to be the 2024 Women's Open champions. And if there are, they were nerves before the game or at half time, these I girls that are going to be taking the field, the nerves will have just gone up a notch. I mean, it's what we play for. It's these big moments in these big games at the championships, but it doesn't mean there'll be uh, no nerves they come onto the field. But 
I don't know who these coaches are going to put on because there is strike power across both teams and it's they're hard decisions to make, but uh, we see the UQ Rebels walking out to the field first and it looks like we've got Fields and Mai Mai with Bryce and Andreas and coming lining up for the UQ Rebels. And from the Scorpions, it looks like Shelley Davis, Hannah Dyball, Mackenzie Davis and young gun Moira Ellis. Wow, what a match. Both teams making their way on. Message from the sideline, Jack Rogers was near the UQ bench. He said they look really calm. They just focus on their breathing for that whole uh, lead-up coming into the extra time period. They're nice and calm. And this is important as well. They tapped in the second half to kick starters. They get the tap here in extra time. Slight advantage here for the Rebels in the first possession. Big defensive play needed here from the Scorpions. Yeah, because with only four players on the field, obviously, Scott, it opens up the space. And these players with the footwork and, and ball skills they have there, it's super hard to defend. It's for a great touch from Hannah Dybul. Lucia, ball in hand. It's Hinarangi who's directing things at the moment. Tiani Bryce on the sweep. Back inside to Hinarangi Andreas and UQ Rebels strike first here in extra time. Yeah, and again, it's super hard to stop there. So the space opened up and with the ball moving the hash. She took him wide, Bryce, and then drops it back in. And for Mackenzie Davis there, she just she couldn't be out and in at the same time. And it, it still took a good put down by Andreas Sand. And uh, it'll be right of reply here for the Scorpions. Mackenzie Davis, Hannah Dybul, Maria Ellis, Danny Norman. The four on the field here for the Scorpions. They need to score this set. Can they stay in this women's grand final? Mackenzie Davis, what a performance. It's been for her. She takes the on. She has leveled it up. This young superstar. And in big moments, you want your gun players with the ball in hand. She said, give it to me. And she levels it up yet again. And we're going to see here, there's 30 seconds left on the clock for this initial two minutes. If UQ Rebels score here, it, it's game over, championship to UQ Rebels. But I want this game to keep on going, Scott. It's an absolute belter of a grand final. Bella Folds to my my Andreasen. A little bit of footwork. They get the repeat set. No, that's still an important phase because they will maintain possession. If the clock expires, they drop the three on three, which is what's going to happen right now. Full set of six to work with here in the attacking zone on the field. So both teams taking an opportunity to make a couple of quick replacements. Three on three now to decide who are going to be the women's champions and they've still got a few touches up the sleeve. So UQ Rebels are definitely in the driver's seat here. They've got a few touches. They've got to try not to waste. As you can see, the Scorpions trying to race up outside that seven. They come to Tiani Bryce. Right foot gets away on the outside. Shelley Davis is claiming the touch. He doesn't get it. Zach Jenrick points to the spot. The University of Queensland Rebels have won the Women's Open Championship in a dramatic extra time period. Their first national championships. What a game. What an absolutely great game. You can see the celebration, the smiles on the face of the UQ Rebels. There's hugs all around and Credit to the Sydney Scorpions. It's, it, it's very hard to defend your line with six on six, but when it's down to three on three, it's near impossible with the strike power that the UQ Rebels have. But they've been amazing all weekend, the UQ Rebels, and uh, well-deserved winner, Scott. Yeah, you're 100% right. The Scorps can hold their head up because they were down during that game, but they were never out. They were down by two. They managed to find a way to claw themselves back into the game, send it into extra time. You thought after the Rebels scored first, they were up against it. They went down the other end again. Mackenzie Davis continued it on, but they just couldn't quite hold out. And this absolute superstar team, the University of Queensland, they win their first national championship. What an amazing Women's Open grand final, yep. Such a great grand final. I'm still, I, as I said, I wish it was, the play is minor, but I was wishing it could go on for a few minutes longer. But, uh, yeah, superstars all over the field. It'd be hard to pick a player of the match out of that. But uh, you can see hugs all around. They've had a great game on the field and it was played in the right spirit, which is a beauty of our sport. And, yeah, a, a new rivalry is born. Absolutely. We're going to head down on field. Jack Rogers will grab the captains from the UQ Rebels, soak up all the atmosphere and find out all the things that happened in this amazing women's final. You can see what it means to the players out there. That's one of the captains right there, Sammy Joe Curtis. 
We'll take a quick break and be back down on field with all the action. Stay with us. More to come. Men's Open Grand Final. Swans taking on the Hornets. Stay with us. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, the dedicated Dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it! Well, we're in the middle of the field here after that scintillating women's final. Sammy Jo Curtis and Hingarani uh, Andreasen, try my hardest, <laughs> uh, got the win done in, in the end, guys. It looked shaky there for a moment. 4-2 was the score, but you got it done in the drop-off. How does it feel, Sammy Jo? I'll go to you first. It feels amazing. Um, it's our first time here as UQ, and this is a really special group. And Oh, I'm sorry. Um, being here with these guys just means so much more than like, anything we've ever played before. So, yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I can see the tears uh, in full motion here, and we've got the support crew in tow. So it would be great to hear a little bit about this Scorpion side. I'm sure you came out here. Um, tough team to beat. But the belief, I could see it from the box early on. Do you want to talk a little bit to that? Yeah, that's a phenomenal bunch of girls. We always know when we come and get up against them that they're just they're a different breed. They they really make us work for it. And they had some mamas come back and some new mamas, and they held their own, and they were amazing. And we just knew that we had to wear these shirts with pride and play for our club. And you know. Do as hard as we can and get that win, and we're happy to get it. Well, it's the trifecta now for you, Q. You picked up Metro, State Cup, and a national title. Where to from here? Keep going. Oh, no, yeah, do it again. <laughs> yeah. Well, enjoy uh, the celebrations. Won't keep you from your team now. Let the emotions run wild. Awesome win here at the championships. Brought to you by Inferno. We'll run to ads. comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com.
Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. The roast is calling. Chicken is the king. The new burger range from Red Rooster. It's in all of us. A craving to feel new again. To see something new that will blow our minds. Or meet someone new who will change it. New South Wales. A place to feel free. To feel alive. But most of all, to feel new again. Think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Get down, they just think they are. Never know wanna be gangster trying to play hard. Hi, I'm Scott Prince, Bristol Ambassador. I'm inviting you to join me in signing up for Team Bristol. So what is Team Bristol? It's a club for those who play touch footy. You'll get tips and tricks when it comes to painting, exclusive offers, and a chance to win prizes throughout the year. It's easy to sign up. Visit the Bristol website. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. Welcome back to the championships and both teams are in the tunnel here for the final game of this year's NTL Championships. Brought to you by Inferno. The South West Queensland Swans have made it through to their first men's at Premier Grand Final. They're taking on the Hunter Western Hornets. Last year's runners-up, Scott McAllister and Gab Rose with you in commentary. This is going to be a cracking match to finish off the championships this year. Two top teams from each pool have made their way to the Grand Final. Similar to what occurred in the women's grand final and it's all going to be on they all look pretty friendly at the moment I must say I don't think that's going to last much longer now as we see it looks like just in our screens it looks like a little bit of a sun shower that could turn into something a bit more ominous as the game goes on but uh, if this game lives up to what we just saw in the, the women's open grand final then we're in for an absolutely great game Scott three referees are making their way out onto the field Kim Skelly and David Baggio Tony Calabria and right on cue you can see the spits as the teams are about to make their way out onto the field. A little bit of rain to add another added element into this grand final. Semi-final results, results the Hornets tough contest. 6-5 victory over last year's champions the CQ Bulls. And for the Swans they won 8-5 over the Sydney Mets in what was a dramatic semi-final gap. One of their star players, Lockie Pierce, sent off during that game, but the Swans scored three tries with five players on the field during the period where Pierce was sent off, and it ended up being the difference with that 8 5 final victory. Yeah. And Lockie Pierce, as a result, is out of the grand final after being sent off in the semi final as the skies really start to open up. Yeah, we've got everything here. We've got sunshine in one corner. We've got a rainbow out the back. And then we've got the rain that's getting a little bit heavier now. And we've seen rain 
on and off throughout the weekend. We've had a dry track for most of today, but uh, the crowd's scattering to get up a little bit higher in the stand. But, yeah, the Hornets had a really tough win in their semi-final. They were actually down 2-0 early in the game, Scott, and they... They just worked their way back into it with their, you know, and their coaches didn't panic either and, and pass that message on to their players. And as we see here, the Hornets coming out and it's, we're inside, so we're nice and dry, but it's it's looking quite heavy, Scott. It's it's quite a, a tricky condition. Like we said, the rain's starting to come. If you look to what's the southern end of the field, still a little bit of blue skies with the northern, and you can see their coaching staff having a look up at the, at the heavens there, wondering where this has come from. It really has just blown in over the last five to 10 minutes we had perfect conditions it must be said for the women's open grand final and all of a sudden as soon as that game finished we just saw the clouds start to roll through hopefully it's just a, a brief shower and we can get some uh, dry football here for the men's open grand final the hornets their last one in 2020 they won the year before as well in 2019 and like we said the swans looking for their first national title both teams have lined up for the national anthem we'll take a quick break and head down on field. teams make their way to the sideline. They'll have a last two-minute warm-up. And for the Swans, who we can see on screen, like we said, their first national final. Uh, what do you think the nerves are going to be like? They've got a, a good balance of experienced players, but some real young up-and-coming superstars in the game. But there's still a big game, big moment. You're playing a big team in the Hunter Western Hornets here in the final as well as we take a look at the Bristol Paints grand final team list. Yeah, and again, I mean, this weather's not going to help the nerves because then you're worried about your passing and what you might be used to long passes or a free-flowing game. You've suddenly got to change your game plan a little bit. But again, you look at the Swans. They've got Jake Notley. They've got Riley Madden. They've got uh, you know, right down and obviously number 13 there, Blaze Prendergast, he's definitely one to look at a future superstar of our game. And on the Hunter Hornets, we had Chris Lennon took an amazing intercept try in the semi-final. We got William Eggleton over the other side. We got Riley Jones. And of course, how could we forget Dylan Thompson? Yeah, an absolute stalwart of this Hunter Western Hornets team. Well, the good news is, though, it's still raining at the moment. It's eased off. Hopefully that's the, the rain and the shower out of the way. Just to give the boys a little drenching right before the start of this grand final. Make the ball a little bit slippery for the opening stages as well. It won't phase them. It will not phase them one bit. Nope. Both teams will they'll be playing dry with a footy before you know it. Don't worry about that. They sure will. It looked like it, the wind's kind of picked up for a few minutes there. It might have settled again. So hopefully it's blown in and, and blown out. But... We've seen everything, bass and thunder and lightning, Scott. So let's hope the rain does settle. And as the players are just giving their and coaches are having their last minute messages as they go into the field, and uh, yeah, it's going to be another highly, uh, very ga a game of high quality. We should see here in the men's grand final. Swans head out to the field first. Hornets now make their way out. They'll have the opening possession here. In the men's open grand final, final match of the championships presented by Inferno for 2024. What a tournament it has been over the last three days. Doug Badger gets us underway. Luke Kane takes the first tap. Yeah, and they've started at speed here, the, the Hunter Hornets, and they'll be looking to improve in the semi final. As we said, they got behind the eight ball, but uh, doesn't look like it's going to happen here in the grand final. Lennon sends it out to Doherty. One final touch to come. They come up nice and early on Lennon. He sends a nice ball on the outside. Dave Richards is there. 
to make the contact. It comes out of the hands of the Hornets. And let's see how the Swans go with their first possession. They do a great job to put it through the hands and make their way all the way out to the left-hand side of the field and get some changes on there. Yeah, and it hasn't changed any game plans yet, the wet weather. So the ball movement straight to the box. And, and there we see they're coming in at speed. So Jake Notley. His Deacon Prendergast now picks up, tries to get away and can't. Nice work from Kane in defence. He's now in the Hornets. He'll be looking to get some replacement players on. Yeah, and you don't want to give Blaze any blades of grass because he'll be he'll be off and away and behind the scoreline before you know it. Rain continuing to fall here in Coffs Harbour. Thompson now from half. Has a look up, short ball. They've got three on two out this side. Nice slide defence. Notley makes the touch. Even with the slippery conditions, both teams completing their sets of six so far. And they're just playing nice, smart football at the moment. Yeah, it's been a really high quality and, and fast start, as we see. They're going to let the ball do the work out here and, and move it out to the right-hand side. Coming for a strike dump there. Beautiful pass. Oh, and just hoiking it over the shoulder. They did a pretty good job to get that one to go back there, Madden. It's just a hope and pray ball. It did fall into the hands there of Camp. Yeah, and they were, they'll be happy with the finish to that set there, the Swans. So working their way into this game, they finish the ball down on the opposition seven, making it hard for them to get to their box. Nice work kicking away and picking up some valuable extra metres was Liam Squires. As Langbridge gets it down, Lennon footwork. They're looking to go down the short side. Also looking for a repeat set here, Langbridge. And signaling to the referees. They don't agree. They say six touch and nice positive work here from the Swans. Straight back on the football and they get to work. Yeah, they sure do. So they were, they were claiming six to go, the, the Hornets, but it wasn't to be. So we might see, yeah, it's going to be the, our first penalty of the game, I think, Scott. Yeah, it certainly is. Goes in favour of the Swans. All just spewing out was from the contact. As Richard goes forward, and just as we say that, Gab, the rain's starting to hang around, and it looks like it's becoming a little bit heavier now. Yeah, I was just going to say, Scott, it looks like, you know, they're going to have to be a little bit careful in those roll balls because the ball will be slippery. As we see some great face plays here, face play here from the Swans, and a penalty as well. Yeah, it was great lead-up work from Southwest Queensland. Is Jake Notley on screen? As we take a look at the DoorDash replay, Carmody from half. Yeah, he did. Oh, it's absolutely bucketing down. I'm sure if you can hear it on your on your TV screens, but uh, it's definitely set in at this point. Hardly see the players from our commentary box. Carmody taking it to the line, Lennon getting his hands on the ball. And the other thing, Scott, we're going to see, the jerseys aren't too dissimilar. I mean, one's purple and one's navy, but now that they're both soaking wet, only that the Swans have got the, the white patch on the front of their jersey, uh, it's going to make it difficult if there's breaks made for the players to know who's who and, and where they're from. Carmody, early ball, back on the inside. Nice work, standing stoic on the line there. Now there's a bit of conversation going on between the players and the referees. It is a penalty here to the Southwest Queensland Swans. It was William Eggleton, and he had to make the touch there. He came across, and it was a, it was a really good touch. Obviously, Carmody, he's trying to work his magic. Receives it back, said plenty of touches, says Carmody. Nice smart football there from Moore. Might have been looking to shape up for FaZe. Heggett just probably wasn't quite in position... And they just take the touch and restart yet again. Coming in again, Moore has got a beautiful left to right, throws it and it just spews out of the hands there of Jake Notley. Penalty here to the Hornets as well. And we've seen a lot of tries with some flick passes and, and quick tap-ons over the course of the weekend, but uh, these weather conditions are going to make that extremely difficult. So we're, we're probably going to see tries come from different, different ways this, this afternoon, Scott. Players rolling onto the field here for the Hornets. Nice running game coming out of the interchange area. Ball out in front. They're on the back foot. Big touch needed. And the big touch is exactly what they get. Matthew Moore, full stretch. There he is, the man on screen. Yes, yeah, so it was Matthew versus Matthew there. Matthew Atkins was racing down the sideline. to see a really good run there by James Hegedus. But he's been called back. You look on the replay here. Beautiful touch. Nearly slid into our camera down there on the sideline. A little bit of a loose play. The ball referee say play on. Prendergast feeds up. Putting hard yards in here. The Swans. Last touch for them now. Richards picks up. Takes off and gets it away from the defence. Oh, flick ball out the back. And they've come there and made the touch. 
They'll eventually make the call of a penalty. Touch and pass is the call. Oh, oh, razzle dazzle from the Swannies here in the GF. Yeah, don't worry about the weather. It's great. He just sliced through and evaded with a little skip out, and he he looked for Blaze with a little flick pass, but uh, yeah, the defence was, was right the, on his tail. Well, he got clipped on the boot there, which might have resulted in uh, Davy Richards' carefree uh, flick back on the inside. But uh, well. Lit it up there for the Swans, and now the Hornets make the mistake heading towards their box. Yeah, and we've spoken about all weekend, Scott. It's it's difficult when you make an error coming off your line because you then have to defend, and it's the pressure valve. It just turns up a little bit. So, and you've got Blaze Prendergast out there. It, it, it's difficult to stop. Dancing around is Nolan. Oh, Prendergast gets away. Good recovery. Hugh Doherty having to come in. Footwork there of Prendergast. Dancing away from that sniping defender coming up out of the line from the Hornets. Yeah, and there's no way through yet for either team. We're, we're just over six minutes into the, the first half and they're trying to get the dump here on the seven. And light footwork again. He's not late. He's got fast feet as well. Going right foot, left foot, picks it up with one hand. Sloppy play the ball there from the Swans. Couldn't capitalise on that opportunity. Now and there, those errors in the roll ball, they'll be wanting to fix up. And when you're in grand finals, you, you've got to make those moments count in the game because you don't get too many of them. Punch out of the box here for the Hornets. It's Langridge gets away, hits him on the front foot, just a metre short of the seven metre line. Landon now, oh, picked off Aaron Camp. It's going to be a fair pass to get over the top of that tall young man out on the left wing for the Swans. Yeah, he's super tall, and he was right up in the channel there. So he, he made it hard to get the pass over the top of him, but he also had his link covered there. So really good wing work by Vendercamp there. He's clean play the ball as Ward receives it back. Ward just anchors one over the top to his brother. He's been having to reach for it. And it might have just been a little bit too adventurous there in these conditions, and it was eventually a penalty to the Hornets, and they needed that, and they want to drive the ball up the field. And now we see that them make another error, and they won't be happy. And similar to the first, the semi-final, they they just couldn't get out of their own half and end up behind the scoreboard. So we'll see what transpires here. Here's Matthew Moore He's dancing around, plays it on the seventh. He'll hold things up. And his brother sends it back in field. Ryan Ward, little pop-out play here for Ben Moore. Short ball to Notley. No touch has been made. Great honesty there from Hugh Doherty. It's the Southwest Queensland Swans who score first here in the men's grand final. Yeah, and we'll see on the replay, we actually did see a little flick pass and then it took like a, a circus dive. And we see Jake Notley open up the scoring for the, for the Swans here. Little look like he was going to go down. Beautiful pass and skipped over the top of the defender with great honesty and it's 1-0 to the Swans. And they've had the better of the field in position down the attacking end of the field, the Swans. Start this grand final. They get the first points on the board. The rain has stopped momentarily but still going to be very wet, very tricky conditions for both these two teams to manage for the remainder here of the first half. Yeah, and that try came on the back of an, an error from the Hornets coming out of their line. And now we see here, in, in contrast, an error from the Swans. And the Hornets looking to, to utilise the ball straight away as the Swans make some replacements. Yeah, they'll kill a couple of touches here, the Hornets, as they get some replacement players on. And footwork. They come up and make the touch on Josh Moffat. And then into half. They feed it. You can Lennon see there, Hegedus. Ooh, up in the line there. Matt Moore, he, it's almost like he didn't want to play at it. Just bounced off his bounced off his arm. Set of six here. Tim Skelly says to roll the ball. So Moffat doing on the first. Plays it in the seven. Moffat footwork down. They go for phase. Early ball was loose. Did he hold on to it? No, it took a bit of the grass. Yeah, referee says no there. He, he didn't pick the ball up, but uh, they, were, they were good at face playing. Then that's, that's one of their key elements, the Hornets, and it, it was on show there. Got to head down to the sideline. A very wet Jack Rogers. Oh, yeah, it's dried up a little bit now. Thank you very much, Scott. Uh, but it's changed the game plan a lot. The ball is like a cake of soap oh, out there. Try here, oh. Straight through, <laughs> sliding away, Mac Nolan. Well, really, against 
recent rain, the South West Queensland Swans will head back down to you, Jack. What a try that oh. was from the Swannies. I mean, I just caught the tail end of that, and uh, yeah, they got pace to boot, do they, this Swan side? And I was about to say, the ball's like a cake of soap, so the best thing to do at the end of the day, and I did speak to Carly Banks about this in the Hornets camp, you just got to run the ball. And all these extra passes, they're not helping. Run, run, and run again. Scott, back to you. As so we take a look at the replay here, Nolan on the outside, they just held off him, and it was just that kick away off the right foot. Too much to deal with. We see here they've hit straight back here, the, the Hornets, and they'll be happy then. That looks, we're seeing the replay, it opened up too easily there, and it's a uh, game on our hands again, and it's 2 1 in favour of the Swans over the Hornets. We look at the replay here, comes in, little trick play, phase play, and that's what I was talking about before. They're very good at that. We see a try there. Looks like it's Liam Squires, and he scored a few tries this weekend. Another one to his name. Swan's still in front. The men's open grand final on the athlete scoreboard. 2-1. Hornets getting their first try. Getting themselves into the game now. Notley goes long out to Quinn Livin. Richards back to Tom who slips. And Langridge pops up out of the line and takes the intercept. And he'll come back. No advantage gain there over the mark penalty. Signaled by Kim Skelly. Yeah, and they get the penalty right on the seven metres. And, and they're just going to go back towards their wing. Get some fresh players on, and uh, they're definitely working into this match now, the, the Hornets. They've, they've gotten rid of those errors coming out of their line, and, and they're getting a little bit more field position down the Swans' end of the field. Ollie Jones ducks the head there. It's going to be a penalty here to the Hornets. Yeah, he did duck the head there, and uh, the referee's just stalling play for a moment, just slowing things down, and Swans going to be moved back towards their line. And again, we've got Dylan Thompson on here, and, and he'll be the one to watch as they come into the line. Jones on the sweep, comes off the left foot. Nice defence in the middle. Bailey Deacon makes the touch. Yeah, beautiful little step there by Riley Jones. Here's ball in hand again. Thompson from half. Lennon punches through. Dives in, puts the ball in one hand. They look pretty confident here, the Hornets. Referees agree. Back-to-back -back tries for the Hunter Western Hornets. Scores locked up in the men's final. Yeah, and this will look good on the replay here. And then we saw in the semi final, it's got length of field intercept. And here, close range. And with this wet weather, you can just slide, and the ball just straight out in front. Gets the ball back through the middle. Great try. Look at that. The finish. Another superstar of our game, Chris Lennon. Starting to influence himself now into this men's final. Good hands from Nolan. Get a penalty. Yeah, I think we'll find the call there was that Josh Moffat, number seven, had, had moved up to sat a little bit too quickly there, Scott. Moore plays it. Higginis on the sweep. Gets it back from Carmody. Tries to burrow his way in underneath. It's a friendly little <laughs> help up as well, Jimmy Higginis. I did. He went head first there. Pretty brave ducking in underneath defenders like that. Matthew Moore, Nolan doesn't kick away again. They're holding off him yet again. This time they make the touch. Well, he's looking dangerous at the moment, Mac Nolan. Eagleton with a huge touch there. Now Carmody again back on the inside to Hegedus. And another big touch. Who else? The 23 will Eagleton back to back. Big efforts in defence. Yeah, this will look good on the replay there. So they dump it on the seven. They pop it back inside. And Eagleton, he's made about at least three try saving touches already in this first half. Some big moments for his team, for this young man. Higgins will come back and play it on the seven. This is the fifth and final play of the set. Carmody's not going to be able to get away from Langbridge. Flicks it back. Langbridge plays it on the seven. Now, and they managed to hold him out there. It was a good job by the Hornets in defence, and it, it, it took some amazing touch. You see them coming on at speed here now, the Hornets. Good tight, getting them straight and forward. And then the try scorer links up with Kane. Gets away from Hegedus now. Lennon picks up, goes, gets into the in goal area, looking for support. Bit of contact, finds Floyd Ty on the back of it. They've scored again here, the Hornets, and now they're in front. Yeah, and hasn't Christopher Lennon injected himself into this game in the last couple of minutes? So you see Tiger came on at speed, you know, with those orange boots. It was a great latch and just gave Chris Lennon an opportunity to get out from half. A little bit of argy-bargy, but he worked his way out of that and a, a good try there by Floyd Tiger. And 
before you know it now, Hornets are in the front. It was great work from Ty. You can see he almost just popped himself right out of the, the shot of the camera there. And that was what it took to get away from the covering defence. He caught it right on the try line in the end. Is now Notley. Dances Notley almost gets around the outside. Geez, they're having to put some big defensive plays on. Mitch Wilton getting it done that time for the Hornets. Yeah, they're really light on their feet, the Swans, and it's, it's taking some great defensive efforts to, to stop them crossing the line, and that's what you'd expect in a grand final at this level of tournament. Moore goes low and hard at the line as Notley tries to flick it out. There's a penalty coming here for the Swans. Hooters about to go. They'll have one last final play. Notley, fast feet, flicks it around and almost reeled in. Wow. Well, both teams head to the sideline. And they'll take a quick breather. And what a first half that was. All Swans to start with. It was a great fight back from the Hornets. And they go into the break with the lead. Yeah, we'll need to take a quick breather after that as well because, as you said, Swans had the ascendancy at the start of the half, but the Hornets came home firing, and it's, it's shaping up to be a really good second half, Scott. Absolutely. We're going to take a look at the Bristol Paints leading try scorers for the championships this year, and our all-abilities athletes scored some amazing tries, and we saw it in the grand final as well with some spectacular plays. Ben Glasby is the Bristol Paints leading try scorer for the championships this year from the all-abilities Tier 2 competition. 21 tries from the Swans. Hopefully the men's open Swans team, they'll be looking to take a little bit of something out of uh, Ben Glasby's effort. That's a fair effort to get 21 tries at a national championship. Amazing. 21 tries. And you see there's a few all abilities uh, players there. And you look the top 10, we've got 21. And, and all the way down to our 10 with, with Kerry Rendell. So ACT Raiders women's 45s. And, and that's a great effort. She's got speed to burn as well. So some amazing try scorers there. And, and huge numbers we see there, Scott. Yeah, exactly. So both teams getting instructions now from their coaching staff. What are the messages, the key messages that are going to be coming out of both boxes here? Let's start with the Swans. You can see their coach, Troy Morgan, laying down the instructions. Yeah, I think he'll be telling them to get back what, to what works, OK? They they had the, the start of the game that was good, but then they started to make a couple of errors coming off their line. And against a quality team with the strike power that the Hornets have, you just cannot afford to do that. But they're all listening. It looks like he's got a few key messages for them. Uh, and they'll come out firing in this second half. You can see what great shots here. You're inside the, the huddle here for the Southwest Queensland Swans. An absolute legend of the sport, Troy Morgan. Former Australian men's open representative, still plays in the Masters divisions for Australia. And he is really clear with his instructions here to his team. Let's go over the other side of the field. The men in the purple, they'll feel like they're probably on top of the game. It's reflected in the scoreboard, only the one try in it, but the way that they worked their way back into the game and then started to get back on top towards the back end of that first half, they definitely you feel like they would feel like they're in top going into the second uh, yeah, 16 minutes. Definitely the back end of that half. They they did the momentum swung towards them. So and it was built on the back of their defence. Obviously we know their strike power and attack, but they they saved some tries down in in their own half and they worked their way up at the field. Some really good latch plays and gave their their speed men time to get out of half. So I reckon it might open up here, Scott, and we'll see uh, some good tries in the second half. Their conditions have definitely improved. The rain has stopped. Doesn't look like we're going to get any more rain here in the second half. It's still going to be a little bit slippery out there for the players to contend with. But you can tell, as soon as the rain stopped, they started the play drive with the footage straight away. And we're going to see plenty of excitement here in the second half. Swans down by one. Hornets in front. 3-2 on the athlete scoreboard. Oh, what about this play? Carmody on the outside. What a set move straight away from the tap-off. Equally good defence from the Hornets. They threw plenty of questions at them there, the Swans. They're coming into the back end of the count now. Looping over the top. It's been taken. Edwards, he's streaking away. Has he got the toe to go? The whole distance. He's looking for support. He'll pull it up. Zero touch. They're straight back onto the football. Oh. Back on the inside. And the Hornets with Eagleton score first here in the second half. What a start. How good is an intercept? Jack Edwards from his own line and very smart play by Edwards. He looks left, he looks right, he was going to throw a speculator. But you'll see here on the replay, he takes it cleanly. I reckon he gets to just before halfway and realises he's not going to be able to score it. He could have thrown left there. Thinks no, I'll play the percentages. Plays the ball, gets the ball baffled Egerton and then it's just open up like the heads there. And Egerton, he had to back up there, but it was a, a great play, and it skipped out to 4-2 to the Hornets. Wow, what a big moment here in the grand final. 
Swans back on the attack. Looking for this short ball. Nothing there. Searching for a repeat set. They can't get it. Southwest Queensland, they've just got to stay cool and composed. Yeah, and those intercepts, sometimes, you know, you can't do much about them. He was up in the channel. It was a, a really good take. And, uh, but, yeah, there's still lots of time here. And Swans do definitely do not need to panic at this point. Kane plays at last touch. Thompson, Kane, they've got numbers on the right-hand side. Lennon, does he get on the outside of Nolan? No, big touch made. Bit of chat between the two players. Lennon just asking McNolan there. The touch was made. Yeah, and touch was called until it comes out to the seven, and it was a touch that had to be made because they wouldn't want to be three down on the score. But as we see, the Swans make an error coming out of their line, and they've definitely come out of the blocks hard, the Hornets, uh, and they'll be looking to, to convert here and really take it to a three-point lead. Ziggleton again. Just a step short and just out of the hands there, so you can see the conditions are still playing a factor. It's going to be tricky for these two teams to manage for the remainder here of the second half. Yeah, and Swans just need to start the half again. Forget what's happened with the inner set. Forget what's happened with the couple of errors. And then get to the end of this set at the other end of the field. And we see them doing that well. As we just see an error in that roll on us again. That's, that slippery ball. You just got to... It's harder to get the ball down. You have to kind of slow down a little bit. Even though these players, they're, they're extreme athletes and their skill level is amazing. So, But these conditions make everything a little bit more difficult. To Squires down the sideline. Here's Jack Edwards taking that intercept just a few moments ago. Bit of space here on the open side. Speed as well. Out in front. Big drive in the corner. Tommy Quinn living. Great recovery. Huge touch. They are blowing up. He thinks it's down. And now the penalty will be given to the Swans. This game has come to life in this second half, and we've seen a penalty there, but Riley Jones, you cannot give him too much space. Wait to the last moment. To, we'll look on the replay here. Oh, clearly got him. I think that was a great call. Yeah, it was a great call Connor there. Edwards, look at him. <laughs> he thought the ball was down. It was an excellent up the big touch man. by Tommy. Another penalty going here to the Swans. Three in this set of six alone. They're giving them a little leg up to march downfield. They need to stay cool and composed here, the Hornets. They're on top in this game. They don't want to leave the door ajar for the Swans. They've got enough strike power to get more points. Notley, Hegedus, Carmody back inside to Jake Notley. Looks to kick away. Notley still going, almost slices in between. Yeah, we saw him score a try early with a, a bit of a dive over the line, and that wasn't too dissimilar, but the Hornets defence up to it there. And a repeat set. Ball slapped down. Out of the hands there. Mitch Wilton popping up out of the line. Yeah, so you saw that they were looking long and then just went short. So no gap through. Another penalty. Just been pulling out of the touch within that seven metre zone. Riley Jones. He comes up and makes the touch again. Carmody has a bit of a look up. Comes back to Hegedus. Ball movement, space out there on the left-hand side of the field. Kemp sends it back in. Swanee's throwing the footy around. They can't crack the defence as of yet. Hegedus, they come up out of the line. Great work from Edwards. An experienced player. He's been in big games. Australian yeah. men's representative. And he's had a couple of big moments here. He's going to need another one here, but the ball's gone astray. Back, tried to go across the face and, and find the winger. Not to be so... Hornets, great defensive set there. They'll be really happy with that. Meters to start this set. Josh Moffat. And we saw earlier Tiger did a great latch and he's done another one there to put... Oh, we oh, see another Cody intercept, Scott. Off. Oh, no, going to bring it back. Kim Skelly's got his hand out. Sam Carmody can't believe it. It was like anything you can do, Jack Edwards, I can do just as well. But uh, the referees caught it back. I can only assume for offside. You'd have to think that was the call. He was off to the races there. Sam Carmody, that man on screen in the number eight. The Hornets continue to hang on and a full set of six to work with. It's going to be a big set in the game. 
Thompson now, Lennon feeds it through. They've got the numbers. Langbridge, right foot, oh. coming back in field. What a finish there. Hugh Doherty, work to do. Now the Hornets, they're really putting the pressure on the Swans. They're up by three. So we see the little play there again. Soft hands out to the winger and plenty of work to do, but... Blaze had gone out to make the touch, but with these slippery conditions, you just cannot change direction. So he's off his right foot, Doherty. And as you said, it was potentially a try down here off the intercept, and it's now skipped out. Hornets five, Swans two. Oh, they've got work to do now. The Swannies have got to be the next to score. They can't connect up with the target there. Matt Moore ripping left to right. And you saw there, Liam Squires, the ball kind of looked like it was coming up, and he, and he could have potentially put his hand out to try to take the intercept, but he just let it float over the sideline. So it was smart play there by the Hornets winger, and his team's got the ball back now. Atkins shows it back on the inside, gets it down on the deck. It's Kane, he pumps as well. Edwards there just having to scramble to get into half. It's clean pick up Jones, the footwork, he's quick. Oh, late penalty. He just caught short. I know Riley Jones, he's a danger man, ball in hand. And ben Moore come up to make the touch. Yeah, and we'll see it on the replay. Yeah, they've just affected the touch, but they're still offside, and, and nothing's going right at the moment. Well, there we go. They get, that could be a turn of luck there. So they've got a penalty, which is forward. They won't be happy with that, the Hornets. It was first touch. They had a fresh set of six down on the line, but... Uh, See what Swans can do here. They need to get it to the other end of the field and they need to do that fast. Come down their sideline. Squires comes up to make the touch. Richards takes a settler. Carmody has been busy. He's back to Dave Richards. Last touch for them now. Penalty. It's just not going their way at the moment. I think it was an interchange infringement as well for the Swans. Yeah, that's not going to help. And it's, it's not the script they'd written, the Swans, at this point. But we've still got around eight, eight minutes on the clock. So there's plenty of time. But they've got to get a bit more possession and a bit more field position, Scott, to, to try and claw their way back into this grand final. It's Connor Edwards. Switching players in. Langbridge takes a settler. Get themselves into position. Langbridge again. Lennon, ooh, sloppy there. Couldn't pick it up cleanly. Throws the head back. Yeah, he's disappointed in that one, Chris Lennon, but he's, he's had a great game and made a really big difference to this game. Changes here for the Swans. Nolan set the game alight with that try in the first half. Prendergast, who hasn't had too many opportunities so far in the GF. Oh, a little flick back on the inside to Verenkamp. They make the touch. Yeah, he nearly created something out of nothing there, Prendergast, back to Verenkamp. But Hornets up to the task again in defence. And the good thing for the Hornets was it finished over their side of the box. So it was an easy transition to get their fresh plays on. Honestly, Tiger's doing a great job at that latch play. Here's Kane, plays at Thompson in the half. Looping ball over the top. They do a good job. Falls in the hands there of Connor Edwards out on the right-hand side of the field. And they're just making the task a little bit more difficult for the Swans. So the directive from their coaching staff, the Hornets, I'm sure if they can't score any more tries, will definitely be to finish it down on the other end of the field and, and in the corner make it difficult for the Swans to, to get up the other end of the field. Living just having to hold the football up. Fifth and final play is quick here from half. Quinn Living goes across field. Short ball, earns his team a penalty. Nice job, Tommy Q coming in from the right wing. Doing some work. Kim Skelly. I'm out in favour here of the Swans. Yeah, Repeat and they needed set. that, the Swans, didn't they? They needed that little bit of a, a momentum shift. And they need to get a score here in the next couple of minutes if there's any chance of uh, competing for this championship the last five minutes of this game. Lee plays it in the seven. Richards, there's space out there on the left-hand side. Good footwork. Camp gets away from Edwards. Well, that's the try they needed. Is that what can spark the Swans back into this grand final? Yeah, I think it can, Scott. So we'll see on the replay. Very similar to what we saw the Hornets do a couple of minutes ago. Out to the wing. This time it's off the left foot step. And Verenkamp, he's had a really good game. And he's got a try there for his troubles. 5-3. It's a great ball from Dave Richards. Saw the space. 
Yeah, these slippery conditions, hard to come against the grain or defend that step back in. Almost a carbon copy of what we saw from the Hornets earlier on. Now they're back on the attack. It's Moffat. Goes the line. Ben Moore makes the touch. They'll take their time. Here the Hornets. Yeah, he's in no rush to get back to the seven. He had a little look up at the clock as he went. Now they sweep. It's Edwards all battled over the top. Goes to Squires who oh. dives in the corner. He's a quality finisher. And he put it on display there. Liam Squires take a bow. Yeah, he used every centimetre of the field there as the ball came out to him. And it was beautiful. Tap on, tap on. He still had a lot of work to do. Contorts the body into the corner and plants it down right in the corner. And it takes the score out to three and lead by Hornets again. 6-3 with about four minutes to go. What about the bat on over the top of the head from Josh Moffat? Picture perfect. Swans again looking for points. Carmody's in trouble. It'll be a penalty coming here towards the Swans. A bit of hold off the ball potentially there. Kim Skelly signaling. Floyd Ty's been called out. Gets a four substitution. Swans will be looking to go straight away here. Oh, oh lucky to get hands on the ball. It wasn't luck at all. That was great work from Hugh Doherty. Nice little short side play from Jimmy Hegedus. Looking to link up. With Tommy Quinn living smart play straight away when they had the numbers advantage back to six on six. Yeah, really smart play there by the Swans. And they could have got a try there. The match would have been back alive. So they, they really need to get onto the ball. They've got to pull the, the Hornets defence out. They're running a sweet play here with Notley. They've got a, a second penalty. They'll be wanting to not waste any time here. How many taps and restarts? Matthew Moore making his way onto the field. He's in the right link position now. Notley finds Prendergast. Good footwork. Gets away from Moffat. Continue to throw the footy around. It's pressure seconds away from the clock. Now Prendergast finds Carmody. Again, skipping away. They're just Back holding their space here, aren't they? I'm surprised the, the refs aren't calling him up here. Moore shows it. Goes short to Notley. Great defence again from Jack Edwards. Yeah, really good touch there. Moore will get it down. He steps in, has a look up. Oh, it's picked off. It's Moffat stretching away. I don't think they're going to get to him. He's heading towards the corner. Here comes Quinn Livin. He gets oh. there again. Tom Quinn Livin. How many intercepts can one game have here? So, again, it's chewed up the clock. There's less than two minutes on the time. So, the experienced Dylan Thompson, he's going to be in no rush. Here, they'll try and play out the set. Or if they get another try here, it, it, it's game over. You can see they're in no rush, Scott. They're taking their time. Taking more seconds off the clock. Kane, they earn themselves a penalty. You can see the smile there on Dylan Thompson's face. He's, he's looking up at the clock. He's saying, mate, no rush. Let's hold the ball for six and take the gold. The gold medal's home with us. Back to Newcastle. But Kane on screen. Comes back and plays it. Thompson again, Lennon, can he put the icing on the cake? Carmody couldn't quite get back to the line. Chris Lennon, well, if that's the final try in this game, it's fitting that it came from that young man. What a performance he's had here in the grand final. Sure is. He can have the icing and the whole piece of cake as far as I'm concerned because he's had a great game, skipped off the left, and that slide. That would be practiced at home or down at the park, down at the beach, and it's not as easy as it looks, people, and it's a, a, a fitting end for a great game for Chris Lennon. And a little bobble there from Quinn Livin. Notley comes up to make the touch. Hornets winding down the clock. Last year's runners up against the CQ Bulls. They beat the Bulls to make through to the grand final in the semi final earlier on today. They're going to be the national champions as we see the ball bouncing around. Notley and Lennon coming together. Bit of a shoulder is the call there from Baggio. Notley not too happy with the call. Just looks like a little accidental bump between the two players. Yeah, it looked accidental. And uh, I, I venture a guess there's going to be a fair celebration as this hooter goes in a few seconds. And uh, Hornets, Hunter Western Hornets will finish with the ball. And nobody's too keen to move. And 
Yeah, well-deserved winners, the Hunter Western Hornets, as they race onto the field runners-up last year and deserve a champion for 2024, Scott. Absolutely. They went through the whole tournament undefeated. That is some feat in its own. They've made up for last year's defeat against the Bulls. They take the title here in 2024. What a performance it was for them. Gallant in defeat, the Swans. They really threw everything they could at this mighty Hornets team. Uh, the Hunter Western Hornets are far too good in this one. Final score in the men's open grand final. Hornets taking this one at 7 at 3. We're going to head down on a field. Jack Rogers is going to grab the winning captains from the Hunter Western Hornets. We'll then wrap up the whole tournament for the Red Rooster Rap Show. Stay with us. More to come. When it comes to the perfect break, there's booking a holiday, then there's all.com. Over 5,000 of the world's favourite hotels, curated dining, wellness and entertainment experiences, all while enjoying exclusive rewards. Find the best hotels in the best destinations at the best price, guaranteed. You find the time, we'll find everything else. That's all.com. Down on the touchline here, and exciting scenes behind us. You can hear them. I've got the coach of the Hornets, the winning team of the championships, Lindsay Brain here, and of course, Captain Jack Edwards. Lindsay, I'm going to throw to you first. The weather at uh, wasn't on anyone's side really today. Yeah, we're down too early there. Uh, what were you telling the boys to get back into that one? Look, we just knew if we could complete our sets and stick it down the other end and make them work out, it would give us our best opportunity. Obviously, we went down two points really early, and we had to chase but it seems to be how we like to play our game, so it suited out, it suited us for this this tournament, definitely. Much like your semi-finals, and you know, it's been a few years you've been playing away. We have Carly up in the commentary box a lot, and she just talks about this group, about how they're always making progress, and Jack, you're obviously at the forefront of that, so can you tell us a little bit about what it means to be part of this unit? Oh, mate, look, we've, we've been together for a fair few years now. We've had young ones come through and develop. We've had the, the old guys stick it out for a long time. But, mate, this, there's nothing better than, than what's happened today. It's been a, a long process getting to this point. But, yeah, we, we deserve what we got today. Absolutely right. And one final question. Look, the Swans here, they made it all the way to the final and they were touted at the start of the tournament. We can see on that lineup uh, they're a growing team as well. Any words, I guess, of, of commiserations to give them a bit of support for next year? Jack, I'll go to you again. Yeah, look, it's um, it's a tough spot to be in. We were in the exact same spot last year, but 
like I said earlier, they've been a team that's been building for a good couple of years now, and they'll only be better for it. Um, they'd be the team to watch out for next year for sure. Well, congratulations, Lindsay, Jack. Uh, it's been a phenomenal championships for you, and I uh, hope next year you can get out to a good start in your games and not just leave it all right to the end. We love that here on KO. So thanks, Lindsay. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much, fellas. Congratulations. Enjoy the win. From early morning jogs to late night workouts, from heartbreaking setbacks to the ecstasy of achieving your goal, we're your number one supporter. Because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover provides affordable, tailored insurance solutions designed to protect your sports and leisure lifestyle. Created by sports people for sports people. More than 35 years of industry-specific experience and knowledge makes us not only experts in our field, but pioneers of our industry. Commitment to customer service is our focus, and we are passionate about tailoring our range of products to ensure you are protected. So whether it's in the sporting arena or it's for fun and leisure, you play with pride. We protect with passion because we don't just know sport, we are sport. Sports Cover. Get in touch with one of our representatives to find out more. Hear that? That's the sound of you winning. Because while you didn't miss a second of your team picking up their third consecutive loss, a dedicated dasher is picking up pizza with chicken salt chips. Step up to the podium, my friend, because you have smashed it. Smash it. Door dash it. Down here on the touchline, I'm Jack Rogers here with Gab Rose for our Red Rooster Wrap. It's been a heck of a tournament. Three days with a new tour, with a new format. The championships has been unbelievable, Gab. What did you reckon? Oh, it's been, you're right, it's been an unbelievable three days. We've seen some amazing tries. We've seen some unbelievable defence. And, and the new format we've seen with UQ Rebels, uh, new to this tournament, they've taken out the under-20 girls and the Women's Open. Yeah, it's been unreal. The 20s on display. UQ have really been the, st the shining stars for the affiliates, really making a case for them. But uh, in the Open section, it was equally challenging. And, uh, of course, started off with the mix today, worked our way through to the Opens. Gab? Uh, what was your favourite game of that uh, little series at the back end there? Oh, I'd have to say my favourite game was the Women's Opens where it yeah. went to a drop-off with the Scorpions in a narrow loss to the UQ Rebels. We've been a powerhouse this weekend. And then how can you go past the celebrations oh. we're seeing behind us, Jack, for the, the Hornets Men's Open winners for 2024. And, and they started slow, but uh, second half they came out firing and, and they got the chocolates in the end. Well, it's been an extraordinary three days. Celebrations are right behind us. Kids, uh, adults of all ages celebrating what's been phenomenal three days here at the home of Touch in Coffs Harbour. Gab, it's been a pleasure commentating with you and, of course, Scott and our guests. Uh, and for now, that's all that we got here live on KO Sports and Sky Sports next. Guess we'll see you next time. See you soon.